What's up, everybody? It's your boy Jay Watts back in the building. And hey, I got a new chair. Check this out. I got a new swivel chair for my little studio. I went and bought one today because I was like, you know what? I'm tired of using that big chair that can't move. I'm, I'm sitting too stationary. So I went and got a chair that can move a little bit. This is a whole lot better. I love it. Now I'm kind of hitting this table next to me. So I got to kind of watch that. But today's live. What are we going to talk about? Let's talk about Lyft. Lyft is like, hey, we're not going to do away with the surge pricing. And I think they kind of knew something was going on because, like I said, we got Amazon people running Lyft right now. Amazon people are running. What up, Marvin? What's good? My man's first in the building. So we got Amazon people running Lyft right now, and they're sitting around all for kick. She's in there. And they don't understand that, you know, drivers make, make the bulk of the money for them. We're the revenue generators. So when they were like, yeah, we're going to just do away with surge pricing. We're going to price it so low that customers can't afford us. They started seeing drivers like, well, we ain't driving for y'all. Y'all do what we were surge pricing. We ain't messing with y'all. Bigfoot Dasher, what's good, brother? What's good? My man, Jamil, what's up? What's up? And I tell everybody, you know, drivers, if they don't take care of their drivers, they're not going to be able to keep that platform sustainable because we're just going to jump to other platforms. What up, Duato? And we're going to end up driving UberX. We're going to end up delivering. We're going to do a lot of different things other than Lyft if they try to do it with surge pricing. Because they keep thinking, oh, we're going to save these riders a lot of money. This is what we're going to do. We're going to just do away with surge pricing, charge people, you know, $3 for a ride. So that means, and what, so the drivers now, we're not going to make a lot of money because they're base pricing everything all the way to the floor, not doing surge pricing during events and things like that. So drivers are going to be like, yeah, we ain't about to drive for y'all that's how y'all gonna be doing events we not driving for y'all it's cool y'all can y'all can find somebody else to roll with y'all oh yeah man i'm good i it's been a really good weekend a really good like i said i got a video to drop i'm gonna probably drop a video probably within the next day because i got i still got to edit it on my phone and everything but man trust me when i tell you football season is back baby my buffs didn't do it yesterday that's cool like i say everybody takes takes a beating every once in a while and i'm kind of glad they put uh, the buffs in that situation because I've told a lot of my stories on track or whatever. Steve's down. Hey, you finally caught a live, my man. That's it. Hey, I try to I try to get on every once in a while in the daytime to get everybody a chance to get in. But I told everybody I'm glad that the buffs got put in the situation they were in because I told people a situation when I was a freshman in college, freshman in college, and they made me race against Kevin Little, who's a USA uh, track champion, and also Michael Johnson, who's the gold medalist in a 200 meter dash. I was a freshman a freshman and they put me in a race with the usa gold medalist michael johnson i had to race this dude so i'm glad when they take you know young people and they humble them they put them against some great people to say hey you think you fast you think you good and i was i was a little like i said i was a senior in high school i was a hothead i was killing everybody in the state i was killing people but as soon as i got to college i started winning you know i went to iowa state first race i ever been in in college iowa state i won i was like i told you i'm a champ dog i'm this is what i do Soon as I step foot on college campus, I'm already winning races left and right. Drake relays come around in April. They're like, you know, you've been winning some races all season. We're going to put you up against Michael Johnson. Kind of cool your ass off a little bit. <laughs> so I had to race against Michael Johnson as a freshman. And that's when I saw true speed. I mean, we all came around that curb. I mean, we were all kind of lined up and it was pretty good, you know. But as soon as we hit that straightaway, Michael Johnson hit a gear I had never seen in my life. I'm a freshman. Never seen nobody run that fast. So I'm glad when colleges, like what just happened to Oregon, Oregon was the Michael Johnson, CU was me. They, they kind of got put in a place to let you know, hey, you up here with the big boys now. It's cool to be hype. It's cool to be happy. It's cool to, you know, stay on your, get your, get your confidence level up. But you got to realize these are some big boys up here. And when I raised against Michael Johnson, it, it brought me to a level of saying, I need to get into the, I need to get into the weight room. Because if that dude, if I'm running as fast as I can run, ran the best time I had ever ran in a 200-meter dash in my life, and I was nowhere close to this dude, nowhere close, I need to get my weight up. And that's kind of like what they did to the Buffs. Get your weight up. You want to be up here in this league? It's cool. You guys did good at the HBCUs. You're doing good against some teams. You're showing people you got talent. You got skills. You got good coaches. But you got to get your weight up when you want to come up to this level. It's a little different up here. So I'm glad they did the kids like that. Like everybody's like, oh, that was a horrible game, horrible game. What up, Dolphus? And it was. Oh, my man Juan Vargas in the house. And it was a horrible game. It was, it was a, it was a disastrous game. But it was a game that they needed. They needed to be checked at some point. And we were all hyped. We still hype. We was like, come on, man, at least get a touchdown. At least do this. At least do that. Just show you can fight with the big boys. You ain't gonna knock them out 
I mean, you in the ring with Mayweather right now. You ain't going to knock him out, but at least show us. Show us you got something. And as soon as they, you know, scored in the final, final minutes or whatever, it, it kind of showed, okay, they got a little fight. They don't give up. But that was against, like, the second, third string. But it showed that two, these guys can still play. They may not be, like, you know, Division One national championship level, but they can still play in Division One. They can do it. The Buffs can still do it. And we still believe in them. But they needed to be there. They had to be there. They had to get punched in the face real quick to say, hey, you in a ring with some heavyweights now. So, and it, it happens to all of us athletes, especially when we come straight out of high school. You know what I'm saying? When we're a senior in high school, we are the top of the class. We're like winning state. We nationally rank. We McDonald's All-Americans. We are everything coming out of high school. But once you put us in college, it's a whole nother ball game, whole nother ball game. You got some boys in there who's trying to get into the league. You got boys in there who already got experience at these levels. They trying to be, you know, they trying to be national championships, not just win one game. They trying to win them all. So it's like, man, yeah, yeah, that's what it is, man. I ass whooping to make you tough. It'll make you tough. And that's how we were when we was kids, man. We used to, we used to like physically fight with our hands. We'd be out there like, you know, scrapping in the yard, fighting, wrestling, punching, boxing. Nowadays, a lot of kids, they we, they get punched in the mouth. They want to go grab a gun. That's the first thing they want to do is shoot somebody. Because they don't want to fight. Nobody wants to fight no more. Nobody wants to get beat up no more. We used to take pride in getting beat up because we could come back. We can go get our weight up and be like, all right, I got my ass whooped, you know, last Friday after school at three o'clock on the playground, motherfucker, you know, pack your lunch. I'm going to whoop your ass and we get into a fight. But we live to see another day and we live to fight this cat again. So the next time we fight, I might get him. And then we fight again to kind of break the time. I get him again. So they're like, OK, Jeff, you've elevated. You whooped Dirk's ass like three times in a row. He beat you the first time, but you don't whoop his ass three times in a row. You good now. We were like that as kids. But now people see somebody get beat up. Oh, you need to retire. Oh, you're done. Oh, you're weak. Are oh, you what? They don't they don't know what we went through. You got to take an ass beating every once in a while. You've got to get out there. You got to get beat up. And anybody who's in ride share knows that is how ride share is. Juan Vargas. How many times have we been beat up by this by this damn game, Juan? How many times? Have we got our ass kicked by the apps? Close the night at $75. Close the night at $30. Close the night, you know, when I did Beyonce concert, went out there. What did I do? I said, no, I'm not doing this shit. I'm done. I'm done. I closed the app down. Came home for the night. Didn't even do the Beyonce concert. Did part of the Drake concert. Sometimes we get our ass kicked in ride share. But we don't say, oh, you know what? I only made $75 tonight. I'm about to go out here and just give me another job tomorrow. You spend all day the next day filling out applications online because you got beat up Thursday night. You got your ass whooped by the apps Thursday night. So Friday, you just filling out apps all day. No, we don't do that shit. Juan, last two nights, and I'll tell everybody this, last two nights, Juan's been driving out here. And I was driving for the last two nights. Juan's made a grand in two nights. A grand in two nights. We got our asses whooped all summer. Juan made a grand in two nights. And he ain't driving like crazy hours. He ain't driving crazy miles. That means we were just going through a period where we had to get punched in the gut a few, a few times. We had to get smacked around all summer. We got beat up. Just like Colorado got beat up. We got beat up all summer. Two, three months straight, we got beat up, but we never gave up. We're like, you know what? We just got to make it through. We got to make it through. Football season's here. Making my, I mean, yesterday I was out. And when I dropped my video, y'all going to see when I dropped the video. What I, I mean, I was out on Uber. Uber X, Uber X. I'm driving Uber X last night because they finally gave me a couple of good rides. I was hitting it so hard for an hour, had no idea. Cause I'm, you, y'all know me. When I'm hitting it, I don't, I don't keep track of my money. I don't count my money when I'm at the craps table. I don't count my money. So I'm driving, driving. An hour later, I opened up my Uber app, flipped it over. I'm like, there's no way. I made $117 in an hour driving Uber X. Ain't no way. Sure enough. Sure, I went through the app, went through every single ride. Surge, surge, tips, surge, surge, tips. I'm like, what the hell? I really did make $117 in an hour driving Uber X. Lip, I kind of put them on the back burner for a minute because they was bullshitting on some shit. But I still drove Lux last night too. Last night I drove about three hours, three and a half hours. Made close to $400, made about $360 in about three hours. I was banking over $100 an hour. We got our asses handed to us all summer, but we didn't give up. The Buffs got their asses handed to them yesterday. They ain't going to give up. They going to come back. And I tell everybody, it's the spirit of that shit. Look at that. Juan made five eleven on Friday, four two seventy nine on Thursday. Dude made $1,000 in two days. Because I'm telling you, that five eleven on Friday and that four seventy on Saturday, your tips take 30 days to roll through, Juan. 
You're going to be getting $15 tips, $8 tips, nine. You still got 30 days to get tips. You made a thousand in two days. Trust me. I got a $15 tip the other day that came from like last, like last month. So you making a, a G in two days. We got our asses kicked, asses kicked. But we bouncing back. And that's what happened with, with Colorado. Got their asses kicked, but they can bounce back. They just got to figure it out. And yesterday, you know, everybody was out by what ASU. We were all so, man, he said, look at this shit. Look at this shit. <laughs> that's what I be saying. Man, look at this shit. <laughs> man, because that's what it be looking like on my phone. A bunch of fucking nasty ass mashed potatoes. I'll be like, man, look at this shit. Old cold ass mashed potatoes. I ain't eating this shit. I don't want that. Give me something else. I'm, I'm looking on the buffet for something else. Give me something else out of the buffet. I don't want no mashed potatoes, no old cold ass macaroni and cheese. Give me something else. But when we drive on these apps, you know what I'm saying? You got to have the heart to fight. Like I tell motherfucker, and it's funny. I went today and I bought a hat. This shit's funny as hell. This motherfucker says this. <laughs> it says fishing people. I bought a hat today that says fishing people. I'm going to wear that motherfucker too. Because the thing about what we do is we go out there and we like fishing. We sitting on the lake. And you know if you're a big game fisher, you're going to be out there trying to get that, that good amount of bass. You're going to try to get that right shark. You're trying to get some, And that's what we do. We sit and we chill and we wait to that good ass hit. And we get that hit. Mm, last night, I was getting hit so hard. I couldn't even record for a while. I was trying. You will see when I drop this video. I was recording as much as I could. I was going through recordings. But even as I was on the recording, sh trying to show you guys what I was doing, a ride would pop up as I was recording. And I'm like, oh, see, I can't even show y'all, man. I got to take this ride. It was hitting like that. I was recording and they were throwing me rides, trying to get me. And it, I couldn't stop. $117 in an hour. And I'm like, there's no way possible. I just did. It was so fast. It was so fast. I'm like, there's no way I just made that much in an hour. No way. I had to go through the shit. And sure enough, y'all yeah, know what I was doing. I was doing my Uber pet. I'm I'm sneaking on the Uber pet, driving around, grabbing $20 surges, $15 surges, $14 surges. I'm on Uber pet all night, cruising, grabbing shit. But that's what it takes, though. That's what it takes. What William say, man, I got screwed by lift gods. Driving to the end of football game here in Cleveland, my tire blew out. Luckily, I got a full tire spare. That shit is confusing. Now I'm now I'm going 120 hour later. Yeah. That's what it is. What up, Silver Fox? Yeah, man, sometimes it happens. I remember I was driving, you know, when I had them run flats on the car. I ended up with a, my thing went all the way down to like 22 PSI. I was in the middle of a nice run. I had to pull over at the gas station, plug my damn, I got a plug kit in the back. I had to plug the damn tire real quick. Hurry up, go to Quick Trip, get all that shit. It knocks you off your grind, man. It knocks you off your grind. But it's like an injury in a game, man. It's like an injury in a game. You got to go to the sideline, stretch that shit out, get back on the field again. Say, Lyft doesn't activate my account because I have a restricted license. I don't know what kind of restricted license you got. Like, are you restricted to drive during the daytime, nighttime, glasses? Depends on what it, because sometimes these apps, they'll, you know, if you can't drive 24-7 free and clear of everything, they might not want to have that liability on their, on their hands. You might have to do like, you know, Uber Eats or something like that, delivery or DoorDash or something like that. But yeah, this, man, this weekend has been crazy. Like today, I was thinking about driving today. ASU still got parents weekend going. A lot of people going to be going to the airport. I opened my app up this morning when I got up and I was like, the whole city was flaming red. Both apps lift just fire pink, all pink. And I'm like, man, I should be out driving right now. But I was like, you know what? We got to let the day people who can't drive at night make their money too. I'm not a greedy motherfucker. Y'all know me, man. I'm not that type of driver. I'm not a driver that's going to be like, I need to go out. No, I have my discipline. I got my regimen. I got my, my routine. I know what I'm doing. So I say, you know what? I'm a kickback. I'm going to let the day drivers who got, you know, two, three, four kids and shit, let them go make that money. Let them go make that money. Because when nighttime hit, that's me. Because at night, I can move through traffic a whole lot easier and faster. Like I said, with Uber, y'all going to see on the video I drop an hour. How did I make $117 in an hour? I was moving. Mo and that was online time. That was online time. That wasn't even actual driving time. That's how crazy it was. I was online for about an hour, 17 minutes. Somehow came out with $117. I was like, what the hell is happening on UberX? Yeah, the, the catching Uber line to the driver vehicle was, man, that's what it was. That's what it was off the handle. They be lying, man. They be, oh, no, you can't get on UberX. Hell no. Yeah, right. Shit, shit. Yeah, I wish there was a way to cheat lift. 25 years requirements. I drive for Uber, but I'm 23 years old. Yeah, hey, 
UberX, man, I'm gonna tell you right now, UberX got a lot of good money out there. You just got to know how to, if you look at some of my videos, how I'm navigating Uber Pet and using Surge on, on my reservations. And another driver told me that because he saw me on my reservations not getting Surge. And he was like, Jeff, what are you doing, man? You should be getting Surge on each of those reservations. You had Surge. And then you see all these other drivers in the comments. No, no, once you agree to a reservation, that's what it is. No, because the Surge said, this is what you get on your next ride. A reservation is still a ride, no matter what time you set it for. I can set a reservation a day ahead of when I should ride. And just because I set this reservation a day ahead of when I ride, don't mean that can't be the driver's next ride. That's still a ride. So that surge hits that ride. And 100% of the times I contact the support and say, hey, I didn't get my surge. And you got to make sure you screenshot that shit. When you got a surge on your phone and you know you coming up on a reservation, screenshot that surge. Screenshot it. Because you're going to need that screenshot. Because they're going to be like, what route are you talking about? What surge are you talking about? Send them that shit. They're going to apply it. Trust me. A lot of drivers didn't believe it. And I keep doing it over and over. And they still don't believe it. I get that money every time. They still don't believe it. <laughs> Look at that. My last trip was four miles, 20 bucks. Declined three right before that. Seven, four, two, then the 20. That's right, man. That's right. And a lot of people don't understand how we do that. When, when we out fishing, you know what I'm saying? You feel a little tug. That, that tug is little. It could be a fake tug. You know, it could be a branch cruising by. You know a tug when you get a tug when you're fishing. You know when some, some fish got your bait. And you know when it's a big one because that, that damn pole start bending a little bit. That pole ain't bending. You don't want to take that ride. A $7 ride. You don't want that. $7 for seven miles. You don't want that. Hang out. As soon as you hit that $20, one mile to get somebody, three mile drive. That motherfucking pole start bending. You are gonna pull that motherfucker in, hit that screen, be like, hey, gotcha, gotcha. Shit, take that ride quick as hell, man. Hey, I'm telling Lip always give you surge no matter what. Uber, they be trying to get people. They be trying to get people. And I tell people all the time, man, you got a lot of drivers out there that don't understand what opportunity cost is. I've had a couple of videos that explain opportunity cost, and it's the chance of you doing something where you could be doing something else that's more lucrative. We sit around and we wait. Like when you see the video I'm going to drop, I mean, I was going three, four miles, $28, $49 for like 13 miles. I mean, it was crazy, sir. I was doing crazy shit. Thank you, Logan. I appreciate that, brother. Always. And hey, Logan, I'll follow your advice. My shit will be showing up. Hopefully this week it'll be showing up, man. And I can't wait to show it because I need everybody to go to your channel to see exactly what I ordered. If they go to your, if you go to Logan's channel, you can see exactly what I ordered. He's got a few and I got mine coming in. I cannot wait, baby. It's time to get this money. Thank you for that advice, man. Thank you for that advice. Always on the ground, brother. Always. And like I said, when we out there, the opportunity of us, you know, Chasing this little $7 for seven mile ride. We wasting our time with that. That's a waste of my time. I would rather let that go. Let it go to another driver who thinks they got to stay busy. Because while they on that seven mile for $7 ride, right behind it, I'm going to get a $30 ride for six miles right behind it. Never fails. Never fails. And once you learn your marketing, you understand what Uber is doing and what, what Lyft is doing, you start seeing they're getting the suckers out the way first. They'll say, hey, here's 22 miles. For $24. Sucker, take that. 22 miles, $24. Right behind that, they'll go seven miles, $20. I'll take that one. Every time it never fails. And that's why I put my shit on a video. And I'm one of the only drivers out there. There's a lot of drivers doing it now, but we record our screens. We let you see everything. We don't bullshit you and only show you screenshots. I'll show you the bullshit, the good shit, the, the fuck ups I do, the me trying to get something and not getting it. Like I'll try to get that $30 Uber Eats and I didn't get it. I'll show you everything. Because a lot of people out there, they like to sit there and be like, oh, man, you know, I'm so amazing of a driver. All oh, my shit is banger after banger after banger. No, I get fucking mashed potatoes. I get bullshit every fucking time. And I show people that I get bullshit. I'm not in such an amazing market that I don't get bullshit. I'm not that important of a driver where they send me bangers nonstop. No, I find them bangers. Like I said, we out fishing. What Drew say? Drew says, uh, have you still been leaving hum on? Nah, man, I ain't. I haven't. Because hum is a dispatch system. Hum is not like Uber and Lyft. Uber and Lyft is controlled by AI. Hum is controlled by an actual person as a dispatcher, and they don't have a night dispatch. They only have day dispatch. So I drive at nights. Hum is a dead app at night, so I really have no use for it. I mean, if I choose to drive in the daytime every once in a while, I might turn it on. I mean, I got it sitting right there, so I might turn it on. Logan's channel, 
he, this is it right there. Logan Block Valley. That's it. You can just click his name. I think that's it'll go right to his channel. Yeah, so I'm like, I just leave hum off. I don't even mess with it. Now, once I get around to the point where, you know, the weather clears up and I can drive more days, I might want to go out in the daytime because it turns night too early. Then I'm going to start having hum on. Hopefully their dispatch is still working by the time I get online. I don't know what time they close. So, yeah. Uh oh, what Drew said, I forgot I logged into Hum, so it went crazy in Tempe. Started going off. Sounds like an old school phone ring. I shut it off because it's surging hard. Yeah. When it's surging, man. Hey, and you'll see on the video, I messed up and took a reservation on UberX at like 12:30. I didn't know why this. I'm like 12:30, three miles for $13. I'm like, I'll take that. Three miles, $13. I'll take that reservation. I didn't know it was a big ass country concert going on. So I'm sitting there. I grabbed a lift ride, a banging lift ride. I'm on a lift ride banging. The Uber reservation comes up $13 for three miles. I'm in the area. I couldn't even do it because I had that big ass surge on Lux and I'm getting this Lux ride right now. So I had to let that reservation go. Uber will probably ding me for it. They'll probably ding. They'll probably just not give me reservations for a while. I'm like, fuck it. I don't care. You don't sit there and give me reservations in the middle of a country concert. Well, it's surging all over the place. I didn't even know it was a country concert. I'll let that shit go, man. Forget that. No, no. So I end up, I was like, you know what? I'm going to end up just turning on Lux. I turned on Lux during the country concert, got away from the country concert because I came down Rio Salada. It was bumper to bumper traffic the whole time. Luckily, the people tipped me and everything because that was not a good run for me. So I got away from it. I went and that's a one. That's when I was sitting behind the Denny's. I said, yeah, I'm just sitting behind Denny's chilling right now because it was it was surging like crazy everywhere. I needed to calm down for a second. And, and plot. Like I said, when, when you in the stands and when you on the field and you got the crowd like going nuts and everybody's going nuts, players are going, everything going nuts. Sometimes you got to get in the huddle with yourself, get in the huddle and say, okay, it's a lot going on right now. And you see me in my videos always going, man, I need to take a break for a second. Let me see. I'll pull up to a parking lot and I'll open up both apps. I'll look over everything. I'll see where the surge is, where the $2 surge is, where the $20 surge is, where the $5, which app is surging. If I got anything going on, I'm in the huddle with myself sitting behind Denny's going through both apps and I pluck something good. I was like, okay, I see exactly where I should go. And it wasn't toward the concert. And a lot of drivers does got to stay busy, got to stay busy driver. Those motherfuckers, they will just sit there and just take ride after ride after ride after ride after ride after ride because they want to keep their AR up. And they thinking, ooh, Uber's just sending me ride after ride. I'm doing good. They fuck around, make $32 an hour, and we making $100 an hour. They get a $15 ride for fucking, you know, 30 miles. Then you get another $15 ride for 24 miles. And the whole time, we done made $117 going like 30 miles total. That's how we do. We pull over into the parking lot, and we have a huddle with ourselves and go, hold up for a second. Let me see what the hell is going on. Let me go through everything first. And as I'm going through everything, I'm starting to see, like, you know, where all the surges are laid out, where all the people are. I'm looking at traffic, seeing where all the cars are. I can open up the map on my dash on the radio and I see where all the red lines are. Red line going toward the airport. So I'm not going to airport. Red lines all through Tempe, not going to Tempe. So I went to Mesa. When I got to Mesa, you will see on the video, holy shit, man, I was picking up $20 surges, $21 surges, back to back $20 surges, $9 surges, $14 surges. It was crazy, crazy. Because sometimes you got to pull over. You got to go into a huddle by yourself and say, what the hell's going on? Let me get out of the chaos. Let me just stop accepting everything. Get out of the chaos. Pull over behind a building. Pull over at a gas station. Get everything organized. This is a business. Get a business. When I'm driving, I still got to edit it, man. I'll probably drop it tomorrow morning because I'm not going to drive today. I'll probably drop it either tomorrow morning or tomorrow around about 4 or 5 p.m. Use that try to drop at 5.30 in the morning. So the morning traffic, people can have something to cruise to, or I'll drop it about 4 or 5 p.m. So when everybody gets off work and the night crew start going, I don't like midday drops. Midday drops is kind of like the algorithm don't see me because there's a lot of other people in a lot of different countries on other different time zones. And if I drop at the right time, I can hit all different countries perfectly. I hit USA. I can hit uh, Canada right. I can hit, you know, fucking Portugal right. I'll hit Thailand right. I hit Indonesia right. And, and my videos drop in all of these countries at the same time. So once I put it online, I got to hit all these countries at the optimal time for the, the number of countries. I go for 27 countries. So out of all the countries, I'm only going for 27. America's always the first one. Canada's always the second. Then I kind of branch out from there. But I'm looking at my 27 countries and, and who I'm dealing with. 
and I go with those. So it's all about time frames, man. So I'm going to try to drop it at 5.30 tomorrow morning or 4 p.m. tomorrow. Each time does all my countries right. For some reason, that's just perfect for the countries I go for. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, that $23 surge, man. Juan, hey, I'm going to tell you, Juan made that money in two days, a grand in two days. I made a little over 300 one night, and I was like 280 or something like that one night, like Friday night. Then last night, I almost made almost $400. And it was a funny thing on one of these rides. I'm going to tell you what these motherfuckers is doing, what Lyft is doing. Lyft is trying to, to hustle us. This is what Lyft is doing. So first, UberX tried some shit. They got this $0 fucking thing. They got this zero, zero mile trip on my app. Nice trip. I didn't take it, kicked it out, didn't want it. Excuse me. So Lyft gives me a ride. It's, it's one mile to the people. Then it's a mile to where they're trying to go to for $10. Two miles, 10 bucks, $5 a mile. I take it. No problem. Take the trip. So I get to the lady. It's three girls. So she's like, she's sitting in the back of the car waiting on her friends to come out. Her friends finally come out. And I got it all on video. You're going to hear the story on the video anyways. So the girl come out and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to take you guys over here to Champs. I was like, damn, I didn't know it was a Champs in Tempe. I'm like, I thought the only Champs we had was over in uh, over in Gilbert because Champs is a sports bar. I'm like, Champs Sports is over in Gilbert. I'm like, damn, I didn't know we had a Champs in Tempe. This is crazy. I'm like, and it's at the mall? I'm like, it's a Champs bar at the mall? The girl put in Champs Shoe Store, not the fucking bar, Champs Sports Shoe Store, 11 o'clock at night. This girl done clicked the Champs Sports Shoe Store shit, done paid for the cheapest trip she could find. Uh-oh, am I breaking up now? Is it better like this? Let me know if I'm breaking up or not, because I got to finish this story. Is it good now? I don't know if it's good or what. Yeah, but, all right, I'm going to back up a little bit like this. Okay, cool, cool. So, with the, all right, because I don't know if I'm breaking up, I'm good. Because sometimes on other people's ends, it kind of breaks up. My end, it could be screwing up. I don't know. So, the girl, so the Champ Sports is the damn shoe store. So, I'm like, who the hell books a trip to the shoe store at 11 o'clock at night. Lyft should have known something was wrong with that. 11 o'clock at night going to a shoe store at a closed mall? Man. So I was like, okay. I said, you know what? She was like, well, let me change the trip. Let me change the trip. And I'm like, well, I don't want you to change the trip because I know where that champs is. That champ is like 10 miles down the road this way. I'm only getting $10 to take you. Now, if you change it, and I got to go 10 miles the other way. They're going to give me like $8 for that shit. So I'm going to end up making $18. I'm going to get 10 plus the 8. That's all I'm going to end up getting probably. Especially if we don't even go there. If we just go straight to there, I might not even get $18. They might pay me $13, $14. And that's going 10 miles. So I'm getting a dollar forty. you know, or yeah, if I'm going 14 miles and I'm getting like $10, $14 for it, I'm not getting a lot. So she was like, well, just cancel. We'll just get another Uber. So I was like, all right, cool. No problem. So the girl started trying to get out. So I just canceled the trip or whatever. And as soon as I canceled, the girl was like, do you take like Venmo or something like that? I was like, yeah, I could take Venmo. Hell yeah. She was like, well, I'll just pay you. How much you think is fair? I'm like, I don't know, like 30 bucks. So you will see on the video, she just Venmo me 30 bucks real quick. <laughs> I canceled her ass on Lyft. And then she hurry up and Venmo me $30. So I took him down to Champ Sports. I was like, fuck that shit. Lyft be doing that. Because I'm like... I'm not taking you. You're not doing no change trip in the app. And she, even in the app, she was like, oh, they're trying to charge me $55 for a change trip. And I'm like, I'm not doing a change trip. No, because I'm not going to get paid for that. I say, I was going to do the two miles for the 10 bucks. That's what I was willing to do. I'm not doing that. So you guys got to get out. I got to go do some other trips. I got to give me some money. And the girl's like, well, we'll just get another Uber. Don't worry about it. I was like, all right, cool, cool. Fucking cancel that. She was like, do you take Venmo? Because I was kicking motherfuckers out. I'm trying to make money. I'm not dealing with that shit. She was like, yeah, Venmo them. Shit, we driving, laughing, having a good time and shit, this and that. Shit, I got $30. I fucking, so I, when I was on a video, I kind of showed on the video how she sent me the $30 to Ben. <laughs> Lyft going to be like, he, he canceled they ass, but he still ended up like at Champs. Yeah, not the Champs you try to send me to down the street, motherfucker. That was a shoe store. I'm going clear to the other side of town. You ain't fucking playing me. Hell no. With a damn change trip. That trip was, I went from a two mile trip to like a 10 mile trip clearing the other side of town. Shit. I was like, nope, cancel, not doing it. Do you got Venmo? Hell yeah, I got Venmo. Shit. <laughs> they tried that shit. They tried to get me, man. I was like, nope, y'all not getting me. Hell no. What Drew say? is says, man, Lyft pisses me off. I had to stop because they wouldn't let me select Lux on preferred. I had to do X Lux Excel. I have a Model X in third row. Not that big. People get pissy. Just shut it off. Yeah, man, sometimes you got to shut that shit off. 
just shut it off. Hey, Chi boy, I, hey, they tried to get me, man. I got their ass back, though. I got that. I was like, nope, we're not doing that. You're not doing no. They got me last week with the change trip when the dude was like, can we just drop her off real quick? And they added it and it charged me like 50 bucks. And I went up five miles to drop her off and had to go all the way back down. They got me with that shit last week. Today, I was like, nah, I'm not doing the change trip. Oh, oh, the girl's like, that's fine. We'll just get another Uber. I was like, cool, shit. <laughs> it's like, I'm not doing, I agreed on $10 for two miles. That's what I agreed on. That's what I'm looking at. I'm not going to do no 10 mile trip and end up getting like $14 total. Nope. Fuck that. So then after I dropped them off, I was down in the area and that's when I got, and Juan, that's when you hit me up and you was like, Hey man, it was like, are you, are you uh, come up to Tempe? It's on some fire up here in Tempe. I was like, dude, I'm stuck down in Gilbert Chandler right now. It was surging like crazy down there because no drivers were up there. Oh, Bay, you said, hey, Jeff, was your driving strategy the same when you drove your Jeep? Nope. I learned a lot, man. Ever since I got this Beamer, I learned a whole lot. The Jeep started teaching me stuff. Now, when I had the Jeep, I was I was not doing any long trips. So I would get rid of nature hikes. But once I got the car, that's when I started really focusing on super short trips. With the Jeep, I just didn't do nature hikes at all. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing no nature hikes, this and that. But I would still do some pretty dollar a mile trips. I would do a dollar fifty, two dollar mile trips. I was stupid when I had the Jeep because I didn't know. Like I said, we didn't have any YouTube channels that taught us how to drive. We had a bunch of YouTube channels of people promoting who they were. They didn't promote driving smart. They didn't try to help us out. What up, Torp? My man, what's good, brother? I see you in there. Man. And so we didn't have a lot of channels that taught people how to accurately make money, how to analyze, how to run this shit like a business. We had channels that were teaching people how to turn the app on. This is how you turn the app on. You slide this way. Now you're activated. Now you can drive. That's all we had, motherfuckers, teaching you. And then it was like, you want to watch me drive? You want to see how I make money? Okay. How did you make the money? And they wouldn't tell you how they made the money. They were just bragging about how much they made. Oh, I'll make this much. I'm this, I'm that. I'll make this much. I, and this is what I am. I'm the best out there. I'm the greatest out there. I make that's all these channels would talk about. They would never get into the meat of driving. Like, how are you making that money? Show us how. Oh, man. You know, I'm just smart. I'm just good. That's how that's how I'm doing it, man. I'm just a good driver, man. I wake up every day at four o'clock. I'm done by 11 p.m. And that's it. They never showed how they made the money. So I didn't have anything to gauge it off of. When I was driving, I didn't have any true education. I just knew that if I didn't start using my accounting degree real soon, and I mean, I was doing good with the Jeep, but I mean, you can look on some of my old videos and shit. I was driving 51 hours. I drove one time. I drove like 72 hours. That's what I used to do because that's what everybody was doing. And I was like, and we, so you, when you look at my old videos, you'd be like, damn, Jeff, it would take you 40 hours to make a thousand bucks, man. 1200 bucks. I can make that shit in two days now, eight hours, nine hours. I can make that now. I don't got to drive that much. Because now I know how to do it now. Yeah, they made the money with referrals. That's it, Steve. That's it. Steve ain't, he, he sees through the bullshit. Steve, through, he sees through the bullshit. A lot of these motherfuckers was putting their goddamn links on all their videos. So it was like, oh, yeah, man, I made 1800 last week. But they didn't tell you three of the motherfuckers were referrals that finally cleared up. Three referrals finally did all their rides and shit. They wasn't telling everybody the true story. That's why they wouldn't show their screens of everything. They wouldn't show nobody how they were making the money. They didn't show dates. A lot of motherfucking those drive. They didn't show dates. They didn't show nothing. So we were like, and that's why I love, you know, recording a screen. If you if you record your screen while you're driving and doing your thing, like a few videos I've seen, like my man, uh, was that um Andrew at your service? He does it. Juan Vargas is about to start doing it. Uber Lyft Nick does it. There's a few videos. Rod Flow, he does. It. He's down in Florida. People who actually record their screens are showing you their market and how they're maneuvering in their market. You could take some of their tactics and try to apply it to your market. The drivers that ain't showing you shit except dollar signs at the end of their week, don't fuck with them. Don't fuck with them. Yeah, man. See, I would live stream my drive, man, but I get down with my customers, man. I don't, I don't want to live stream my drive. I live stream my actual, like, as I'm driving, but when a customer get in, I turn it off. Because, man, we be in there cracking up, laughing, having fun and shit like this and that. And I don't know a raggedy motherfucker getting on my, I don't believe you talk to your riders like that. You should be deactivated. Man, shut the fuck up. I'll talk to you like that, motherfucker. So I, like, take all that shit away. And me and my drivers, we have, you know, it's like attorney-client privilege. They have the privilege and I have the privilege. We got privacy. We can laugh, talk, joke how we want to joke, talk about what we want. I don't record them. I don't do that. When I first started driving, I record some funny shit. 
Like we be on like dancing and music and shit like that. But now I don't record. I'll record like my actual driving. So Brian, you're right. When I get in there, gig act exposed, that's my man, Brian. I record like me driving, me selecting, me choosing. So people see it ain't no fuckery with it. It's really me doing it. I'm, I'm, it ain't no hack doing it. It ain't no motherfucking, you know, no bot running in the background. I'm not using a glitch to do shit. I'm doing it right here on my screen. If there's anything that I want you to see that I don't want the engineers to see, I say Harriet Tubman. You can fucking email me about that shit. If you say, Jeff, man, I'm having a hard time saving my surge. Harriet Tubman, motherfucker. Harriet Tubman. Hit me up. Harriet Tubman. My email, ubergbazy at gmail.com. Harriet Tubman, motherfucker. Because I'm going to help you make money. I'm not going to fucking shut that, shut that hole. If I notice somebody taught me something, I'm not going to fucking expose that shit to the engineers at Uber and Lyft. I don't work for Uber and Lyft. I don't work for them. So I'm not going to do their fucking job. If they like, man, these motherfuckers is really making some good money. How? We got them capped off at 35 an hour. These motherfuckers making $80 an hour. What are they doing? You got to find out because you ain't going to find it on my fucking channel. I can tell you that much. Harriet Tubman, motherfucker. You ain't going to find it on my channel. And so a lot of people see how we do it, man. Yeah, Andrew, he's all right. He gets out of hustles and trying to get that private. Yeah, so he's going to do it, man. Andrew at the service is going to do it. He's a very, to me, he's more professional. Me, I'm more personal. I've been professional my whole life. Got me as far as I wanted to get. Retired out of professional corporate America shit. Now it's just me. Motherfuckers get in my car. It's just me. We kicking it. We riding. Motherfucker hop in. Shit. They be having motherfucking marijuana weed shirts on and shit like that. I'm like, hey, there we go. Let's roll. I just I got motherfucking Nipsey playing, motherfucking schoolboy Q and shit when they jump in. They be like, oh, that's my shit. Man of the year. And it's just the man of the year. Man of the year. More bounce. We be in the car getting it like a motherfucker. Fuck them. I'm not professional at all. When you riding with me, you riding with me. You not riding with Uber, Lyft, Jeff Bezos, none of the motherfuckers. You riding with me. And if somebody don't like it, they can always cancel that motherfucker and I'll get the next ride. I'm going to make my money. Oh, I don't like rap. I, can you just cancel this ride and drop me off at Circle K? Sure will. And I'm going to get me a donut, you crusty, dusty motherfucker while I'm there. Get the fuck out of my car. And I'm going to pick up another ride and we're going to have fun. Fuck this dusty motherfuckers. I don't fuck with them like that. So when I'm in my car, they rolling with me. We having a good time. We kicking it. If they don't want to roll. Now, I don't. I tame it down a little bit for the older crowd because I know some people, you know, they ain't like that. They ain't all that energetic. You know, they got grandkids done warm the fuck out. So we be just sitting around chatting, laughing, cruising, listening to some Jesse Cook Spanish guitar and shit, you know, talking about life, food, shit like that. And that's how we get down. When it comes time to the point where, you know, I get a young crowd coming in. Oh, sh they gonna love the ride. They gonna love it. Cause they're gonna be like, man, we walked up to the car. This motherfucker was bumping Kendrick Lamar when we walked out the fucking building. He out in the fucking park a lot. Hold up. Mm. <laughs> like, hold up. Shit, I'll be out there bumping like a motherfucker. If they don't like it, they can always say, hey, can you play something else? Cool, what you what you talking about? I got Spotify, what you want? And we can play that shit. If they don't like the ride, we can always cancel that motherfucker because like I said, I'm going to get my money. I don't give a fuck about half these riders. I'm going to get my money. Most of these riders want to get a free sausage fucking McMuffin. That's what they want. So they're going to lie to get that shit. They're going to lie to get a ride. Oh, yeah, this driver. Like I met a lady last night. And she said that an Uber driver is lying on her and her husband saying that they made him feel uncomfortable with some weird shit trying to sue her and her husband. I'm like, what? Yeah, because we were drunk. We were having fun and we were laughing. And my husband said something about he was like trash. His attitude was garbage or trash. And they said that we were, um, what did she call it? Oh, I can't remember the word, but it was something disorderly conduct. She said it was the officer was like, she said, yeah, and Chandler police came to our house and everything and said we had disorderly conduct with an Uber driver. This is why. She says, well, when you're inebriated, you can't call somebody trash. You can't call them. I said, so if I'm sober, I can call you trash. But if I'm drunk, I can't call you trash. Yeah, because they constitute as disorderly conduct because you're drunk when you said it. I'm like, man, these motherfucking soft ass Uber drivers. Man. <laughs> like he did not just sit up there and say, oh, well, they disorderly conduct. They call me trash. I wish a motherfucker would call me trash. On oh, my Spotify channel name? I don't know. I think it's Jeff Watts. I don't know. Shit. Let me see. I know it's in here. Oh, let me see something real quick. Spotify. How do I find out what my channel name is? Man, you always be asking me some weird shit. Let me see. Your library. View profile. It's just a number. That's my channel number, I guess. 
Uh, then you can see it a little bit. Wait a minute. Let me turn like this. Uh, you can't really see it. It's just a number. It don't have a name. It's like 12503-15915. That's the number. I don't know. Only got nine followers. It ain't ain't no big deal. Shit, I'll be just cruising, man. This is the order that dude turned down. Had me yelling at the screen. <laughs> All Boston drivers are making bank. Yeah, yeah. The Asian guy in Boston makes bank. And some people do that, man. We turn down certain orders not because we want to, you know, don't want that money. We just might not want to go that way. We might want to go somewhere else. That's why I turn down orders. Torp says, I wish we could cancel certain hot dog delivery. I should do ride share and a driver seem well united. Oh, Torp, man, we trying to pull it together, man, because there, there were so many channels. Like I said, in the when I first started, half these channels were just bragging channels. They weren't even trying to help other drivers out. They were just trying to show that they were a better driver than every other driver anybody's ever going to see. So subscribe my channel because I'm the best motherfucker you ever going to see. Turn the motherfucking key. Fuck them drivers, man. I don't fuck with them. I don't fuck with them. When they start talking like that and acting like that, they ain't got shit to say. They ain't got shit to say. It's a bunch of bragging motherfuckers who ain't going to share no information, no education. You just got to get in your car at 430 every day and just drive. Don't stop. Keep the motherfucker. Run red lights if you have to, motherfucker. Just keep driving. You're going to make them. Fuck them. I don't listen to them. So when you start seeing drivers out there that are saying, okay, this is how you got to do it, man. This is what you do to make the money. You got to be smart. You got to be analytical. You got to treat this shit like a business. Don't take it personal when a motherfucker cancel you or you cancel somebody, you decline somebody. Because I used to take that shit personal back in the day when I'd be driving to people and they go, rider canceled. I'm like, man, motherfucker, cancel me. What the fuck? But sometimes people cancel you because they might have five people and or they might have extra big luggage. There's a, a multitude of reasons why somebody might cancel you. It ain't because they just don't want you. A, a lot of motherfuckers, especially you know, when I used to watch channels, oh, they cancel me because I'm black. Like, what? Like, motherfuckers don't cancel people for race shit like that, no man. That's, that's so 1981, and Uber wasn't even out in 1981, motherfucker. I'm like, people cancel you for a multitude of reasons. It ain't always racial. They might have extra slug. And say, oh, shit, man, this is a 330i. It's the same fucking car I got. Oh, he ain't gonna fit all this shit in his car. It's the same fucking car I got. Cancel. Oh, man, we got five fucking people. This dude sit for cancel. They could just cancel. I don't give a shit because all this does is open my, my plate back up. And I'm like, oh, shit, let me go over here and sit at this quick trip real quick. Go pick up this motherfucker surge. Put my shit on Uber Pet. Pick up a surge. That's why I do it. So I don't mind. I used to take that shit personal, man. It's business, though. I tell motherfuckers, this is when I cancel somebody or I decline something. It's business. It ain't nothing personal. And that's why I like ride share a lot. Delivery, you know, for a long time, people in like even ride share drivers, delivery and ride, we were put down by the public. We were called no skill, low skill. We don't do shit. We don't. And they're right. We can't bullshit. I mean, how much skill does it take to walk inside a Dairy Queen and pick up a fucking a, a shake? How it don't take that much skill. But do that. Walk into Dairy Queen and pick up a shake, but also buy a house. Also pay your car, your car note, your car insurance, pay for your kids' college tuition, put food in the refrigerator, fucking generate a savings account. That's the skill right there. Because picking up a fucking milkshake is not skillful. But you tell a motherfucker at a W-2, I want you to go out and pick up milkshakes for one year and tell me how you live it. They going to go on the ground after two fucking weeks. Man, I made like $80 a day. What the fuck am I doing wrong? Yeah, you ain't got the skill to run a business. Just like with driving. It don't take a lot of skill to drive. It's motherfuckers. I could walk around the corner right now and see all cars going down the street. All these motherfuckers going to wreck later today. All I'm going to fucking wreck. They're going to be rearing each other, hitting the curb and shit, curb hopping through the motherfucking drive through and shit. They ain't got no skill because it don't take no skill to drive. But do that shit and make money at the same time. That's the trick right there. And a lot of people don't have that business acumen. And the ride share apps know a lot of people don't have the business acumen. So they try to play motherfuckers. They, oh, keep your AR up. You could be in our diamond program. Don't you want to be a diamond driver? No, not really. I want some fucking money. That's really what I want, some money. I don't want no motherfucking digital goddamn trophy on my phone. Fuck this phone. I want some money. Mama, give me the money. Like on Jungle Fever, give me the money, mama. I know you got some money. <laughs> it's like shit. Hey, Dora, hey, Big Fidesz, props all you Roger guys. More risk than hot dog pickups like me. 
But see, that's the thing, man. If you look at all my videos, I do pickups. I pick up food. I do everything. I don't give a fuck. If it's worth the money, I'll do it. If it ain't worth the money, I'm not doing it. I don't give a fuck if you got Michael Jackson standing on the corner. If that shit's 50 cent a mile, fuck Michael Jackson. It's 50 cent a mile. Jeff, that's Michael Jackson, though, man. I don't give a fuck. That's 50 cent a mile. I'd rather go pick up a motherfucking FedEx working for $4 a mile. That's just what I do. I'm here for the money. I'm not here for the fuckery. I'm here for the money. And a lot of people respect that because I keep it up front and I keep it real. I don't know. Oh, I love ride share. I don't know what I would do without it. I'd die if I couldn't drive. Man, fuck these people. They trying to fucking get me deactivated. Fuck them. So I'm going to get the money before I get deactivated. So I'm trying to go pick them up safely, get them to where they need to be. They drunk. I don't want them to get DUIs and get tickets and shit. I'm going to do that the best I can. And that's my job. I keep it real. I keep it up front. And they tell me, hey, I just want to ride home, Jeff. I don't want to be your best friend, motherfucker. Just give me a ride home. That's it. Cool. And we'll have a great time for fucking 15 minutes. We ain't got to be best friends. I'm just giving them a ride home. They keep it real up front. You know what? I just want to sit and talk to my phone. I just broke up with my girl. I'm just kind of saying, all right, cool, cool. No problem. I'll play some music then, motherfucker. They keep it real with me. I keep it real with them. This is life. If we end up being friends out like some people I am friends with after the ride and shit, because we had such a good time, we exchange numbers, information, cards, and all that shit. We become good friends. Is it uh oh, bro? If the Cardinals win, they're gonna be some good fights. <laughs> Cowboy fans fight their old like the 49ers. <laughs> That's funny. All for kicks that sound like gators. Sam Jacks, I know it. Mama, I know you got the money. Give me that money, mama. Shit. And I tell motherfuckers, you know what? Oh, Cardinals up 21-10 halftime. Uh oh, it, it might turn around. Say $300 diamond pay, you get that once. Yeah, that's it. You get the diamond pay once and you don't get it no more. So it's like once you hit it, you're done with it. It's, it's over. You're done. So we out here to get this money. We're not here to bullshit with nobody. We're not here to, you know, try to say, you know, I'm the best Uber driver you'll ever see. People say that shit all the time. Man, you're the best Uber driver, man. You fucking cool because it's that energy. I'm probably the worst Uber driver they'll ever fucking have in reality. I'm probably the worst one. I probably don't open a door for them. I don't shine a motherfucking shoes when they getting out the car. Let me shine your shoe for you, Jimmy. I don't do none of that shit. I'm the worst motherfucking Uber driver. I, they get in my car. I'm playing motherfucking LL Cool J and shit. I'm sitting there playing motherfucking Keith Murray. I'm just riding around fucking kicking. They got the windows down. They hair all fucked up when they get out because I won't let the windows up. I'm the worst motherfucking Uber driver ever. And they like, oh, man. You're the best driver ever. Next car they get, motherfucker. Let me shoe shine your shoes, Jimmy. And they like, oh, man, you're the best driver ever. You shine my shoes. See, I didn't do that shit. So I could be the worst driver. But they tell me I'm the best. Who gives a shit? We're here to have a good time and share that motherfucking energy. That's right, man. It's just Leo energy. We just have a good time. And it's like we experience shit and we could talk about it later in life. We could talk about it next week. Man, we had the funnest ride. I got some shit in my the videos that I did. So I pick up these girls last night. Funny shit. So I pick up these girls down in Gilbert. They they like the last of the Mohicans and shit. You know, the motherfuckers at the very end, that's all out of money because they wanted to miss the surge. So I pick these two girls up, swing around, and I, they like, hey, hey, slow down, slow down. So there's these two dudes sitting. I'm thinking they trying to get the motherfucking number and shit. I'm like, these bitches gonna sit up and try to get the fucking digits as we pulling off because they're in a nice car. Slow down, slow down. Okay. So we pull up and they look at the winner of the dude. And the girl yells out, she just goes, nice swimming trunks. And they laughing and shit. And I drive off and they just cracking them laughing. I'm like, what was that about? She says, because we saw him in the club earlier. And we like, this motherfucker is in here with swimming trunks on. Who the fuck wears swimming trunks? And I'm like, that dude, I'm like, y'all don't get it, man. He's thinking of before his time. This is Arizona. Motherfuckers have swimming parties after the club. So he don't have to go home and change clothes. He just wore swimming trunks to the motherfucking club. He probably got a bath towel in the fucking car. He got goggles and shit in the car. This motherfucker ready to swim. He ain't fucking with y'all up in the club. They were laughing so hard. I said, this motherfucker probably wearing them goddamn swimming trunks. They got the net draws in them. You don't have to wear underwear with those motherfuckers. They got the little fish net draws you wear in those motherfuckers. He in there dancing and drinking and shit with y'all because he going swimming right after. See, y'all got to go home and get ready. This motherfucker's already ready for the swimming party. <laughs> <laughs> and they were rolling laughing they were like man it's like jeff this shit is so funny the girl's like i'm gonna pee my pants <laughs> she was dying laughing i was like y'all motherfuckers don't know how to pee game dude is above he's he's a legend before his time that's some shit i would do i'd wear a swim trunk to the motherfucking club you're like jeff why the fuck you in here with swim trunks on with a motherfucking bath towel around your neck just in case somebody got a pool motherfucker 
you got a swimming pool, we going swimming after this. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, see me on the dance floor with some motherfucking goggles on and shit. I got a whole motherfucking snorkel set in the middle of the dance floor. This motherfucker got snorkel and shit on, man. Motherfucker might have a pool. When we leave this bitch, we going to a swimming party. <laughs> Everybody all dressed up and shit. Man, exactly. It's still upper night. Man, people have swim parties after this shit. I be picking up motherfuckers. Where y'all going? We going to the pool. Motherfuckers be jumping in with their panties and bras on, underwear and boxing drawers and shit. I'm walking around this motherfucker with swim trunks on on a snorkel up in the middle of the motherfucking club. They're like, what he on? This motherfucker going to a swim party after this. I'm already ready. I ain't got to get ready, motherfucker. I'll stay ready. Shit. Where the party at? <laughs> oh, what up, Greasy? My man, what's good? The UK. The bait, Uber bait, shit. But that's why I tell people, man, it's like you got to fucking, you got to be ready for anything when you go to a club out here. So when I pull it up and I'm picking up people, I have no idea who I'm picking up. And that's another shit, you know, I was talking about. I was like, why don't we have, you know, the passenger payload on every order? Like when we're driving, they should throw the bottom of the screen. Like, is it a three? Like, are we picking up three people? Show a little red three. Show a four, show a one, show us something. Let us know what the payload is because there's not, there's not a delivery driver out there who don't know what his fucking payload is. He driving a big ass truck and he just show up. No, you know, you got a bill of lading. You have something to show you what you picking up. We don't only motherfuckers just driving around nilly willy all fucking day. We don't know what we going to end up in. We just drive up and there's like five motherfuckers on a curb. We like, we had no idea. We thought it was one. We see Shelly. We think we picking up Shelly. We picking up Shelly. Kenny, Tyrone, fucking, you know, Jake. We got all these motherfuckers getting in the car. We ain't know that shit. <laughs> it's like, yeah, show me the money, shit. And that's what you got to do, man. We got to we gotta have, what up, KC Biz strategy? Oh, and this lady right here, whoo, KC, shh. She's out in Vegas, so she's she swapped up her, her, uh, her strategy a little bit. She said, I'm going to swap my strategy up. I'm going to do something a little different. So her and her husband out there driving, driving. These motherfuckers together, together, almost made $4,000 in one week. Four Gs in one week. They almost hit it. And she made more than him. They out there doing it. They out there doing it, man. And I tell motherfuckers, they think, you know, ride share drivers is broke. Ride share drivers ain't got shit. Ride share drivers, you motherfuckers need to go get a real job. Y'all, y'all, this ain't y'all second job. What do y'all do for real work? If you making four Gs a week between the two of y'all, that's 200 Gs a year. You can keep your motherfucking W-2. If you paying me four Gs a week and I'm bringing that income to my house, four Gs a week, I don't need no W-2. Don't be hollering me. No, because these motherfuckers hollering at us about these W-2s, but they don't even know what we do for They don't look at channels like mine. They look at the big channels, the channels that show this is how you turn on the Uber app. This is how you pick people up. You open up the door. They get the fuck in. That's the kind of shit they look for. They come to a channel like mine, they be mad as a motherfucker. They be like, I'm quitting my job tomorrow. These motherfuckers making 300 a day, working three, four hours, making 300. I'm quitting my job. Fuck that. <laughs> they don't look at channels like mine. YouTube won't tell motherfuckers with jobs about this channel. No, they don't want that. <laughs> Listen, it's so hot, I'm going to use Jeff's Tuber app. Yeah, hell yeah, man. That fucking Tuber, goddammit. Let these motherfuckers drive themselves. You just sit in the house and chill. They can drive themselves. That's right, KCA. We let them, man. Hey, they can keep that job. Fuck that. But they the main ones. Yeah, you should go get a real job while working next to you. And then after we get off on Friday, we got to go, you know, give some of our money to the payday loan places. We took out a payday loan last week. You want me to do that with you? You want me to kick it with you, motherfucker? Because that's where you at right now. And I tell people, watch who you listen to because you fuck around, end up in the same boat they in. And you might not want to be in that boat. You might be in a better boat than what they got. But these motherfuckers in the comments, you need to do this. You should be doing that. You should be doing this. Meanwhile, you bringing home 4000 a week. You bringing home 4 Gs a fucking week. And they like, uh, yeah, you should probably be listening to the motherfucker bringing the 4 Gs home and talk to them. Say, hey, Casey, what are you doing? How are you doing that? Well, for one, I'm not taking no bullshit rides. That's for one. <laughs> I'm not driving like you. Shit. That's the first thing. I'm not driving like you. And once people start understanding how we do it and they see it, then and they and if they use the same drive and the same hustle that they got already, but they apply some business acumen to it, they apply some knowledge to it, some common sense to it. Imagine how much more money they can make. But not only that, they're going to change the app. The app's going to stop sending us three dollar fucking rides, four dollar fucking rides. The only reason why the app does that is because of those motherfuckers. That's the only reason why the app still sends those bullshit rides. Because you got them off of, oh, I got to stay busy. 
Got a new app? Oh, I just accept everything. As soon as it hits my phone, I get it. I need to get that money. Dude, that's like $6 for like 13 miles. I got to get that money, though. I'm not going to be sitting around. And the moment they take that, the app goes, okay, so we just got, you know, the four high AR drivers in the area are all on rides right now. All four high AR drivers are on rides. All we have left are these fucking cherry pickers. Well, give them the good rides. So the high AR motherfuckers got all the shitty rides because they know the algorithm knows they're going to take it. So they're guaranteed to be busy. They stay busy. The algorithm goes, but we got to pay Jeff $13 for this, and it's going like six miles. We got to pay, you know, KC, we got to pay her $12 for this. It's going four miles. We got to pay Juan Vargas $22 for this. This is going six miles. All the high AR motherfuckers is busy. And the algorithm sees it. Well, we already got the fucking suckers out the way. Now we got to deal with the motherfuckers. We got rid of the suckers. Now we got the motherfuckers. Because we the motherfuckers. <laughs> so either you a sucker or you a motherfucker. But you can't be a sucker, motherfucker. <laughs> you got to be one or the other, goddammit. And I ain't no sucker. I'm that motherfucker. That's right, man. My AR 21%. Hey, I'm getting there. I'm, down. I'm probably at about 24% right now. I was at 33%. I think I'm down a little bit. Cause I had to get rid of, get out of some busy ass areas. What Mel says that they can, they can keep those ragged ass W two jobs, continue driving, having my crusty ass donut. That's right, man. Shit, we be Casey said, I'm cherry picking like a motherfucker. And then as a hey, Greasy said, we grind out here. Hell yeah, we grinding out here, baby. We grinding. And a lot of people are seeing that now. Now they're seeing how we out there doing it, and they're going, okay, maybe these motherfuckers is really on something because they're not spending a whole lot of money, but they're making what we're making. They're not spending a whole lot of time on the road, but they making the same thing we making. If we making two G's, they making two G's, but we working 80 hours, they working 30 hours. It's like we making the same gross, but our net income is way different. Like we net higher, way higher because we don't spend a lot of time and effort doing it. Efficiency, efficiency. Carlos Rivera, what up, bro? Just got your T-shirts today. Last night was amazing. Made 500. What? Now I just need five more trips to complete a quest, Jeff. Gonna do deliveries, listen to Jeff. <laughs> Just gonna do deliveries. There you go, brother. Hey, well, I'm glad the shirt showed up. My man Carlos, he ordered some shirts and he had to get them motherfuckers. He had to put them tips on there, man. Shit. Hopefully, you out there getting that money, brother. 500, man. You and Juan Vargas both did that shit. He made 500 over the past two days, like 500 each day. And you made 500 yesterday. I'm still under four. I'm right up under four, man. I'm gonna get there, though. I need to get out a little earlier. That's what I need to do. I need to get out maybe two, three hours early than normal. So I can get a little extra money because I take breaks through the day, through the night. I'm taking breaks. I'm sitting in the parking lot. I'm chilling. I'm relaxing. And that takes up a little time. But, you know, I'm not a greedy ass driver. If I can make 250, 300 and I'm only doing three, four hours, I'm cool with that. Five hours. I'm cool with that. I'll do fucking 250 in five hours. I'm cool with that. So it's like, but if I want to start hitting y'all level, then I need to do what y'all do. I need to get out a little earlier or just kind of let my morning drag on a little bit. Get out there. And we can do that shit. Yeah, patience is the key. That's it. Patience is the key. Because motherfuckers see me, man. I'm sitting on brick walls and shit, just hanging the fuck out. I'm looking at, and sometimes when there's no surge at all, I'll just turn my apps off and I'll just sit in the area, sit there for like five minutes, turn the apps on, a big red spot will pop up somewhere. Because no drivers are around. As long as you're a driver around, they're not going to want to get any drivers to that area because you're in that area. So what they do is say, hey, we don't got no drivers down there. Because last night, you'll see on the video, I was way south. They had a $9 surge, $15 surge, 14 All that shit was around me because I had my app turned off. As soon as I turned it on, all these surges popped up. I'm telling you, man, I can't wait to drop this video because it, it is unreal at how shit's going when you kind of figure out what's going on with the apps, like how they're, because it's surge baiting. That's all it is, is surge baiting. They don't want to give nobody a fucking surge for real. It's baiting. But once you figure out that you're being baited, you got to be smarter. Uber pet that motherfucker. <laughs> it's like, I'm being baited. I know I'm being baited because if they knew I was here on UberX, I wouldn't have a surge sitting here. So you have to bait them some. You have to deal with the baiting. And we deal with that in a different way other than saying, oh, I'm just going to drive down there. Just like my man, uh, what Stanley Jenkins was saying, you have to put it on something else because he was saying when he was on XL and everything, it's throwing him too many rides. He can't even make it to the surge because it keeps throwing him rides. And that's what they do. And you see that shit in some of my videos. When I'm trying to get to a surge, they keep throwing me rides, taking me away from the surge or he'll throw me a ride, you know, going in the opposite direction of the surge back towards the, Let all that shit go. Let it all go. Either turn your app off, turn that shit on Uber Pet, figure something out. 
because they're going to keep trying to get you to go away from that money because they want to bait everybody there. And if you go get it already, they're in the pocket for that. That's a liability on them. Now they got to pay you that shit. So the first thing I'm going to do is think, well, this sucker motherfucker got this $14. Send him a nature hike. Send him, you know, 36 miles for $50 or some weird shit like that. Send him way the fuck out somewhere. And when they find out you're not taking that shit, wait a minute. How is he not taking all these nature hikes and we still in the hole for this liability? We still own this $14. Play the system. There you go, Greasy. You got to play the system. Harriet Tubman, motherfucker. Harriet Tubman. You got to play the system. Know it. And I'm one of that was that follow the steps, chill by the gas station, have a crusty donut and wait for the good pan ride and decline the trash. <laughs> Melly Mel. <laughs> and that's how we do it, though. That's how we do it. I tell people, man, you've got to have patience. you got to be willing to let all the trash go. Let that shit go. So many people are scared. Well, if, if I let this ride go, I'm not going to get another ride for 10 minutes. So. So what if, if 10 minutes pass, you don't get a ride. It's 10 minutes. It ain't like three months, motherfucker. Some people, like I said, they sit at home on the couch waiting for the perfect job to come. Three months later, they still sit on the couch. No, I'm waiting on that job, man. I'm going to get that job at Google, man. I know what I'm going to get that job at Google. Well, how come you just don't get a job right now and make money while you're waiting on a job? Because I don't know. Google might call tomorrow, man. I don't know when they're going to call. So I'm not going to go get a job and then be stuck at this job. And then Google finally called me. So three fucking months, these motherfuckers are sitting on the couch. What's up, Rasha? Lisa, she in the house. <laughs> So three months later, these motherfuckers are sitting on the couch waiting on Google to call. And they looking at us like, well, you sat in that parking lot for 10 minutes. I'm like, 10 minutes? Motherfucker, you've been at home for three months. What the fuck are you telling me about 10 minutes for? I could take 10 minutes. Because with that same 10 minutes, I could be doing a goddamn 50 cent a mile ride for the next 20, 30 minutes, missing the opportunity of a good ride popping up. So I'm sitting here next thing you know, holy shit. This motherfucker is that that carbon fiber lip look grizzly. Oh, thank you, ABC. Hey, that, that carbon fiber's back. It's back, baby. So instead of me just taking a ride for the next, you know, 10, 15 minutes doing a 50 cent a mile ride, I kick back. I get a $4 a mile ride. Just waiting. $4 a mile. So for everybody that's driving for $1 a mile, everybody out there driving for $1 a mile, you have to drive four times the amount of miles we drive if we're getting $4 a mile. The math is what it is. You can't beat the fucking numbers. If somebody's getting $5 a mile and you're getting $1 a mile, you've got to drive five times the amount to make the same amount of money this dude making at $5 a mile. Because just think, if you're going $5 a mile, you drive 10 miles, you're getting $50. You're getting $50 for going 10 miles. How much of this $1 a mile motherfucker got to drive? 50 miles. So this guy's doing 10 miles, 10 miles, 10 miles. And every time getting $50 for every 10 miles, he's doing 10 miles, 50 bucks, 10 miles, 50 bucks, 10 miles, 50 bucks. You're getting one mile, a $1 a mile. So you got to go 50 miles, 50 miles. 50, you keep doing that shit, you're going to run out of gas. And you're right back at the gas station. And this guy can do way more miles. He can do way more 10-mile trips at $5 a mile than you can do 50-mile trips at $1 a mile. Oh, I did a 50-mile trip and I got 50 bucks. Another 50 mile trip and I got 50 bucks and another 50 mile trip and I got 50. This dude went 10 miles, 50 and he's sitting down chilling. Another one comes through 10 more miles, 50. He just keeps doing that shit over and over again. These $1 a mile motherfuckers, they don't understand how math works. The numbers are, are finite. The numbers are not infinite. Numbers trap. That's why accounting is like organization. Accounting is very organized. You trap data with numbers. So your numbers are finite. They're not infinite. You don't have an infinity fucking sign on anything you do. You have to say, okay, if I want to make X amount of dollars in this many months, this is how many miles I have to drive if I'm at this dollar per mile. You have to financially plan. Anytime somebody opens a business, the first thing they do is they say, I need a budget. I need a budget. So once they give you a budget, they give you the numbers. I need the numbers. How much can we make? What are our projections? They call them projections. Every business has projections. Once you give your projections, those are revenue projections. Then you got your budget. That's your expense budget for the revenue projections you got. If you're not doing that shit in ride share, you ain't running a business right. Have a projection. Say, I would like to drive 30,000 miles this year. But out of those 30,000 miles, I would like at least two to three dollars a mile. So that's between $60,000 and $90,000 a year I can make. But 20,000 miles and I can get a full tank about 400 miles. This is about 500 full tanks of fuel 
okay, out of 500 fuel tanks, how much does it cost me to fill up a tank? Okay, 50 bucks. All right, so $2,500 in gas. It's going to cost me $2,500 in fuel or $25,000 in fuel or whatever, and I'm going to make $90,000. Okay, cool, perfect. I got it. I got it. So when you sit there and you start putting out your projections and your budget and you start lining shit out, you start making better decisions because executives have to make decisions on those projections. They have to make decisions on those budgets. They, You don't just like log in every fucking day at work, scan in and people just start working. No, there's a reason why everybody's doing things in finance the way they do them. And they say, okay, we need everybody to work an extra four hours a day or we need everybody to come in extra. We need to hire seasonal help. They got to do all of this to keep up with the projections, with the budget. They got to do all of this work. With people in rideshare, they don't think like that. I just wake up at four and I drive to 11. I take every ride that's coming at the end of the day. I see how much I got. Okay, you're through probably through a tank and a half of gasoline. You done filled up and now you're back at a half tank again. And now you sitting there with $300 of your name, but it took you 12 hours to get that $300. 12 hours. Meanwhile, somebody that drove three, four hours got that same 300. And they probably went maybe a quarter of a tank. Quarter of a tank versus you in a tank and a half. At some point, you got to start doing math with that shit. You got to get out the fucking pencil like this shit. You get out the fucking ink pen. Like I keep an ink pen around me at all times and you start jotting shit down. Even if it's a sketch projection, even if it's a random projection, you have to make some form of projection out there. So you have some idea of what your bottom line is. Like me, a dollar a mile is only an option if I need to get from point A to point B. If I say, man, I got to get downtown. Okay, that's about, you know, nine miles. Well, I need at least nine dollars. So hopefully I get 15. I'm going for 15. But if I get nine and I keep getting nine, I'll take the nine. Fuck it. I'll take the nine. So I'm going to go three miles to get to the person, then six miles of downtown. Cool. Nine bucks. I'll take it. Because you have to have some form of now I need to be back on my $3 a mile, $4 a mile, $5 a mile. If I get $15 a mile, cool. That helps my average go up. That bumps my average up now. If I get $28 a mile because I did a real short trip and got $28 with tips and everything, that bumps my average up. But in no way, shape, or fucking form do I do a 50 cent a mile ride, 70 cent a mile ride, 80 cent, not even a dollar. I don't even like dollar a mile rides. And when I hear people say that shit on this internet, oh, I, my minimum is a dollar a mile. No, that's not my minimum. That's my, you know, gas money. My minimum, I would think, is about $2 a mile, a little less than $2 a mile, maybe $1.90, $1.75 a mile. That's my minimum. My emergency is saying, um, maybe I need to get downtown and I don't want to go on my own gas. Let's do an emergency ride. Let's do a $1 a mile ride. This is an emergency ride. There is no fucking minimum of a dollar. Because if you put your minimum at a dollar, you're going to keep finding those rides over and over and over and over again. And you're going to keep accepting your minimum over and over and over again. Make your minimum higher. When you make your minimum higher, you're going to take less rides, but more quality rides. And you're going to say, well, I wanted a $2 ride. But as I was waiting on a $2 ride, I got a $4 a mile ride. Then I got a $6 a mile ride. And the whole time I'm waiting on a $2 a mile ride. Because you keep getting all these $1 a mile, $1. They keep coming down the fucking pipe. They throwing them at you to the point we just turn your fucking app off. Oh, glitch ass. I appreciate that, brother. He said a lot of people in this community consider this the best channel in the gig space. I appreciate that. This is more like a seminar, man. Seminar. Greasy, I've been in the ride share game since 2019, right before the pandemic. I started back in October, November of 2019 when I bought that Jeep. But I've been in the accounting game since I was 15 years old. I started doing accounting for a summer camp when I was 15 years old. Ended up with an accounting degree in it, and I ended up working in corporate America. So I've always done numbers. Numbers have been something I've always done. That's it. Dollar a mile is what you use to get home. See, Steve, he understands the, the assignment. A dollar is what you use to get home. That's your, your transportation money. That ain't no shit you want to use to generate profits. You ain't making no profit with that shit. Don't do that. Don't do that. Let that shit go to somebody else. He is right. If you can get up to $10 a mile, you're doing some good shit. And a few of my rides last night were like that. I was like, holy shit, these rides are getting, them surges were hitting, man. And I'll tell a lot of these drivers out here, Stop listening to the people who say do a dollar a mile. They don't do math because at a dollar a mile, you have to drive 100,000 miles to make $100,000 at a dollar a mile. That's just the math of it. You can do that shit on fucking paper. Do $1 times X equals $100,000. X equals 100,000 fucking miles is what it is. It's basic fucking algebra. 
So if you want to make $100,000, but you're doing four, do four times X equals 100,000. X equals 25,000. So I have to drive 25,000 miles. Yep. But you got 12 months to do it. So 12 over 24,000 miles is 2,000 miles a month. You got to drive 2,000 miles a month, which breaks out to about 500 miles a week. So 500 miles a week, you've got to only find $4 a mile rides if you're only willing to drive 500 miles a week. If you say, I want to drive 1,000 miles a week, or let's say 750 a week, you can drop down into the threes now. You don't have to drive $4 a mile. You can drop into the threes, but you can always get to that 100,000 as long as you don't let it get to $1. Once it gets down to $1, you fucked up the whole equation. You're on a whole nother fucking pay scale now. Your projection is off. Your budget is off. Everything's off. So you've got to sit down and do that basic fucking algebra to say, what does X need to be for me to make that amount? X should be this. And a lot of drivers don't do that. They, I just wake up at 4.30. I wake up at 4.30 and I drive till midnight. That's my schedule. Like, wait, you wake up at 4.30 in the morning and drive every day. I Sometimes I drive till 10 p.m., 4.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. I make $300 a day taking a whole bunch of 50 cent a mile fucking rides going through a whole tank and a half of fuel. I'm like, dude, you don't have a life at that point. Motherfuckers don't even see you. Your kids don't see you. Your dogs don't see you. Your dog probably barking at your motherfucking ass while you're sleeping because you don't even know who the fuck you are. You wake up in a dog growling like, why is my dog growling at me? Because this motherfucker don't know you. You've been gone all the fucking time. This dog is like, it's a strange motherfucker in my house with an Uber shirt on. Who the fuck? Who is this motherfucker? Your dog don't even know who the fuck you are. <laughs> Breaking your guys right, man. That's right. <laughs> Lisa said, Lip tried to give me a ride. $106 for 149 miles. Mashed potatoes. <laughs> Mashed potatoes. That's right, Jamil. Gas prices, man. And see, that's why in my videos, I do different than other, every other ride share video. Every other fucking ride, they never show how much they pay for gas. If you look at my videos, I show how much I'll do it right on the fucking video. I'll be like, this is what I just paid for gas. And then I'll show my miles in the car. Hey, this is how many miles I got. Hey, this is where my level's at. It's at a quarter of a tank. It's at a half tank. It's I show that shit because I got to keep it 100 with y'all. I got to keep it 100. Anybody want to do this shit, you got to keep it 100. And you got a bunch of fake motherfuckers out there only showing you, this is how much I made last week. And this is how long it was online for. Okay, so let's break that number down. How much gas you use? Doesn't matter. Well, yeah, I think it matters for a business aspect. If you're just trying to pass fucking time, then of course it don't matter if you're just trying to pass time. But some of us are trying to make profits. And if we want to make profits, how can we make profits if we don't know our expenses? You need to know your expense side and not just your revenue side. If all you're doing is the revenue side, then that's it. Breaking your car. That's right. That's right. So if you just sitting there saying, I'm only going to show you revenue, I'm only going to show you revenue, you have no idea how much profit they're making because they never show to the other side of the equation. And if they did show you the other side of the equation, a lot of these channels bullshit you because they want you to think they're better than what they really are. They're going to sit up there, oh, yeah, man, I'm the shit, motherfucker. I make 2500 a week and I don't even get gas. My car runs on fucking oxygen, actually. I got an O2 tank hooked up to the fucking back. It just runs on air. My car, no, it, it has to run on gas. How much are you spending on gas? Doesn't matter. Does it? Well, for people who want to know profit margins, it matters. <clears throat> and that's why a lot of these channels are not profit margin type channels. They're bullshit channels. They're fuckery channels. Because they're not going to tell you what it takes to make it in this business. <clears throat> what they're doing is enough to make you think they're more important than what they really are. That's basically what those channels are for. <clears throat> Where's my, oh, here he is back here. I was like, where's my juice at? I, I thought I left that motherfucker. And a lot of people don't realize, man, is that when you get sucked into channels like that and you get sucked into the energy like that, you're out of the realm of business now. You're into the realm of fuckery. If you, that's why when corporate America invests in us, like corporate America would send me all these casinos. And it's funny because Caesar's Palace is going through some shit right now, but I used to work for them. They send us to seminars, time management seminars, opportunity cost seminars, financial management seminars, math seminars. They send us to a lot of different seminars. And that's to invest in us, to get us into the realm of comprehension of different institutions of thought. So once you're in an institution of thought, it's hard to pull you out of that. I've always been in a profit institution of thought. I've always been profitable. So I do things from a level of profit. I don't do things from a level of being busy. Oh, I got to say fucking busy, man. When I leave the house, I just, as soon as my ride hits, I start taking it. 
Ooh, cool. $7 for 14 miles? Take it. That's $7 I didn't have. Oh, shit. $10 for 21 miles? That's $10 I didn't have. And they keep doing that shit. And they never once stop to think, what's the profit margin on this shit that I'm doing? They don't have that business acumen. They're not business people. They're bullshitters. And they're going to show you at the end of the week, I made 2200 last week. How many hours you work? How many miles you drive? Doesn't matter. No, it matters to a business person. It matters. So if they ain't telling you the shit to keep this business legit, they're fuckery people. Don't deal with them. Don't even deal with them. Because you're going to be better off by focusing on what you need to do to keep that roof over your head, to keep that fridge fucking full. And we do that with profits. That's how we do it. We don't do that with the gross. The gross pays for the fixed cost in our life, which is the car, the insurance, not only the, the rent over our head. We have fixed costs we got to pay for. The variable costs are the fuel, the food, the electricity. So once you start making enough profits to handle your, your fixed costs, you can start manipulating the variables. Now you got money in the bank now. You can take a week off. Be like Stanley Jenkins. Go to Cuba. Go to these fucking vacation spots. Go on a cruise. Because now you got a little luck. You sitting on some money now. You good. When you got high AR, you just got to keep driving, 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 driving nonstop. Because you've been accepting so many bullshit rides, your equation that one times X equals 100,000. What is X? X equals 100,000 because you're at $1 a mile times what equals 100,000. What, what my man Tony's in the build, his driven mom having some labor signs. Now the question is if they're a real labor or prepping her for labor. Uh-oh, congratulations. Baby's on the way. This is going to be it. I think we should name the baby Dara. We should name the baby Tony Zoop. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's your baby name? Tony Zoop. My name is Big Tony. That's Tony Zoop. <laughs> it's like, man, how you going to name your baby Tony Zoop and not Tony Jr.? Nope, that's Tony Zoop. <laughs> man. Yeah, exactly. Then they're going to be crying when their car breaks down because when their car breaks down, they don't have any money. They have no profit in the bank left to fix their car. And I'm going to tell you a lot. For real, Melvin, I'm going to tell you like this, real shit. A lot of people don't like my channel, and I know why they don't like it. It's a punch in the fucking face, and I'll tell you why. Because they've been buying so much bullshit from their favorite YouTubers that they have a hard time saying, I don't believe I've been tricked. I don't believe I've been fucking. It's just like the people that was wearing masks all the fucking time saying mask work, mask work to finally find out they did. They don't want to be told it don't work. They don't want to be told it don't work. They want to be told that the shit they're doing works because they're doing it. They don't want to be, oh, man, I've been driving like this for three years. OK, you've been driving like this for three years. Yeah, you know, and I, I'm like, what's your bank account looking like right now, man? You've been doing this for three years. What is it looking like? Because, I mean, we got to start making some profits. What's your bank looking like? Well, you know, I might have to go back and get a W-2 because, yep, that's how you know. They've been listening to the wrong motherfucking YouTubers right off the bat. Right off the bat. They told you just like that. Because there's a way to generate profits to where you can slowly start incrementally having an extra 300 left over, an extra 600 left over. Okay, an extra 800 left over. Now you had $2,200 left over just sitting there. $2,200 in an envelope you don't even fucking need. Because you're busting your ass and you're doing the shit the right way. You got 2200 envelope. Now you're up to 4500 in that envelope. Now you're up to 9000 in that envelope. You're like, damn, man, eight months have passed. I got nine Gs sitting in that envelope after eight fucking months. Nine Gs sitting there. And I paid all my motherfucking bills. So there has to be some point to doing this to where you got something sitting there. And a lot of drivers, they haven't been at that point because they watch other channels. And they come watch mine and the first thing they do, oh, man. I don't want to hear that shit. Of course you don't want to hear it. it. It's embarrassing to say, to sit and listen to somebody call themselves a professional or expert and everything else like that, but they haven't helped you fucking increase nothing in your bank account. All they did was help you keep your AR above 90%. They help you keep your cancellation rate low. They help you do everything for the algorithm to make an algorithm think you a good motherfucking driver, except what's in your bank account. Your bank account will tell you what kind of driver you are. All this other shit, that's for Uber. That's for Lyft. They ain't got shit to do with you. That's, that's them. That's the deal with them. They ain't got shit to do with you. What's got to do with you is whether or not you can go out today and buy your son a $60 birth, a birthday gift. Can you do that today? Your son has something coming from the school. Can you pay that $25 deal? Because I remember when I was little, my mom couldn't pay no $25 for nobody to do no field trip. Damn, mom, we got this field trip tomorrow. It's $25. 
Well, you're going to be sitting in the cafeteria eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with the other kids that can't go because I ain't got no $25. That's how I grew up. Real shit. Real shit. That's how I grew up. And motherfuckers that know me know I'm not lying. They know me. Motherfuckers be like, Santa secret shop coming. Ooh, mom, Santa secret shop at school. Santa secret shop at school. Here's $5. $5? That's two pencils. What the fuck? All these other kids running around with $40, $50 for Santa secret shop? I get $5. That's how, that's how I grew up, motherfuckers that know me know I'm not lying to y'all. I ain't got no reason to lie to y'all. That's how I really grew up. What, in, what Drew say, every gig tuber should spend one video telling people to make their quarterly estimate taxes or at least save for taxes. That's right. That's right. Most people I know personally messed up with taxes because they don't understand taxes. A lot of people don't, they're, they're so used to paying business personal tax or personal taxes, they don't understand business taxes. They don't see that side of the equation. Because when you do personal taxes, your employer automatically pulls money out of your check to help with the liability that you may not be able to save for once you hit certain thresholds and certain tax amounts based on standard deductions and itemized deductions. So the government says what we're going to do is allow your employer to take money out of your check and send to us on your behalf. And if you've overpaid, we'll give you a refund of the money you've overpaid. You don't get interest on that money. Even though they're keeping your fucking money, you don't get interest on it. And the employer, a lot of them, dead serious, may not send your tax money in. Because there's pensions that haven't been paid before. There's premiums on insurances that haven't been. When you are paying shit out of your paycheck, you're giving your employer the, oper- the, uh, the authority to pull that shit out of your check. They still have to send it. Just because they pull it out of your check, they still have to send that money somewhere. They have to send it to the government. They have to send it to fucking AFLAC. They have to send that money. If they never send the money on your behalf, the premiums aren't paid. Your taxes aren't paid. Your pension's not paid. Your retirement plan's not paid. Your 401k's not paid. They still have to send that shit. So you could be sitting there going, well, how did I retire and only got 10 Gs? I put in like $80,000. Oh, well, the company that you were at that went under, they weren't paying under their employee 401k's. They weren't. They were keeping that fucking money. So that's real corporate America for you. That's real fucking corporate America. It's like, Jeff, you should do a video on ride share taxes. I would do a video on ride share taxes. I really would because me coming from an accounting standpoint, how I understand corporate tax and everything like that. But there's an amount of liability you have to assume. And anything I say on these videos could be screenshot, taken to a court or anything else. And then somebody try to sue me for frauds and I'm giving professional advice on the internet when I don't have certification to even give professional financial advice but I'm doing it because of shit that I know in my own personal life. And then people say, oh, well, Jeff told me, and I got this off this video. And next thing you know, you're sitting in court for defraud. Like how many people do you know sit in court for defrauding people and people wanting their money back and people wanting to sue somebody, professional liability and shit like it happens all the time. And we live it like I was just talking about the Uber driver that wants to sue that couple down in Chandler. People are sue happy nowadays. Nobody wants accountability for themselves. They want everybody else to pay for their fuck ups. So if somebody fucks something up, the first thing they doing is looking for somebody else to blame. I spilled hot coffee on my lap, leaving the McDonald's drive through. McDonald owes me 14 million. Motherfucker, you spilled the coffee. Well, it was hot. They didn't tell me it was hot. Motherfucker, it's coffee. I mean, common sense will tell you, you ordered a fucking coffee and you felt the cup. It was hot, but I spilled it in my lap. The fuck now McDonald's got to get you a bib, a motherfucking bimbo seat and shit. You got to sit on a bobo seat, driving a fucking working a big ass kid with a motherfucking trail around your lap just in case. Oh, I don't want to spill this cup. People don't know how to fucking take responsibility for their own shit. They just don't. They just don't. It's at least it. have any questions, just email Jeff. He responds. Hey, I get back within a couple of days. I always do. I try to get back within a couple of days. And I tell, yeah, and at the time I hear people say they forgot to track their mileage. And that's the one good thing about most cars. Most cars, especially if you, let's say in January, take a picture of your mileage. Or even today, go out and just take a picture of your fucking mileage. Nobody's going to ask you, dead serious, nobody's going to ask you, did you do a thousand miles last week? Was it all ride share? Did you go to the fucking gas station? Did you go to Walmart? Did you go to Bolsa Donuts? We need to know everywhere. Nobody's itemizing mileage to that degree. What they're going to do is they're going to see your car being inspected because when you get a car inspection, the first thing they do is log your miles and it goes into the state computer, whatever computer's there. So you can't roll your odometer back. It can only go forward. Now, as it's going forward, whether or not those are personal miles or business miles is based on you. You could lie and get caught in your lie. 
Or you can lie and not get caught in your lie. Or you just tell the truth and be straight up. Say, hey, I track all my miles every day. And I tell motherfuckers, it's like, your personal taxes are how you want to deal with. A lot of people go through life, their entire life, being amazing with taxes. Some of the most professional motherfuckers you've ever met won't do well with taxes. So, I mean, you got people like fucking Wesley Snipes, don't do well with taxes. You got people like Beyonce, don't do well with taxes. But they got a lot of tax people around them, but they don't do well with taxes. So you could be the most, you know, mundane person, normal life, everything else, and do amazing with taxes. You could be super wealthy, super rich, and do horrible with them. So it's all in based in how you fucking handle that shit. No, uh, Carlos Rivera says, Jeff is exaggerating that coffee story, by the way. At one point, someone did sue McDonald's for burning themselves with the coffee. Hence, why they have caution hot on the lids now. Yeah, real shit. Because everybody wants to sue somebody for their fuck up. Nobody's accountable for their own fuck up. Now, if you tell me today, Jeff, jumping off your house and landing on your fucking car in the front yard is a great way to stay in shape. The first thing I do is have like common sense. Is jumping off my house and landing on my motherfucking car really a great way to stay in shape? Or will it fuck up me? Will it fuck up my car? I got to have some level of common sense. Now, if I don't have common sense and I'll say, well, Carlos Rivera told me yesterday jumping off my house and onto my car is a great way to stay in shape. And I'm really trying to get in shape. Jeff, you went through the roof of your fucking car and busted your leg and everything else. Why would you do that? Well, I'm going to sue Carlos for telling me that. It ain't on Carlos. Carlos could have been fucking with you. He could just be telling you shit to tell you shit. You got to have enough common sense and be accountable for your own action and taking somebody's advice. You got to do your own research. How many people have you seen jumping off their houses onto their cars, getting in shape? None. I thought I was going to be the first. Yeah, which is why you're in a predicament you're in right now. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, am I having difficulty choosing quests on Uber? No, nah, I don't really have a lot of quests. I choose like the probably the 30 or the 40 rides because I really don't do a lot of rides. So I'll choose 30 or 40 because they only give you a few days to do the quest. And usually I don't do it. I don't do it. It was like the coffee lady got burned because McDonald's had the temp at 180 degrees instead of 120 degrees. which caused a third degree burns on an 80 year old lady. How did they know that? Like, how did they know the day that lady got burned? Did they come into the fucking restaurant with a goddamn thermometer and say, hey, hold up for a second. Don't put that coffee out. Let me see how hot that coffee is. I mean, it just, they estimate it. It's a bunch of estimates. Well, the only way that this could have happened is from something that's more than 120 degrees. They don't fucking know. Nobody runs around with a motherfucking thermometer. It's like, I mean, if, if I'm going to do, even like when my customers, when I used to work on cars, they would bring, hey, Jeff, I need new brakes. Bring it over, drop it off, because when you drive it, the rotors are going to heat up. The brakes in the rotors are going to heat up because you just drove it to me. What up, Rob Flo? I was just talking about you earlier. <laughs> so my brakes and my rotors are going to be kind of heated up. So when they pull into the place, either I can just cool them off with a water hose or I can just let the car sit for a while. But I know the shit's hot. I mean, I'm not going to go grab the motherfucking rotor and be like, oh, shit, the rotor's hot as a motherfucker. Because common sense is going to tell me they just dropped the car off. So if the car is dropped off and the rotors are hot, I can't fucking go after the customer because, hey, you dropped the car with hot rotors and you asked me to do your brakes. Well, common sense will tell you, wait a while. The brakes are probably hot. I don't know, man. I'm just one of those people. I've went through life 50 years on this motherfucking planet. I ain't never sued nobody for shit. And shit always happens to me. Always. But I always say, my stupid ass, why did I do that? Because <laughs> it's on me. It's on me. Because that's where my life is on me. My decisions are on me. The manual said that heated up to 180 to 190 and still does to this day. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing, man. It's like if if it had if I want coffee, I'm gonna assume it's hot. I'm just gonna assume it's fucking hot because unless I order a fucking caramel frappuccino, if I get a frappuccino, the motherfucker better be cold. If they give me a frappuccino when it's hot, now we got a problem because I ordered a frappuccino. But if I order a coffee and I know it's a hot coffee, I'm gonna give it a minute. I'm not going to spill it on myself because I'm not clumsy for one thing. And even if I do spill it on myself, I can't blame no fucking body. I spilled it on myself. I'm the blame. It's like if I go right now, if I go around the corner and I wreck into somebody in my car, I hit the motherfucking car and I got to sue, almost sue BMW. Why? Because you didn't make my brakes like tight enough to where I wouldn't wreck my car. Because if I, no, Jeff, you was going too fast. You was going like 30 miles an hour. The car was like 10 feet from you. You can't stop that fast on any fucking brakes, period. 
Well, you could have put bigger brakes on my car. No, you could have probably not tailgated that motherfucker is what you could have did, Jeff. You was tailgating. Stop tailgating. Well, if I had bigger brakes, I would have been able to tailgate and stop in time. How about you just stop fucking tailgating? Fix your own problem. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I'm just like that, man. I guess that's why I never wanted to sue nobody, which is why I don't fuck with a lot of people. Because a lot of people like to find technicalities, so they got a reason to blame their fuck up on somebody else and make somebody else pay for their mistake. So I don't fuck with a lot of people. I just don't because I know how people are. Oh, hey, Raymond, man, my weekend was booming, man. I'm, I'm going to drop a video tomorrow with this motherfucker. It was, it was pretty easy. It was an easy weekend, crazy weekend, but it was nice. It wasn't no $1,000 weekend, but I did all right. I did all right for the hours I got out there, man. This is no name. Hey, he said, hey, actually, now think about it. I haven't had questions in two weeks either. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, messages, I'm out here in East Mesa. Hey, I was out that way last night, man. I almost ended up in Apache Junction. Shit, usually I'm out there by Denim and Diamonds picking people up, and they tip very well at Denim and Diamonds. Man, I love that little spot. That's my little spot. Whenever I'm down there, shit, Denim and Diamonds, pick somebody up, go drop them off a trailer, go back, Denim and Diamonds, pick somebody up, drop them off at like a hotel, back to Denim and Diamonds, just all night, just going to Denim and Diamonds, man. So, yeah. What is they? Metro said, I haven't been able to choose questions in three weeks. Uber app just says something went wrong. 15 conversations with Uber still isn't fixed. They did add $25 to my account, but it's robbery. Yeah, that's what it is, man. It's like if they're not adding quests to you, that's money that you're losing every week. That's money you're losing. The Cardinals might win today. If the Cardinals win, we get free chicken wings. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Motherfuckers, I heard that on the internet. If the Cardinals win, we get free chicken wings. Motherfuckers be standing in front of Popeyes. They be like, who told you that shit? I saw it on the internet. <laughs> mm-mm. Raymond said, on Saturday, we had cruise ships and we didn't get calls. The customer said the app was saying no cars available. Damn, that's crazy. The Bears are losing badly. Yeah, what's new, Lisa? What's new? The Bears is my squad, but man, they're trash. They're trash. I, I have a Bears jacket. I think I have a Bears hat. I just never wear it. That's all. It's, it's bad luck. I don't wear that shit. It's bad luck. <laughs> but yeah, but like I said, on this channel, man, a lot of people don't watch because they realize what we're talking about over here. We're talking about a level of intelligence that many don't want to reach for. They don't want to reach for that level of intelligence. They're happy with just, you know, letting the app do all the work. Oh, I just put it on auto accept and whatever pops in my queue is what I take. And I remember when I used to have that shit. I used to have auto accept where on Lyft rides, you just appear in my queue. And even with Uber, it used to be auto accept sometimes. I'm like, why the fuck is it auto accepted? So I was like, nope, I turn that shit off. Turn that shit off. No. Uh, is there are no tips in the app on Apache Junction? Not for me. Man, I don't know. I don't know. If there's no tips out there, shit. Yeah, you better start dipping low a little bit. Go down to Gilbert some. This is enough, bro. My wife just heard that chicken wings comment. <laughs> she was like, chicken wings? Back in the game, baby. <laughs> Your wife jumped up like a motherfucker. Back in the game, baby. <laughs> Till I was lying, it wasn't real. It wasn't real. <laughs> mm. Oh, Thomas is out there, out there pushing pieces, baby. Pushing them pieces, not them mashed potatoes. See, we getting mashed potatoes and y'all out there pushing pieces. See what I'm saying? Shit's different. Shit's different. We are getting these old shitty ass ride offers, these mashed potato ass ride offers. You out there pushing that money. Thomas Cow getting it in, getting it in. Thomas, like, man, I'm trying to push pieces, dunk some donuts, whatever, man. I'm doing, I'm getting this fucking money. Cruise with some cokes, dunk some donuts, push the pieces, slide some sausages, McMuffins. <laughs> oh yeah, it's still hot out. It's ninety seven right now. Shit, shit, man. But yeah, a lot of people, man. Like I said, we we try to provide enough thought on this channel to get people to help build these apps to be better for drivers. These apps are never going to be better for drivers as long as we got people taking shitty offers. They really think they're doing something major. Oh, my AR, my AR is high. I'm out here getting it, man. I'm doing good. No, you're you're really fucking up what we're going for. We're going for higher driver percentages. We're going for higher ride fares. We're going for maintaining surges, keeping our cars on certain tiers. That's what we're going for, the betterment of the drivers. But then you got drivers who act like they got damn industry plants. They're going for the betterment of the apps. Oh, I always want the app to do good. I want the app to do good. I'm like, if the apps do good and we do good, it's a win-win. But if the apps do good and we're doing horrible, it's not a win. No, the apps can't do good and we're doing bad. We're the ones doing the service. So service fees are already higher than what we get any fucking way. So that's a problem for me. That's a big problem for me. 
So what we got to do is get these drivers out here to start thinking differently. So I said, listen, you have a family to take care of. You need to get on your shit. Excuse me, because going around complaining that all these dollar a mile rides you fucking taking aren't paying the bills. You're in control of that. You got to take accountability for taking these fucked up rides. You got to take accountability for that. And a lot of them don't want to, oh, is the app doing this to me? The app's doing this to me. Or oh, the app will send you some bullshit. It will. I mean, I'm proof of that. The app will send you bullshit all day. But it's you that takes it. The moment you stop taking the bullshit is the moment. No, they're going to eventually send me something good. They're going to send you one good ride and 12 shit rides. I'm trying to just have like five good rides. I don't want no shit rides. If they only send me five good rides, like last night, I did those five rides in an hour. Those five rides put me at over a, like $117 in like an hour. Five rides. I don't need 10 fucking rides at $10 a piece. No. Give me five rides at about $20, $25 a piece. That's all you got to give me. Because once you see people going, well, I want to do $10 a ride. That's not good because that $10 could be fucking 15 miles. It could be 20 miles. Don't I don't put a dollar on a ride. I do not put a dollar on an hour. I, and people, well, how much you want to make an hour? I would love to make 40 to 50 an hour, but I don't think like that, which is why I make $100 an hour. I would love to make 40 an hour. I look at every ride as an independent transaction. I look at oh, my app. I turn that motherfucker off. I look at where is it surging at? Because once it starts surging, my whole $40 an hour desire is out the fucking window because now I can make $40 on one trip. A $20 surge with a $20 trip, I can make $40 in like 20 minutes. So all that shit has to go out of the window. All your minimums and maximums. No, you need to analyze in real fucking time. Open that app up. Start looking around, seeing shit. Yeah. See, right here in Arizona, Lyft surging crazy where Uber just stay. Yeah, it's just great crowds. On Uber. And on Uber, Uber is, is sometimes the truer of the surge. Lyft, they'll send you surge. But because we drive Lux wine, they won't send us a ride for a while. We'll have to drop down. Like when I got a really big surge I'm sitting on. I'll drop down a luck or lift real quick and use that shit on a student going from like point A to point B. Like three miles, I get like $19. <laughs> and it's like, fuck it. I had to use that shit real quick. I had to use it because I know on lift, they're going to just have me sit there for a while. So I'm like, man, this is crazy. You get a $15 surge on lift, on Lux, drop down a lift real quick. Just drop down, use it on a real short ride, and go right back over to Lux. Like, fuck it. Now I'm back on because I don't have a surge. I'm back on Lux again. Oh, yeah, just trying to stay away from the stadium. Yeah, don't. Hey, at all costs, you'll never see me at the stadium ever. Because once you get over there, the traffic is going to trap you. Even ASU Stadium, I don't go over there because it'll trap you. And once you get trapped in, you can't move. You're stuck on University or you're stuck on like Mill Avenue. You're stuck on Forest Avenue. When you're way out west, you're stuck on fucking Camelback. You can't get nowhere. I'd rather be in the free, open, driving, picking up somebody from damn Starbucks, dropping them off at home. You got to be an open traffic to make money. When we used to get paid by time, it was okay. When we got paid by time, we could sit in traffic because the time would keep building. We don't get paid by time like that now, so shit. What up, Ryan? Ryan's in the house, man. William said, got to stop and get something to eat. I'm still pissed. I miss O Hill. <laughs> yeah, you got to do it, man. You got to stop and grab something to eat. That's why I be taking my little peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and shit with me, man. I'm like, fuck that shit. I'm going to take me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Because I'll pull over in the motherfucking parking lot, eat that shit real quick, try to wipe the car down, get right back on the road again. But you need to take those breaks. And I tell people, we're not employees. We don't have to ask Lyft and Uber for a fucking break. Take a break when you're ready. If you've been driving for 20, 30 minutes and you want to take a break, take a break. Who can tell you no? You ain't got no ball. And so many people are employee-minded. Well, Uber keeps sending me rides. I can't take a break. Lyft keeps sending me rides. I can't take a break. Motherfucker, this ain't no assembly line. You won't work at Chrysler. Motherfucker's like, take, just turn your fucking app off. Cancel the ride, decline the ride. And like last night, I was coming home. I was coming on middle of the night. There was a ride. It was four miles to get to the person way down on like 40th Street, 40, 42nd Street. And then I had to take them all the way back to like Mill. In the process, I'm passing my house twice and I'm done for the night. But I accepted this ride because I'm like, OK, it's 10 bucks. It's like, you know, six miles, 10 bucks, almost two dollars a mile. Let me do it. Man, I canceled that motherfucker so quick and came home because I'm like, I'm not passing my house twice. I'm done already. But I accepted this ride thinking it was going to be something short. And when I'm looking at the map, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm passing my house twice, man. Now, nah, 
cancel. I just pulled my shit in the driveway, call that shit good. And I don't want to do that, man. It's like sometimes if you don't want to do that shit, cancel it, decline it, whatever. You take your time. You take your break. The rides are going to be there. The money's going to be there. And a lot of people are scared. Oh, man, I don't believe I just let a $15 ride go. Man, I've lost $15 rides, $30 rides. I've lost all that shit, and I'm still doing okay. But people get so bent out of shape. Oh, man, I don't believe I gave away a $10 ride. It was $10 for 10 miles. I'll never get that money back. No, that was an opportunity you just fucking avoided because that's a bullshit fucking ride if you ask me. Your next ride might be $20 for like eight miles. You'll be doing much better doing the eight for 20. <laughs> it's like, and a lot of people like to play that bullshit. Well, you might get a tip. Yeah, you might not. Motherfucker, that's the other side of the equation. You might not. So always think of the might not. Don't think of the mites. Think of the might nots. So if you think of the might nots, it's going to help you make a better choice in choosing what trips to fucking take. Because I don't go, oh, man, a dollar a mile? Shit, $10 for 10 miles, and I might get a $10 tip. Hey, let's do it. No. I go, $10 for 10 miles? This motherfucker ain't tipped me. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> and I cancel that shit. That's right. Doubt it. Fuck that shit. Doubt it. And you got to turn around, man, and be like, hey, if somebody don't tip me, I'm okay with taking this trip. This trip is $3 a mile. This trip is $4 a mile. If they don't tip me, I'm okay with it. But if you banking on a tip and you taking shitty ass trips all day saying, I might get tipped. I might get tipped. Yeah, you might not. You might fuck around, do 13 goddamn trips and be tipped on three of them and be sitting there like, man, all I needed was like tips on at least 10 of them and I'd be good right now. Well, you seven in a hole. You $70 in a hole at $10 a tip. You 70 bucks in a hole right now. Because you took some bullshit trips. Sometimes you got to just not do that. Just don't take no bullshit trips. Was hey, I'm chilling at uh, Lift Lux Lounge right now while listening to Jeff. <laughs> That's what's up. Chilling in the Lift Lux Lounge. Hell yeah, baby. That's what I got to call it. L3. Where you at, L3? The Lift Lux Lounge, baby. I'm kicking back. L3. You need a big ass shirt that's got just L with a three on it. What's L3? Lift Lux Lounge, motherfucker. I'm chilling. <laughs> Shit. I ain't taking no bullshit rides. I'm kicking back. Waiting on that goddamn $10 a mile banger is going to happen. <laughs> Man, he's just saving them crusty dusty shit. Surge in downtown D.C. every day except weekends. The key is don't take trips outside of the surge area. Yeah, and when they take you outside of the surge area, just like you said, you've got to turn your app off. Put it on last ride. Because what they'll do, and I noticed that shit, and I even said it in some of my videos, I noticed when you're outside of a surge, and their surge close by you, or oh, they going to inundate you with fucking trips. They, I mean, you ain't even dropping the person off yet. You still turning corners and you trying to find out where they're going. And it's like ride after ride after ride. They just keep sending you shit. You're like, nope, decline. Right after you hit decline, another one pops up right behind. Blah, 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 blah. Nope, decline. Damn, right behind. Blah, blah, blah. Nope. I'm like, okay, there's a surge somewhere by me and I'm not in the surge right now. That's why they keep sending me fucking rides. As soon as you put that shit on, stop new request, drop the person off, open it up. You sitting right next to a $15 surge. You'd be like, no wonder they was trying to get me to take all these shitty rides. So you just drive around a corner, pick up that $15 surge, app back on, next ride is money. And that's my indication right there. I know that they got, they got a surge somewhere around me. Otherwise, they would not be sending me this many trip requests back to back to back. Stop the requests. And once you do that, they'd be like, fuck, he figured it out. <laughs> It's like, because I didn't take none of that shit Because I'm knowing these are bullshit trips These trips are 80 cents a mile, a dollar a mile These are bullshit trips Nope, turn that shit off As soon as you drop the passenger off The you the map closes, red, right around the corner $15, right You'd be like, oh, these motherfuckers tried to get me And on my, on my videos, y'all see They always drop me off They have surges around me, but I'm right in the middle Or I'm right on the edge I'm never in the surge when I drop somebody off They don't give me that they keep sending me rides to make sure I take a ride to stay away from that surge. They don't want to give away free money. That's money off their bottom line. The surge is, the, is the, the bait to get other drivers to the area. They don't really want to pay it to nobody because once you get there, they're taking that shit. Vartan, what's good, brother? I just saw you yesterday on the live. What's good? What's good? Yeah, and King James said that shit. BS trips and bad ratings. I know I can't fuck with those because there's no way I'm getting a tip. Yep. Man, I've been seeing some, and I know I can adjust my rating. I could adjust my rating on my phone, but I leave it alone. I think I got it at like 4.0 probably, because I'd be seeing some 4.1s, 4.2s. I think my shit's at 4.0. So 
So I'll sit there and I'm looking at like the dollar per mile and I'm not worried about the rating. But when I cancel something, I'll look at the rating sometime. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. No, this person done did some dumb shit. <laughs> it's like, if you're a 4.2 driver, I mean, rider, yeah, you did some dumb shit. You don't just turn 4.2 overnight, motherfucker. You've been fucking with people. Nope. Cancel that shit quick as a motherfucker. Yeah, that's right, Hassan, man. It takes patience. And a lot of a lot of drivers out there that don't understand how ride share work, the, the gotta be busy ones. What up, E Love? The gotta be busy ones, they think that the key to making money is to keep taking rides over and over and over and over and just not letting your car go without the wheels fucking spinning. But they wheels are spinning at a 50 cent a mile rate, a dollar a mile rate, dollar ten a mile rate. Our wheels spin five dollars a mile, eight dollars a mile. $3 a mile, $6 a mile. So at a 50 cent a mile rate, and if we're getting $4 a mile and they're getting 50 cent a mile, they've got to drive eight times the distance we drive to get the same amount of money. So at 50 cent a mile, if they drive, let's say 16 miles, they're going to get $8. They went 16 miles. They got $8. If we're getting $4 a mile, we go two miles and we get $8. So they went 16 miles. We went two. That's a 14 mile variance. You do that shit 10 times. We've went 20 miles and we've made $80 and they've went what? 160. Yeah. 160 miles to make the same amount. So they're at $80, but it took them 160 miles of driving to make a, make that 80. It only took us 20 miles to make that 80. So 160 and that that's 140 mile variance right there. So they had to drive 140 miles more than us. That's brakes, that's tires, that's fuel, that's your door slamming and all kind of crazy, your engine. I mean, that's a lot of fucking miles at that much of a variance to get the same amount of money we getting, the same amount of money. So that means the profit margins are off. Because if I'm only driving 20 miles and I'm getting 25 to 30 miles a gallon and it costs me $5, it costs me $5, $5 to get that $80. It cost me $5 to get that 80 bucks. That's it. Five bucks for 80. I could do that. But if they're going 160 at, and they're getting, let's say 30 miles. So they had to go five gallons. They got five gallons of gas. They had to use. And at $5 a gallon, that's $25. They spent, they spent 25 to make that $80. They spent 25 to make that 80. So they're sitting on a $45 profit. We spent $5 to get that 80. We're sitting on a $75 profit. So we got $75 in our pocket, less driving, less time, less everything, less investment. We've got $75. And we already gave the gas station to five. They're sitting there with $45. That's all they got after all the shit they did. All they got is $45 and we got 75. But they're like, we grossed the same. Yeah, we both grossed the same. We both grossed $80. But out of that 80, I got 75 of mine left. And you only have 45 of your less because you did a whole lot more miles, a whole lot more driving. I tell people, it's not what you make, is what you take. So you can make whatever you want to make. We can both make the same amount of money. But what are you taking home at the end of the day? If you're putting too much money out there just to make that money, a lot of people say that shit. It's a bad investment. Every investment is not going to flip the money the right way. You might make money in real estate. You might lose money in real estate. You might make money in stocks. You might lose money in stocks. You might make money in ride share, but you might lose money in ride share. It's the same across the boards. It's all about how are you doing this shit? Are you doing it the smart way or are you just doing it like I'm just throwing money at the shit to hope it works? I'm just throwing money at it and seeing what sticks. Can't do that. Yeah. The high acceptance rates, there are less lowball orders, at least on DoorDash. Yeah. And, and like I said, you get those those less lowball orders at DoorDash. And the one thing about DoorDash that I don't like is you can't drive whenever you want to. Like me, I have no use for an app that controls the time that I can work. That's more like employment. If you're controlling the time that I'm allowed to work, I'm your employee. Because if I feel like going, like right, it's 401. I could turn on Uber and Lyft right now and just start driving. No bullshit. I could just go out there and just start driving. But it, I, if I turn on the app and it says, you can't drive right now because it's not your drive time yet. That's an employee based app because you're telling me what time that I can. It's like a contractor. You can't tell me what time I can go and build this swimming pool. If I'm a contractor and I build swimming pools at my warehouse, I'm going to go build swimming pools when I feel like building swimming pools. And then I'm going to sell those swimming pools when it's time to. But you can't say, well, you can't come to the warehouse and build pools. 
If you're the owner, you can because it's your business. You can do it when you want to. If you're an employee, then you have to listen to somebody. That's when shit's different. So, you know, that's my only my only gripe with DoorDash. The money is probably not my gripe. If I want to be back on somebody else's schedule, then I would do DoorDash because I would allow myself to be on their schedule. When they told me I can and can't work. But with the lifestyle I live, I I work when I want to. I kind of have that freedom to say, okay, I feel like going out at midnight. I'm going to go work at midnight to like five in the morning. Or it's seven o'clock p.m. I'm going to go work at 7 p.m. I work whenever I feel like it. And that's the best feeling ever. A W-2 don't even give you that much freedom. A W-2 tells you, you got to be here at 8. If you're here at 8.03, we're going to write you the fuck up because you've been three minutes late every day. And that's stealing from the company. When you're three minutes late, you're stealing from the company. You're stealing three minutes at a time, Jeff. You do that shit 10 times, you've stolen 30 minutes from us. And we're paying you $50 an hour. You just stole $25 an hour from us, Jeff. And I'm like, it's three fucking minutes, though. I'll stay three minutes later. It's not the point. The point is... You're stealing from us. If you do that 10 times, that's 30 minutes. That's half an hour you're stealing from us every day. But if I stay a half an hour later, then I should make up for that. This is not the point, Jeff. That's what you get when you deal with W-2 motherfuckers. You get weird shit like that. Like I said, if I'm if I'm late 10 minutes on the front end, I'll stay 10 minutes later on the back end. Nope, you can't do that. That's not the point. We have to have you clock out at 5. Well, I didn't clock in at 8. I clocked in at 8.10. So let me stay till 5.10. And no, you can't. They love to micromanage and fuck with you at W-2s. I'm too old for that shit. At 52 years old, I'm not letting the motherfucker tell me I can't go take a piss. I'm just not at that point in my life. I was like, hey, man, I'm going to be back. I got to use the bathroom real quick. Well, you can't leave. Um, You got to talk to Stacy to make sure that we can have you covered for the time you go take a piss, Jeff. Let me call Stacy. Hey, Stacy, Jeff's got to take a piss. Can we cover him for the next five minutes? Motherfucker, I'm already in the bathroom at that point. You look over at my desk. Where the fuck is Jeff at? He said he had to take a piss. Oh, no, you're going to get rolled up. You left and Stacy didn't know if you, motherfucker, I had to piss. I got to go. I'm not waiting on Stacy. When I got to get up and use the bathroom, I'll go use the bathroom. Well, you know, you're going to get rolled up for that. You got to wait till we have you covered. Fuck that. Life is not going to end because my phone at my desk just rings and nobody's answering it. Shit will just roll over to somebody else. What the fuck am I worried about? I got to go take a piss. I'll be back. And that's just how I am. And I don't work, that won't work in corporate America because they want motherfuckers who piss when you say it's okay to piss. That's who they want in corporate. They don't want me. They want somebody they can control. They want somebody to say, hey, Jeff, you've been a stellar employee. You've not pissed off break one time this month. Oh my God, you're going to get a gold star. <laughs> it's like shit. They'd be like, Jeff's got black stars on it. Why? Because this motherfucker piss whenever he wants to. He got black stars all next to his name. He's a pisser. Like, motherfucker, I be drinking my juice, dog. I'm cool. Yeah, and that's what it is, Greasy. Hey, it's total freedom, man. It's total freedom. And I'm one of those people that enjoy, you know, just doing what I want to do. I mean, I sleep. I wake up with no fucking alarm clock. Unless somebody's got to do something, cool, I'll do it. But if I got, you know, if I want to wake up at 5, I just wake up at 5. I want to wake up at 6. I just wake up at 6. It's no big deal. But when you've got to, you know, be told, you know, especially with an app, and I'm not talking about with a W-2, a W-2 is what it is. That's cool with that shit. But when you have an app that tells you, you have to start at 11 and you're done at 2 p.m. To me, that's employment. That's employment. That's not true independent contracting. That's you giving me a time slot. And it's almost like how they do it on Amazon. You giving me a time slot. You're giving me this. You're not allowing me to choose what I want to do. You're telling me what to do within the confines of you not paying for my medical insurance. You're not paying for my pension. You ain't paying for shit I do. But I'm doing things to benefit your company and your business. And for that benefit, I should at least have my freedom. But if I'm giving you all of that, I'm helping your company, your corporation. I'm doing all this shit for you. And you tell me we're going to run you like an employee. But you ain't going to get the same benefits as our employees got. Our employees get health. They get medical, they get vision, they get motherfucking, you know, stipends, they get this. What do you get? You just get to work for us. You get to use your car to work for us. That's what we allow you to have. See, that shit's not cool. I can't do that. That shit's not cool. So I don't know. Like I said, ride share is a, is a different animal. Even Uber Eats is a different animal. DoorDash is a totally different animal. And a lot of people that use DoorDash, like I said, there a lot of people who use DoorDash are coming from the employee background. So it's really easy for them to fit into it because to take an employee to send them to another job 
is like, oh, I got a second job. They treat me just like at the first job. Oh, I got a third job. Hey, I'm going to quit my job and go get another job. It's just job after job after job after job. You're in the same institution of employment. You're in that same mindset of employment, not of freedom. So it's easy to take an employee to make them an employee of another company. It's easy to take an employee of this company to make an employee of two companies at different times of the day. It's very easy to do that because you're in that institution of thought. It's hard to take somebody who's not an employee, who's been their own boss, doing their own fucking thing, making their own money, creating their own spreadsheets, doing their own you know, budgets and forecasts. It's hard to take that person and to put them into this box called an employee. You're going to have a whole bunch of friction and frustration with that person because that person has been a bird. He's been flying. He's been free. He's been all over the place. And now you're going to put that motherfucker in a cage? Say, we're going to put you in a cage from noon to 3 p.m. When that person's never had it. It's kind of like my dogs. All my dogs don't do kennels. They got a doggy door. They got free roam of the whole fucking house whenever I don't have doors and shit closed. Free roam. The moment I put one of these dogs in a cage, they're going to freak the fuck out. They won't know what to do. Now, if I raised them in a cage and I had them kennel trained and that's all they did was be in a kennel, it would be easier to take them from one kennel and say, go to that kennel. And they start going to that kennel and I buy a bigger kennel. So they go to the bigger kennel and I say, hey, I'm going to get you an even bigger kennel. They're kennel dogs. That's employees. They think like they're in a kennel. You're just taking them from one kennel to another kennel. You can't take a free dog and make that free roaming dog a kennel dog. It's hard to do. But you can take a kennel dog, give them freedom, and a kennel dog's going to be like, this is crazy. I'm all over the fucking place. I'm going to eat the toilet paper roll. I'm going to drag your motherfucking shoes out the doggy door. I'm having a fucking blast. That's what the kennel dog's going to do because he's never had freedom. And that's what a lot of motherfuckers that do ride share and gig work do. They have never had the freedom. So they take every fucking ride. I can't believe I can just take all. Of, this is a lot of money. Oh, my God. Seven dollars, eight dollars, nine dollars. They're not analyzing anything. They're kennel dogs. Kennel dogs who have never had the freedom to go out there and make their own profits, have to do their own financial statements, do their own books, do their own forecasts, do their own budgeting. They've never had that. So to give them that, they're going to tank into the hole first. And I was that when I first started doing ride share, I was wild. I was taking bullshit orders. I didn't know because there were no channels out there showing us how to really do this shit. There were no profitability channels out there. There were no channels saying, be smarter with what you do. Every channel we were on, keep your IAR high, and you can get free fucking hot dogs at any 7-Eleven serving hot dogs in the Eastern Continental United States. Man, fuck them hot dogs. I'm looking for the money. That's what I'm here for. And now we finally got a channel saying, fuck them hot dogs. Every other channel wanted to give the hot dogs. This channel says, fuck the hot dogs. Let's go get the money. Fuck the hot dogs. Let's do this. We're going to give you a free Coke and a free Subway sandwich and a free cookie. Man, fuck that. Where's the money at? All for kicks. That's what I'm talking about. I, I tried. I tried. I really do try to speak the truth because it's, it's what we do. Yeah, I heard he's, he's not pulling the surge now because he knows a lot of drivers are going to be like, well, if you pull the surge, we ain't fucking with you. We're going to go drive Uber. We're going to do food delivery. We're doing something different, but we ain't driving for free. No, we're not doing that. And we don't want no crusty ass motherfucker donuts, Lisa. <laughs> we could buy some motherfucking crusty ass donuts if we want some. Lisa fucking crazy. But that's what it is, like I said. So now that we have the, the freedom to see how profitability really matters, and a lot of us have who have been driving different this year, last year, we now see the difference in profitability and how money really stretches. When you're making $3 a mile, $4 a mile, that money fucking stretches. Imagine the people that make a dollar a mile driving a 1,000 miles a week to make $1,000. They're driving a thousand miles a week every five days. They're driving 200 miles a day for five days, 200, 200, 200, 200. They driving a thousand miles a week. End of the week, I made $1,100. But they done gassed up every fucking day. They done blew all their profits out. We drive three, four, five hours a day. Might make 300. We do that. We, like I said, I show my gas shit all the time because I think showing my gas shit is very important because it helps people kind of analyze how much gas to use, how much gas to save. One tank can last me two or three days. Depends on how much I drive. A tank of gas will last me two or three nights. Usually I'll wait till we get all the way down to a quarter and I'll hurry up and fill it back up again because I don't like running on fucking fumes when I got a big surge or something going. So I don't let it get too fucking low so I can capitalize on opportunity. But it'll go two or three nights and I'll fill that shit back up again. And so we're not filling up every single day. We're not driving all those fucking hours. And we all sitting on the same amount of fucking money down there. We're all taking home 1500 1600 1700 And I'm like, 
It's a profitability game. This is what this is about. And we all noticed that shit over the past year and a half, two years. This is a profitability game. We don't have to drive a ton of fucking miles to make a ton of money. We don't have to do that. Not everybody has figured that out yet. And you see that on different channels. And you say that on people that come on this channel and they get upset because they haven't woke up yet to realize, man, you telling me that I can't drive, you know, 300 miles a day to make $300. You're stupid. I'm driving my 300 miles. Meanwhile, we got people driving 95 miles, 100 miles making $300. 95 miles they're driving to make 300. They're not driving 300 miles to make 95 miles, 120 miles. They make $300. because. Some people have said, I have been doing this wrong. Some people preach the whole time. Like William said, preach up. Some people preach the whole time. Drive, 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 drive. Don't stop. Don't turn your car off. Keep going. Let everybody the fuck in. Four motherfuckers for $3. Let them in because it's $3 you didn't have. Five motherfuckers for $6. Let them in. It's $6 you didn't have. Fuck that. Slow that shit down. Be like, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to break this shit down from a profitability standpoint. We're going to kick everything out. We're not going to deal with none of that shit. We're going to only let this amount of money in our car if it's X amount per mile. Because I don't give a fuck if you say, hey, man, this is a $20 ride, Jeff. This is a $20 ride. That don't mean shit to me. You only telling me part of the equation. A $20 ride is only part of the equation. Am I going 40 miles? Am I going 20 miles? Am I going five miles? High AR people don't look at it like that. They say $20 ride. I take a lot of $20 rides. Oh, yeah, it has a lot to do with the driver's market. But also, I'm going to tell you like this. Also, it has a lot to do with the market. And I'll say in a lot of my videos, if you haven't watched any of my videos, you hear a lot of my videos, even with my comments that I make on my channel. If your market is not conducive for ride share, then you don't have a ride share market. You probably need a W-2 and ride share needs to not be your main source of income. I've said that on a lot of videos. I've said it in a lot of chat comments. Because it's real. I keep it 100. I don't bullshit people to help people. You know, ride share is the key to the fucking future. I don't say that shit. I tell people right off the bat. If your market sucks and you got a shitty market, then ride share may not be suitable for your market. It may mean you need to stick with a W-2 until your market builds up to the point where ride share becomes stable enough for you to make money with ride share. Some of us live in really good markets. Some of us live in fucking stellar markets, amazing markets. Some of us live in markets so good that we don't even realize how good we got it. And we sit up there and we go, man, you know, why? I'm, and I tell people in Phoenix, why are you taking dollar a mile rides in this market? We have a good market. Why are you taking 50 cent a mile rides in this market? We have a good market. You can't look at a high AR driver and let that driver determine our market. A high AR driver that doesn't make money. He's not using his market to the point he could be using it. You need to look for all the low AR drivers. Low AR, how much money are you making if you're a low AR driver? That's how you determine whether or not you're in a good market or not. Because if you got a low AR, you're working low hours, you're doing low miles, and you're making good money, you're in a good fucking market. If you got high AR, you're making low money, you're driving high-ass miles, you can't use that person to determine the market because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Whenever I see high AR, I automatically stop listening to them right off the fucking bat. You're not an analyst. You're at 95%. You're not an analyst. I'm not listening. You're an employee. I'm not listening to you. Yo, well, my AR is 98%. You ain't talking to me. I'm going to need somebody that's at least 30% or below, 40% or below. I need somebody with low AR to talk to because that's the motherfucker that's thinking. That's the one that's going, you know what? I had all these shit rides coming down the pipe. I'm kicking these out. I'm kicking those. I'm doing this. I'm doing I don't need to hear a motherfucker. Oh, man, I start at 430. I drive till 1130 at night. And I'm driving fucking 14, 15 hours a day. My AR is 98%. I'm making $270 a day. Yeah, but you're working 14 hours a day to make $270. Yeah, that's right. They become real jittery. They become jittery. And they like, I'm not going to get any money. I'm not going to, hey, KK, 6% AR. See, that's the motherfucker I listen to right there. 6% of AR and bills paid, all your bills are paid. All your bills are paid with 6% of AR. You're an analyst. You know what's profitable. You got drivers out there, 100% AR, 98% AR, and they bills ain't paid yet. It's just like having an employee who's living check to check or an employee that's got payday loans out, so they got to garnish their fucking wages just to make sure they got, you know, credit for less paid off. They got a title loan on their fucking car so they can get credit for less paid off. You don't want to listen to people with really high stats, high ARs and high... And, oh, I got 100% uh, rate at work. 
I'm at work every day. But you're at work every day, but you have payday loans out. Like your whole motherfucking glove box is filled with goddamn payday loan certificates of you making payments on those payday loans, but you go to work every day. You're not analyzing something. Something in your brain is not registering that you are not making the amount of money you need to live the lifestyle you got. This is how long you been on, fam? What are we talking about today? Flex, flex, what's good, brother? What's good? So far, two hours today, two hours. See, E-Love says my AR never goes above 30%. One out of every three rides, that's a good choice. I like that. One out of every three rides is good because y'all see on my screen all the shit rides come. Sometimes I get five or six shit rides in a row. One out of every three is good. One out of every three rides is good. 30% is good. I was just at 31%, but I'm down like around about 22 to 24. I'm where Dash came in the E's. 25% AR, that's where I'm at. 25% AR, I'm down in that area. One out of every four rides. I'm getting to the point where it's about to be 20%. One out of every five rides. And so that lets you know, if you're doing one out of every five, one out of every four, and you're still making good money, you got a good market. But if you're doing one out of every four rides, one out of every five rides, and you ain't making no good money, you're a good driver, you got good analytical skills, and your market sucks. That's why you're not really making any money. Because a good analyst will make good money with a low AR. A good analyst will say, this market is good because I'm only taking one out of every four rides, one out of every three rides, and I'm doing really well. That tells you the market is healthy. The market is healthy. 27% for flex, guarantee. Flex is making the money, bills is paid, the market is healthy. But if Flex is at 27% and he's having a hard time making money, with him being the good driver he is and the analytical driver he is, that means the market is like whack. That's how it was over the summer. A lot of us had whack-ass ARs over the summer. We had shitty ARs over the summer. I was down to like 14% over the summer. And I'm a good driver, so I'm a good driver, 14%, not making no money. The market must have sucked for me to be that low. Then all of a sudden, I was up to like almost 40%. After summer, I went almost up to 40. Now I'm down to 31. Now I'm going down some. because And the market is still good. I just did two nights in a row making damn near $100 an hour back to back to back. To. So the market is very healthy. My AR is really low. I'm making really good money. And everybody's eating good. Everybody's eating good right now. That will tell you the market is healthy. You cannot look at a high AR driver and determine whether or not the market, because to them, Every market is good because they're going to always have bad money no matter what. They're taking shit rides in any market, a good market or a bad market. High AR people will take a shit ride. They'll take a dollar a mile, 50 cent a mile, 80 cent a mile. I can't look at high AR people and determine how my market is going. I need to know, like measured, 17% AR. I need to look at shit like that. I look at somebody with low AR and I ask them, okay, your AR is low. How, like, how's your money going though with that? Oh, sh man, I got 17%. Shit, I'm banking out like almost $40 an hour. Damn, 17%, 40 an hour? Yep, still. Your market is healthy then. You got a healthy market. But if you had 17% and you're making $15 an hour, the market is slow. It sucks. Business is moving too slow. Now, if you got 98%, no matter what, if you've got 98% AR, you're always making $20 to $25 an hour. There's no fucking way you are at 98 to 100% AR and you're making $40 to $50 an hour. Ain't no fucking way. Because they send so much bullshit, so much. There's no way you can take every ride and still end up good in these markets. They send way too much crap down. Them. That's why I tell people, you cannot look at a high AR driver and determine the health of a market. The high AR drivers are not the health of the market. They're not. <laughs> hey, hey, Juan Parker said, man, I'm at 30% AR on lift. Now, Juan's at 13% AR. Let me tell you about Juan. 13% AR. And he makes $1,000 in two days. That's the type of driver you want to look at to know if your market is healthy. How in the fuck are you at 17% and you made a grand in two days? 13%. 13% and you made a grand. That means our market is booming. And I know it's booming because I was out damn near making a... And my AR went from 31 down into the 20s and I'm making more money. The market is healthy right now. It's doing good. You need these low AR drivers to, to help you understand how is my market going? Yep, Rod Share Lisa, the same shit here. Same shit here. Hey, Sly Two Rosses, my AR went to 7% in the summer. <laughs> hey, for real. This shit was bad in the summer. It was bad. And we were not making no money. We were not making no money. Do I have X Twitter? I have Twitter, but I haven't signed in in like five years. It's like, I don't even know what the password is. 
And that's the thing. Summertime, everybody, low AR drivers, we were barely scraping by, barely scraping by. Even the high ARs are barely scraping by. So now that the market is going really good, our ARs are going up a little bit because we're low AR drivers, but our AR is kind of crawling up a little bit, which means they're they're giving out better rides right now. They're giving out better rides. Cardinals won. Free chicken. Back in the game, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's funny shit. Yeah, Lisa, the same thing. Market depends on college. And that's why we were so slow in the summertime, Lisa. We depend on ASU, GCU, AU, you know, NAU to travel down here. We depend on colleges heavy. And without it, we're dead. We're like, you know, and that's why I tell my fuckers, drive hard. Drive hard when college is in. All fall, all winter, drive hard. Because the moment this shit dries up, we're going to be, our AR, just like Sly, is going to start tanking. 6%. Set. We can't take nothing but six rides out of every 10 rides. And no, that's 60%. It's more like one ride out of 10 rides. One ride out of every 10 rides is 10%. So we're taking one ride out of every 10 rides, basically. And that's how it is in the summertime. Yep, bank your money for summer. Because it's going to get slow and shit's going to, bills got to be paid. You can't call your bill because you be like, you know what, it's kind of slow this summer. Well, you didn't stack when it was good. No, I was out balling and, you know, fake balling. I was buying fucking drinks for everybody at the bar. Doesn't... See, you wasn't doing it. Wakanda. That's right there. You hell yeah. Wakanda. God damn it. We got vibranium. We don't do platinum and diamond programs. We do vibranium. The lower you go, the more vibranium you got. God damn it. This is Wakanda. <laughs> we looking for the low AR. And that's what it is. You've got you've to gotta bank for the summertime. Because if you don't bank for the summer, you're going to be, oh, I need to go to a W-2. No, we can make it through the summer. We can fight through the summer. And we fought through the summer. A lot of us fought through the summer. I mean, it was like bank accounts was dipping, going low. I was $2,000 off from projections, $2,000 off from projections. And I'm not that far off. I might be a couple of hundred here and there. You know that? Man, I'm too. That's how slow it was. I was a whole $2,000 off in, in like two, three months. How am I that far off in two, three months? Because there was no rise. I couldn't make up the money. I just could not make up the money, no matter what I would do. I couldn't make the money. And I wasn't willing to put out more expense. Because if I put out more expense, my profit margin drops. So now I got more wear and tear on the car. I'm like right after the summer ended, I rode on those tires till end of summer because I didn't want to fuck my tires up. So right at the end of summer, I started putting new tires on everything. So that way my tires are going to run me all through the year. I'll be good. Exactly. One out of every 15 rides. And that's how bad it was, Mel. It was that bad. And we had to make choices about that shit. We had to figure out how are we going to make it through the summer? Oh, no, I just took those run flats off. Hey, Greasy. Because like I said, those run flats were good. They're just hard, man. They're real. They're loud. They're hard. They're a, they're a super hard compound because they never run flat. Basically, they're like riding on bricks. So now I got much softer tires. Car sounds like I'm riding in the clouds right now. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You think uh, Phoenix still going to be hot with that bandwagon fans of the car took that loss? Oh, yeah, Sly. Yep. Because see, Sly, and I was telling people earlier in the chat, like if, when this is over and, and it'll be recorded, you can go back to the beginning of the live. Even like you got on, there's a lot of freshmen in college. A lot of freshmen are in college. And it's almost like, those kids from Jack that all the transfer students and everything, a lot of freshmen came over. They were riding high on the bandwagon. Because when you leave high school as an athlete, you're the star athlete in the high school. You're the star in the state. Everybody knows you. So you riding high. Now you go to a different league, college, a big college. You need to be kind of putting your play sometimes. I think Oregon kind of put in the check to show them what's really real in the big in the big leagues. And I'm one of those athletes. Like when I was big in high school, I was, you know, best in the state doing all this crazy shit, all this get to college, they put me, because I was, and even when I started running in, in high in college, as soon as I got to Drake, I was winning races at Iowa State, I was winning at Northern Iowa, I was Illinois State, I was winning races everywhere already. So what they did to, to humble your star athletes is you put them against athletes you know they have no fucking chance of beating. They put me in a race against Michael Johnson and Kevin Little. There's no way I'm beating Kevin Little and Michael Johnson. These are two USA tracks. Michael Johnson's gold medalist. Kevin, he's always silver. He's always up there with him. So they put me as a freshman in a race with Michael Johnson. You talking about seeing a level of speed I have never witnessed in my life. I'm on the track. It's like running a, 
a Tesla against a 1985 Dodge Omni. And I'm the motherfucking 1985 Dodge Omni, and they got a goddamn Model S Plaid. Michael Johnson, the Model S Plaid in the same fucking race. And they're like, Jeff, we're going to set you up in this race real quick. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Motherfucker, I pull my little 1985 Dodge Omni up, motherfucker, popping. Pow, pow. Serpentine belt about to pop the fuck off. I ain't got no valve stems on the motherfucking air pocket because I keep putting air in the motherfucker. So I'm like, just leave the valve stems off. I'll pull up windshield wipers ain't even working. And this motherfucker put me next to a Model S Plaid. You gonna race against Michael Johnson. Man, we came around that corner. I'm flooring this motherfucking Dodge Omni. I'm like, ah, whole motherfucking car shaking. Ah. And all of a sudden, that motherfucking Model S Plaid said, and I had never seen somebody race that fucking, I had never seen nobody run that fast, high school or college. Because I'd never run against nobody that fast. Just like Colorado never played against nobody like Oregon. All Even at Jackson State, these kids never played against nobody like Oregon. When they were all at Jackson State, whatever college they were at, they never played against nobody like Oregon. And that's how it is sometimes. You got to put them against some big boys every once in a while to show them Get your weight up, get your shit together, because one day you may be able to be that good of a squad. You might be able to be, you know, running like Michael Johnson and everything. You might be able to be that fast one day. And I won a lot of 200-meter 200, 200 championships. I won some championships in a 55. I set some records and shit like that. But I was never at his level of speed. But it was always something to go for, always something sitting in the back of my mind to how can I get my engine to go that fast? Like this dude was like blazing super speed. And that's how I want these kids at Colorado to be like that. I want them to say, how can we be that good of a team? Keep looking at that tape. That's how you get good. Keep watching that tape against that Oregon team. See how their line moves. Add more linemen to your deck on, on offense and defense. See how they were sacking your quarterback. You've got to study game tape. When you play against somebody that good of like Oregon, be thankful you played against somebody that good. Be thankful because now you know how you stack up against somebody at that magnitude and you go back and you look at that tape again and you'll be like damn we really need to work on a lot of shit if we're going to be at that level of the game so you know i'm, I'm glad that they got the chance to play against oregon early in their career you know they're three and one right now but that one is is a hard one because they took a, a ass beating for that one that wasn't an easy one to take they played against a great great oregon team they played against a great team what no bullshit i mean you got both you got all you got a lot of guys out there. Yeah. And and it was it was more than a litmus test, man. It was a litmus test, but it was a shitmus test because they shit on them. A litmus test would have been like, okay, they scored like you know, it was half. No, they got their ass handed to them. <laughs> it was a shitmus test. We're gonna put y'all through some shit today, goddammit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that yellow and green strikes, it had to be ominous for somebody, man. Had to be ominous. Wait a minute. State Farm Stadium to the W Scottsdale quoting $64 rider Uber X. So if it's $64, they're paying you probably 32, 30, 32. And it's like, man, if you're getting 30, you got to sit in traffic for 25 minutes. Then you got to drive. So you're going to be making about 30, 40 dollars an hour dealing with that damn stadium, man. 35, 40 bucks an hour. You got to do all short rides. Pick up people on the outskirts. Don't pick up nobody from the stadium. Tell motherfuckers to walk. Say, walk a little bit. And let me pick you up from over there. Flex, you nuts, man. Nuts. How can I be good of a driver like Jeff? What working on it? Hey, man. And, and the thing is, I think all of us are working on being a more complete driver. Like, I'm not a complete driver. I learn from other drivers in the chat, in comments on the channel. And that's why I go through every comment, because there are some really smart drivers out there that leave some really good shit. And I see it. When I got time, I'll go through the comments. I'll go through everything. And that's how I learn how to do this shit with my surges, with the reservations. I got that out of my comments. How I learned how to use Uber Pet better. Got that out of some comments. We're all helping each other be more complete drivers. And it's a good thing. I love it, man. That's why I love the channel. It's it helping us become more complete. A lot of channels, they want you to just worship them. They want you to get on their channel and worship them. Oh, my God. You're the most amazing. How do you drive? Don't worry about how I drive, motherfucker. Don't worry about it. Just worship me. Just worship me. And I'm one of those drivers like, motherfucker, it, it ain't me. It's, it's me taking advice. I'm learning like how this shit works. I'm learning from everybody how this works. We're all learning from each other how this works. And if we across the boards can look, if I look in a year, in a year from now, we all look at each other. We got the people that were renting, like my man, Wes. Wes was renting a Tesla. He was a long-term Tesla renter, long-term. The other day, this motherfucker started doing all short rides, all short everything, good deliveries. He started being a very high profitable rider, very high profitable rider. 
He went out and bought him a golf EV. He went out and bought a car. This dude was a long-term renter. Couldn't afford a car. Long-term renting. But he said, how am I affording this rental if I can't buy my own shit? It doesn't make sense. How am I a long-term renter, but I can't buy my own shit? And it just clicked. And he went out, he bought his own car. And he'd been making enough money for it. Now he's saving a ton of money for it. And it's like, dude, that's what people have to do. They have to realize we're all learning from each other and feeding off each other. And once we learn and feed, we become more complete as drivers. Nobody's going to be 100% expert. Oh, I'm 100% expert and I know everything about Roger. This shit changes all the time. They always change an app, taking a tear away, adding a tear, adding this to a tear, doing that, moving surges, not moving surges. They're always, you cannot be an expert in, in fucking quicksand. There is no quicksand expert out there. Oh, I can tell you exactly where to walk. Motherfucker, it's quicksand. How are you going to tell me where to walk? You try to walk out there, then the motherfucker starts sinking. Thought you was an expert. <laughs> it's like, shit. Exactly, exactly. Exactly, Tuck Tuck, you real shit. How to make $1,500? Drive 1,500 miles. <laughs> nope, good on that shit. <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to do. No, hell no. Fuck that. Because 1,500 miles is 1,500 fucking miles of filling up my damn tank of gas. I want to make that $1,500 probably around $3 a mile, $5 a mile. How can I get there? I'm not driving no 1,500 fucking miles. It ain't happening. <laughs> but man, but yeah, and that's what we do. You know what I'm saying? We all just sit around and we try to help each other out. And we go from, you know, in a year from now, I want to see people say, hey, man, I was renting a, an apartment last year. I bought me a condo. I went from, you know, renting a house last year to now we just bought this house. We're, we're fixing this house up because that's what I did. I bought a house. I want to fix this motherfucker up. I had to paint shit, move shit around, do shit. Everybody has to move in increments. Nobody's going to go from ride share to, hey, I just bought a mansion. It ain't going to happen like that. Everything's going to take steps. Hey, I was driving. I was renting. Now I went and bought this. Or I was renting this apartment. Now I'm, I just bought this little condo. I bought this townhouse. I'm going to sell the townhouse after we fix it. I'm going to buy a bigger. This is just all this shit in ride share helps you become a better business person. It helps you manage your money a lot better. Because if you don't manage your money in this shit, oh, you fucked. You fucked. Because there is no, can I get an advance on my paycheck? You can't go to HR and get an advance on your paycheck. You don't get a fucking annual bonus that you can get an advance on. You can't go get a payday loan. You can't do that. So what you got to do is learn how to manage your money better and make small moves. As you start managing it better, you're making small moves. That's right, Sam. Same thing. Buy a two-bedroom. In three years, go get a three-bedroom. Because as long as you're doing something, as long as you're moving forward and you're not moving back, you're good. You're good. And a lot of people, you know, they, they get in ride share, and the first thing they do is they tell somebody else some backward shit. Oh, you knew the ride share? Tell you what you do. Get online at 5 o'clock in the morning and just start driving. Take everything to get your AR up. And once your AR gets really, really high, they're going to give you the best rides ever. It's going to take you three years of that shit, but you're going to get the best rides in 2027. <laughs> it's like, yeah, right. Don't listen to those motherfuckers. No. If somebody's brand new to ride share, the first thing I'm going to tell them is, let me tell you the truth. Uh, AR doesn't matter. Cancellation kind of matters. And your profit margins are the only thing that fucking matters. That's how we're going to start this conversation. It ain't going to be no bullshit about, well, what I do is I went and got this black SUV. I pay 700 a month and then my insurance. No, fuck all that. None of that matters. You could drop a 2005 and make $50 an hour. You can make a 2009 and make $50. There's motherfuckers out there right now driving 2019s and 2020s making $24 an hour right now because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. It is not about your car. Fuck your car. Go get the cheapest fucking car you can find to generate the most profits you could find and elevate from there. Because once you go get this cheap car and you generate them profits, you got that savings account. Now you're going to get a more expensive car. Step into a new tier if you wanted to. If you don't want to, keep buying cheap shit and keep making money on that. It's always an option. But profits is always your first option. Don't ever think, well, you got to make sure you keep your AR up. Because if your AR drops, you're going to get throttled. Well, I would rather be throttled than giving some fucking mashed potatoes. I'll tell you that much shit. I'm not going to sit there and be like, man, I don't want them to throttle. No, please throttle me. Because if all you got is bullshit, throttle me until the bullshit is over. Give the bullshit to all the bullshit takers. 
throttle me for about 10 to 15 minutes. Give me some time to go grab me a motherfucking crusty dusty. Go grab me a motherfucking juice. I'm going to go give me a juice. Grab me some old crusty dusty motherfucking donuts. I'm going to sit outside and kick back. And then put me back online when you're ready to fucking work. That's what I want to do. But all these, oh, you don't want to be throttled. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Trust me. You want to be throttled. When they sending out bullshit, you would like to be throttled. Just say, hey, coach, can you take me out the game? Because these motherfuckers are shooting air balls, and I don't want to be on the court right now. All these motherfuckers are shooting air balls. Put me on the court when the ballers are on court. I want to ride the bench for a minute. So I do that shit. I go sit my ass on the bench, and I hang the fuck out until surge comes out. When the surge is out, I'm ready to go in, coach, because now it's time to fucking drive now. So all these high, oh, start at four o'clock and just keep going. Just keep driving. Don't let your will stop. I don't give a fuck if you were sitting at the stoplight. Put your foot on the brake, gas that bitch and do a burnout. Keep them fucking wheels going. Why the fuck this motherfucker car got smoke all around it? Because he's he keeping his wheels moving. He got his foot on the brake and the other one's on the gas and he's burning his motherfucking wheels out because the motherfucker told him to keep his wheels moving. So he's over there doing burnouts right now over on fucking Broadway. Fuck, something's wrong with that driver. He's new. <laughs> he told me to keep my wheels moving, so I had to fucking double foot it for a little while. Yeah, motherfucker. Motherfucker driving with two feet and shit. And was, that's, that's that Uber driver the other night, drive with two feet. Mother had to keep his wheels moving. I was like, what the fuck is he doing? Will you drive, motherfucker? Gotta keep my wheels moving. Like, shit. I'm like, man, stop. Park that motherfucking that empty ass parking lot over there and go through your apps. Make sure ain't no money out there. Make sure there's the reservations out there. Make sure you know where all the surge is popping up. Because you, with your app stand on the whole time, you are not seeing this $20 surge fucking two blocks behind you. You're not seeing it. Because your app is on it. You keep accepting shit. Stop accepting shit. Stop. Turn that motherfucker off. Be like, where am I at? And y'all hear me say that shit in the video a lot. Where am I at? I'll be like, okay, hold up. Where am I at? Cause I want to see where the surge is. Am I around any surge? Is it any reservations I can just pick up real quick? Where am I at? Where am I at? You got to ground yourself. Cause these apps will keep you busy. Gotta stay busy. Gotta stay busy. Motherfucker doing a burnout. Wheels just going. Like motherfucker, this dude ain't even leaving the stoplight. He just sent it to stoplight with an Uber light on burning and shit. Gotta keep my wheels moving. It's like, God damn dog. You gonna need new tires after your second day of driving. Quit listening to those motherfucking YouTubers. <laughs> Dash Gamp says, I'm just watching Jeff on YouTube waiting for the right ride. That's right. Man, and wait till your customer get in, Dash Cam. When your customer get in, be like, okay, I need to turn this shit off. Because this dude I'm listening to right now, you don't want to hear him. Because the customer going to be like, can you really do a burnout? <laughs> no, I can't do no burnout. He fucking with you. Come on, man, do a burnout. I'll give you an extra tip. I'll tip you in the app. <laughs> I ain't doing no burnout. Fucking turn this Jeff shit off. Fuck that. Motherfucker got these customers asking me to do a burnout. Jeff, quit telling these motherfucking customers we do burnouts. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker wheels on fire like a motherfucker. <laughs> hey, Mr. Fields, that's what you got to do. That, hey, you got to slow down and you got to analyze where you at. You got to be like, hey, because these motherfuckers, they too busy, man. And they be sitting right next to a surge. But they sitting there going, oh, I got to hurry up and accept this $3 ride. Man, it's $3 with four motherfuckers standing on the corner. Fuck them people. They could take a bus. That's $3.85 for four people. Turn the app off. Get rid of all this shit. See where you are. You got to triangulate. Where is the motherfucking surge at? Where is the surge? And when you see the surge, that's you put that shit on Uber Pet and you head to that motherfucker. Don't take no rides. Go get the free money. When you get the free money, go to an area where you think you can use that surge real quick. Open that motherfucker up. <laughs> tip you one dollar if that exactly. <laughs> I'll tip you in the app one dollar. And that shit happened to me last night. I, it's funny because on the video you would hear me saying, oh, man, I ain't seen a one dollar tip in a minute. Man, I think they fucking figured it out and stopped tipping me a dollar. Next fucking tip. That's just a big ass green one dollar. Congratulations, you just earned a tip. Big ass one dollar. I'm like, I just said these motherfuckers stopped tipping me a dollar. That shit's on a video. Man, that's man. I don't, ooh, I think Uber be listening to me. They fucking with me because they heard me say, Man, I ain't seen a dollar tip in a minute. I think they figured it out. They're giving me my money now. One dollar. The very next fucking tip. I was like, these raggedy motherfuckers, man. They sitting there playing with my phone, man. They on my say, stop playing on my phone, goddammit. Stop playing on my phone. <laughs> but no. But shit, man, like I said, the, the best thing a driver can do 
is to find out. Yeah, exactly. Don't be a drone. Don't be a drone. Like Dash Cam said, don't be a fucking drone. Find out where you are and where the surge is and how you can get the money. There's free money all around you. And sometimes you like me. I'll just be by an event and not even know I'm buying an event. But I'll see like the little event tent on the motherfucking thing. I'm like, holy, I'll hit the button and it'll say event. And it'll say busy like in 20 minutes. I'm like, oh shit, this is an event coming up in 20 minutes. Right in Mesa, little ass concert. Shit happens all the time. I'll hurry up, run a quick trip, turn my apps off, and I'll sit at quick trip, listen to some music, go through YouTube, whatever. And I'm looking at the fucking clock. I'm like, I got 20 fucking minutes. Wipe the car down, get the wheels clean, get everything all nice, clean out the back seats, the floors and shit. Soon as the little bitty mini concert let out, like last night, right off of Main Street, little mini concert let out. And you'll see, man, I had surge on trips, surge after surge. Wait till this video drop, man. It was, it was nuts. Surge, surge, surge. And it was starting at 1130. From 1130 all up till like maybe 1230, I was on UberX because they would not stop. It was just surge, 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 surge. And I was like, holy shit. I'm like... You got to sometimes turn your app off. Stop. See where you are. Because there could be an event right there. No, uh That lip's going to be on. Show me the money. Man, I'm going to tell you something about these motherfucking CEOs. They don't give a shit about drivers. And I'm going to tell you what. If, if Lyft CEOs really gave a fuck about drivers, he would have all of his little ragged-ass employees contacting all the shitty YouTubers like me. Like, I'm not a I'm not a good YouTuber. I know I'm not a good. You ain't got to tell me I'm a shitty YouTuber. I already know I'm a shitty YouTuber. So he's got to contact people like us, the fucked up ones, and be like, I need to change y'all to understand what we're doing. And so so we don't because like on the money, show me the money, Roger guy, they're they're unbiased. They're unbiased. They're for the app, but they're also for the driver. And sometimes when you got a motherfucking politician on your team, you need a politician that's going to stand for you. You don't represent you. I represent drivers. I don't represent Lyft because I don't work for Lyft. Am I biased towards drivers? You goddamn right I am biased towards drivers because I am a driver. That's like me saying, are you biased towards, you know, CU? Yes, because I'm a CU fan, so I'm biased towards CU. Am I biased towards, you know, being a father of sons? Yes, I'm biased towards being a father of sons because I got two sons. So I can tell you more about raising sons than I can about raising daughters. If you ask me about Lyft, I don't know shit about Lyft. I could care shit about Lyft. What Lyft needs to do is realize that we're not tools. We're humans with fucking families, with houses. We invest in cars. We put up a lot of fucking money to help these raggedy motherfuckers run that app. That's what I would tell them. And he may say, well, Jeff, that's not very professional. Man, fuck you. I'm professional with two Vs, motherfucker. That's who I am. I am that YouTuber. I'm not the nice one. I'm not the nice one. But they want to talk to the nice ones. They don't want to talk to the ones like me, which is cool. I'm cool with that shit because we can sit back and we can watch the interview. We can see how the shit goes and stuff like that. But I guarantee, guarantee he will not say anything that can like solidly bank drivers on anything that we can really, really sit on. It's all going to be, well, what we're going to do with the company and what we're thinking about doing for the passengers because what we feel about ride share is this and that. Well, what do you think about the drivers? Man, fuck them motherfucking drivers. Fuck them. That's exactly what he want to say, but he can't say that because he's too professional. Well, you know, what we're thinking about with the drivers is we're trying to understand and comprehend, you know, the way drivers and our customers inter- is always going to, I guarantee, mark my motherfucking word, when y'all watch that interview, it's going to be so customer focused. So app focused and customer focused, drivers are gonna be sitting there looking. It's like hanging a motherfucking pork chop over a fence, and pit bulls keep jumping up trying to get the pork chop. But you like you don't want to give it to the motherfucking pit bulls. You just want them to see that you got a pork chop. That's all. You just fucking with them, and that's what this is gonna be like. It's, it's gonna be fucking with us because not once is it gonna be. Well, you know, a lot of Lyft drivers have invested in some some nice cars. They really invest. A lot of people still got six year loans, five year loans, four year loans, three year loans on cars they took out to drive you. But maybe you, what you should do is today, since you know, the average car loan is 48 months. The average car loan is 48 months. Why don't you say in 48 months from now, 48 months, we're going to discontinue the Lux tier. That lets motherfuckers not go out and buy another car. And anybody who's already bought one, no, My shit, I got 48 months to pay this motherfucker off. So if you still got 60 months to pay it off, 12 months, you're going to not probably have Lux because at the tail end, you're not going to have it. You should say, we need to know what the average loan is out of any driver who bought a fucking car 
under the the illusion that they're going to be able to drive Lux, Lux, Black, Lux, whatever the fuck on our app and say, we know we could deact deactivate the motherfuckers at any minute, but we at least want to know what's the chance of us helping this person pay their car off. They don't give a fuck. They don't care. How long is it going to take us to pay a car off? They're looking at drivers like, you guys are fucking tools. Well, you're not a part of Lyft. You guys are tools. What are you talking about? We're not going to sit here and care about you drivers to the degree of us saying we care about when your car is paid off or how your car is paid off or the fact that you bought that motherfucker to drive for us. We don't care. You're a tool. That's what they want to say, but they can't. They're getting rid of Lux because in their words, there's not enough. Because like I said, it's always going to be customer centric, not driver centric. And it's customer centric to the point where it's like, we're getting rid of Lux because customers aren't ordering Lux. They're not requesting Lux ride. It's always customer centric. Everything they do is the word customer or rider or passenger is going to be the first fucking word out their mouth. Well, it's not rider centric. You know, the, the customers are just not ordering it. Riders are not ordering the fuck they not. If I bought this fucking car and I'm the only car available in the fucking area and they need to get their ass home, they going to pay for it. That's like Southwest Airlines saying, we're going to discontinue uh, air travel because uh, people just aren't requesting flights. No, if you need to fly somewhere, you're going to come up with the money to get a fucking plane ticket. You can't just call goddamn Southwest Airlines and be like, hey, listen, uh, we were going to buy an a airline ticket, but we don't have enough money. Can you just discontinue airline and just do something different? No, fuck that. Yeah, it'll be a tip your ass in food stamps in a minute. <laughs> They're getting rid of Lux because the name sucks. Well, see, they never pushed Lux because Lux is a, is a higher liability tier for them. It's expensive. It cuts into their profit margins. Because if you tax, if you hit a driver, let's say you hit a rider up for $50, a Lux driver, let's say a Lux driver is going to get 30 of that, 35 of that. That leaves them with only 15. But if you can somehow get that $50 passenger to get a cheaper fucking ride home, let's say $20. Now you got $30 instead of 15. You just doubled your fucking money by pulling a whole tier away. So you're getting the same person paying the same $50. They're still going to pay that 50. They just not getting somebody that has to be paid 35 to do it. So it's like, we ain't got to pay nobody 35 to do it. We got a $20 motherfucker down here that'll do it. So they'll have all these nice ass cars on base fucking tiers. And that's how the game works because it's, it's customer centric. It's what can we get out of the fucking customer and what can we not have to pay the fucking driver? That's how we run this app. That's how we run this business. Well, what about the driver? Fuck them drivers. They don't, they don't work for us. They work with us. If they choose to go out and buy a goddamn Lux car, that's their fucking problem. They could go out and buy a $3,000 fucking car, $5,000 car. Rates are the rates. Miles are the miles. They're focused on what can I get out of this motherfucker's wallet and keep versus get out of their wallet to pass to this motherfucker over here with a BMW. Fuck him and his BMW. I want to take money out of this dude's pocket and pay this motherfucker over here with a Ford Focus. That's what I'm looking for. The 2007 Ford Focus willing to do this shit for $15 because the BMW dude wants to do it for 40. Fuck the And the person wants to ride in the BMW because they're like, oh shit, I get to ride in the BMW? Hell yeah, I paid 50 bucks. Yeah, but damn, we got to pay the BMW dude 40 fucking bucks. Well, no matter what, we're going to charge him $50. But you don't want the fucking 07 Ford Focus. So you take the BMW away. You pull all the good options off. And you say either you got to pay up a whole fucking tier to do XL, black and all that shit, or you got to pay $50 to drive in that fucking Ford Focus. But you ain't getting none of this nice shit in the middle. No. Extra comfort sounds better. Extra comfort. And I'm going to tell you right now, my car is not extra comfortable. It's really not. I mean, I think if you rode in a Lincoln fucking, like a Lincoln Town car is more comfortable than my car. A Lincoln Town car is way comfortable. But a Lincoln Town car is a 2002. But the motherfucker is way comfortable than mine. I guarantee a 2002 Lincoln Town car is way more comfortable than this motherfucking 2019 BMW. The suspension is better. The tires are better. The seats are more plush. You've probably got better fucking amenities in that motherfucker. My car's a sports car. It ain't more comfortable. It looks nicer. That's about it. So they need to have the prices going, you know, base, nice shit, nicer shit, sick shit. And sick shit is at the very top. And when you open your app and you see the word sick shit, you're going to be like, is this a real app? Who made this shit up? This is Tuber, motherfucker. 
<laughs> we're back to tuber again. It says sick shit. Like, what's sick shit? Wait till this motherfucker pull up. You be like, damn, that motherfucker's sick. That's why it's on the sick shit list, motherfucker. That's some sick shit. <laughs> yeah, it's just sporty and fast. The BMW is sporty and fast. It's not extra comfort. It's sporty and fast. That's it. Guarantee the fucking Lamborghini is fucking less comfortable, but it's more expensive. It's like you can't just call some extra comfort because you want to market it. Like I said, it's marketing. They want to market. Oh, this is extra comfort. Oh, I'm paying extra for extra. Yeah, you're paying extra for extra. And you get in this motherfucker and be like, this car sucks. <laughs> it's like, yeah, exactly. It's really not. You're just paying extra. It ain't really extra. You're just paying extra. That's all. Oh, the i5 BMW. Man, I love all the eyes. The i5, the i7. I love the eyes. Man, those are some sick cars. The i4. But like I said, I would never buy another car for ride share ever again. That's expensive. Not knowing what I know now. I can drive Uber X and make the fucking money I make. My next fucking car is going to be like whatever the bottom tier of cars could be. And it's going to be a really nice one with nice tires on everything else. If I come pulling around a motherfucking corner in a goddamn Topaz, you'd be like, where the fuck did you even find a Topaz at? <laughs> hey, they still selling them. I got a Topaz, a tar station wagon. I got all kind of old school fucking cars, man. All these motherfuckers is 1985 and up. <laughs> yeah, because it's like you can make this money on UberX because all they want is a ride home. All I want is like certain dollar per mile. So I'm like, fuck that. I'm going to go buy me a fucking tow pass. And it's like, because these motherfuckers, you know, they jumping into my BMW and I'll be trying to tell them, hey, you guys need to use both back doors. So you don't kick my climate controls. They still try to use one door to get it. These motherfuckers act like clowns at the goddamn circus. They all piling in one fucking door. I'm like, use all doors, please. Don't kick my motherfucking climate controls in the middle. Now, these people know how to use nice shit. You don't want to kind of tear your shit up giving people shit that don't know how to use nice shit. So what you're going to say is, man, just get a basic car. Get something that's nice. Stays clean. Clean windows. Everything fucking works. Smells nice. Wheels look good. Because wheels make or break a car. I'll tell you right now, wheels will make or break your fucking car. Because if you look at the gladiators, the Jeep gladiators, the trucks, I'll tell you right now. I've seen some motherfucking Jeep Gladiators with some 40s on it, wheels like my 40s, sick. Motherfuckers look like goddamn tanks coming down the fucking street. Beautiful fucking trucks, big-ass trucks. Now, if you look at a stock Gladiator, they look like the same kind of trucks they used to deliver mail, like back in the day. They look like fucking mail trucks. Like, if you painted that motherfucker to look like the post office, you think it was a post office truck coming out. The wheels are little. The boxes are all square and shit. Wheels can make or break a motherfucking car. Because you'd be sitting there like, man, I'm going to go buy me a Gladiator. Yeah, until you see that motherfucker on stock wheels, you'd be like, dude, is that a mail truck? Did y'all get that from the U.S. Post Service? Where'd this truck come from? Like, did y'all just repo this motherfucker? No, man, this is a Gladiator. It's a Jeep Gladiator. It's the Jeep truck. This is a motherfucking mail truck, dog. You trying to sell me a mail truck? Man, you trying to scam me or some shit? No, but that's how they look. They look like the fucking post office trucks. But you put bigger wheels on them. Oh, now you got a monster truck. Now the shit looks sick. Now the motherfucker's like, Okay, this is the baddest shit I've seen right now. Because a Jeep Gladiator truck on 40s, you can't, trust me, I see those motherfuckers coming through traffic. They don't even look like cars that belong on the street. Those motherfuckers are like movie cars, movie cars. I'm like, look at this motherfucking Gladiator. Holy shit. Make Jeep Wranglers look little. Big ass trucks. But the moment you put them motherfucking stock wheels back on, you be like, you need to sign for this package, sir. Sign for this package. <laughs> like, this is a mail truck, motherfucker. They going around delivering goddamn bills and shit. I got your Discover card bill, your AT&T bill. Like, oh, shit, hold up. <laughs> I didn't know they had gladiators at the post office. That's my mail truck. <laughs> it's like, goddamn. Wheels make a break this motherfucker, man. <laughs> exactly. Metro said, move that bag of mail and have a seat. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mother got Pony Express bags in the back of shit. What the fuck is this Pony Express bag from? This is from the Wild Wild West, motherfucker. What the fuck? Move that shit out the way. Goddamn motherfucker sitting on top of some mail, just riding around. <laughs> like somebody's bill just fell out of the car. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, put that back in. I still got to deliver that. <laughs> Motherfucking Gladiator trucks, man. Do not have stock wheels on them. Trust me. Trust me. Motherfucker straight up mistake your shit for a mail truck. These motherfuckers just throw some shit in the back. Here you go, Sam. Oh, shit, we thought this was a Sam's truck. Oh, we didn't know you worked here. My bad. Looked like one of our trucks. <laughs> it's like, yeah, exactly. You better put some 40s on that motherfucker. You better make that shit look sick. 
these motherfuckers riding around. <laughs> you sitting in traffic, fucking. You see a motherfucking gladiator in traffic. You'd be like, "Hey, is the mail running today?" They'd be like, "Huh? What is the mail running today?" Fuck are you talking? I'm not the mailman. Oh, with that truck, I really thought you were. <laughs> these motherfuckers be sitting in traffic like this motherfucker pulled up and asked me if the mail was running today. <laughs> I can't stand fucking people. Dad, we keep telling you to get some wheels on that. They're going to keep doing that to you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go get some fucking wheels, God, because wheels will make or break a motherfucking car. Wheels will. Because if you can get the oldest piece of shit and you put some nice ass wheels on it, trust me, it'll make or break that motherfucker. You'd be like, damn, this motherfucker look nice. What is this? This is a 1985 Caprice Classic four-door on 36-inch wheels. Like, what the fuck? 36-inch wheels? Like, yeah. He was like, this is basically a truck. <laughs> I'll be sending motherfuckers on the line. I'm like, yeah, that, that didn't make that car. I think that broke that car. They didn't make it. Man, I'll be like, man. I'll be, And I had an old-school Caprice Classic. I had some fucking, like, 13-inch fucking hammers on it, deep dish. Man, that motherfucker was clean. I had, like, 13-inch wheels and shit back in the day. Now they got 36 inch wheels. I was like, when you drive these motherfuckers down the street, I'm like, when you step out the fucking car, you need like a ladder to get out of the car. This is a car. It's not a truck. What are you doing? It's like on a hot day, you can lay up under that motherfucker for shade and you can just sit in the chair. It's like you have that much space under that fucking car now. I'm like, this is a Caprice classic. What are y'all doing? Y'all tearing this motherfucker up. Wheels can make a break a car, man. I don't know. I just ain't with that shit. <laughs> it's like, Man, because I'm like, I'm one of them old school cats, man. He says, man, I would name it Skittles, my Caprice. Skittles, like a motherfucker. I can't drive no car on big ass wheels like that. I'm old school. I want a, a fucking, I want hammers on my shit, some 13s or 14s, some days little ass shit. I like them little wheels, man. Like, make it look like a car. Like, they be making cars look like trucks and shit. I'm like, I can't fuck with that. I can't fuck with that. Yeah, and flexing, that's what it is, man. A car don't matter. 13, four flex, make pretty good money with it. Because what people don't realize is that the tier, the tier is what you want to be on. So if you're on UberX, you're on regular Lyft or Lux, something like that, the tier is what you're on. The car don't fucking matter. You're looking at what's coming down the pipe. So when you start seeing these fucking $2 a mile, $3 a mile rides, that's what you're looking for. A lot of these people think people are ordering specific fucking cars. Don't nobody order, excuse me, don't nobody order a BMW. They'd be like, oh, man, this car is nice, man. Isn't it? I'll be pulling up. And like I said, when I was stupid back in the day, I would pull up, you know, six people, $4.85. I'm trying to, you know, get a challenge going. I don't do that shit no more. Nope. I ain't picking up no fucking four people, no three. No, nah, no. Nah, it's not enough money for me. And you know you got a chance now to still make good money by declining $3 rides, $4 rides, just trying to hit one. Nicole, she's here north in the, north in the valley. She's there. Tuck Tuck said I had a 95 Caprice with that smooth, man. And, and you had the big ass 5.3 engine. I think you had the big V8. Cause I think I had the 97. I had a 90 or a 93. I had a 93 or a 97. I didn't have the 95, but I had the 93 or the 97 Caprice classic. It was the Caprice classic, all silver. I got pictures of that motherfucker, man. Big four door. I call it the mothership. Cause I left all the windows clear. I didn't even tint my windows because I'm on that motherfucker to show up looking like a UFO. When I pull up to the spot, I had a loud ass system. I had Sermon Vegas in the trunk. I pull up to that motherfucker, man. Look like we riding the spaceship. We pull up. You like look right through that motherfucker. <laughs> All silver with crystal clear windows. You can see everybody in that motherfucker. It, it wasn't nobody trying to escape nothing. You can see everybody. <laughs> it's like, man. She said, I'm just getting home. Hey, hope you made some money. It's 5 p.m. I hope you got that money today. You didn't get out there and, and get stuck at Sprouts or some fucking where trying to pick people up with a cartloads full of shit at Sprouts. You don't want that. Yeah, exactly. He said, I got, C. Smith said, I got that 2013 Kib, which I had that 03 Lincoln for my own comfort. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, old schools with the airbags, man. Lincolns used to have them airbags on the back. The Rivieras had the airbags on the back. Comfortable. I remember riding down the highway in them cars, man. And it's like, you just floating. You'd be like this, just like, like a big ass Fleetwood or some shit, just riding. That was actual comfort. The shit we got now, they call comfort. You be on, it'd be like that one lady when I went and picked her up. She was like, ow, my back. Ow. I've never been on a ride this bumpy before. I was like, bitch, this is the street. I don't know what you're talking about. I'll be just riding. And this lady, every time we turn the corner, ow, ow. I was like, this motherfucker, if you don't get out of my goddamn ear, I was mad as a motherfucker. <laughs> 
Oh, wait a minute. Is that 84 Delta, 88 Broham? Man, them big ass cars right there, them boats. Hey, I, I guarantee if I picked up somebody in a fucking Broham, I came around the corner in a big ass fucking boat, man, they would be happy as a motherfucker. Lincoln, Continental, man, come around the corner in one of those motherfuckers, they'd be like, oh shit, we got the Lincoln. Uber and Lyft don't let, and all it is, the engine and the transmission. If you take care of your engine, you take care of your transmission, you should be able to put a fucking Lincoln on it. Give me my old school. They should have a whole tier called old school. And you say, hey, man, I want an old school. I don't want a new car. Give me one of them old schools. Big ass Cadillac come around the corner. Motherfucker diamond in the back, sun rooftop, digging in the scene with the gangster link. Motherfucker just ride like a motherfucker. But they don't let us do that. Because I would order an old school. I would. I'd be like, dude, I don't want no new shit. Give me one of these old schools, man. Oh, damn, it's a Lincoln in the area. Give me that motherfucker. <laughs> so teach yourself that mashed potatoes and bullshit. I don't want no mashed potatoes and bullshit. Give me one of them old schools. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Uber classic. Uber classic, man. That's what I'm talking about. We should do that. The Uber classics. We, and that's the thing. I bet they won't fucking, when they get that little Lyft CEO motherfucker, they should talk about that. We should be able to have Lyft Classic. If you're going to get rid of Lyft Lux, get Lyft Classic. Let people with the old school cars and shit like that get a chance to, you know, bring that shit back. Bring it back. Get the old Cutler Supremes and shit out there, man. Get us some good shit. Because I guarantee, if I got an old, you right, Tuck Tuck, I was just about to say that. I would tip at least $15, $20 to riding a motherfucking old school. Bring that shit back. And I'm like, dude, play some motherfucking biz marquee in this motherfucker. <laughs> was it you? You got what I need. <laughs> you say he's just a friend. <laughs> Riding the old ass Delta 88. Oh, baby, you. <laughs> like this motherfucker came around the corner playing some fucking biz marquee in that bitch. I'm like, dude, you get a $20 tip right off the bat. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the airport. Imagine, imagine pulling up in a big-ass Cadillac, Sedan DeVille, or something like that, to the airport. Dude, everybody would just stand there and look. Everybody. they You pull up to the air, you see all the Teslas, the Beamers, the SUVs, the trucks, and all this shit, and you see this fucking big-ass fucking Cadillac, Sedan DeVille, fucking plushed-out interior, crystal-clear windows, custom fucking baskets on that shit. You pull up to the motherfucking thing, trunk pop, Man, everybody would just stand there and look at it like, dude, what kind of car is that? <laughs> oh, the young kids would ask that. Is that a real car? <laughs> like, what you mean? Is that a real car? We grew up to that shit. <laughs> Max, you got me saying raggedy, man. Shit. Undercover, brother. <laughs> I forgot about that shit with the old school. Ooh, I would get a Regal. I get a Regal like motherfucking Denzel Washington in training day. I'll pull up in a motherfucking Regal on their ass. Shit. Come around the corner like, Bumping like a motherfucker. Dayton's on that bitch and everything. Be like, today is training day. I don't know who you think I am, but I'm training all you motherfuckers out there how to get this. <laughs> it's like, they be like, I swear Denzel Washington drive motherfucking ride share. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to train you motherfuckers on how to do ride share. This is money, motherfucker. Big motherfucking money. <laughs> it's like we pull around the corner and a regal on their ass. Fuck that shit. Oh yeah, Grand National. That's what it was. A Grand National. Hell yeah. Oh William said thirteen eighty five for one point five miles. Thirteen for point six two miles. Man, let's do it. Yep, curve fillers and everything, man. <laughs> so I said, why? Lisa said, why are you bringing a boat to the airport? <laughs> Of a bullet, and then you put a boat horn on it, like womp womp <laughs> in a nice ass classic. You fucking got a big ass boat horn on that shit. <laughs> I like, I want to ride in that. I guarantee motherfuckers walk up to your car and be like, excuse me, but I just saw you drop somebody off. Uh, do you do ride share in this? Can you take us home in this? This is a clean ass motherfucker. My grandpa used to have one of these. Like, hell yeah, let's ride, motherfucker. This is Bernie Mac and his bitch. Hell yeah. I don't know about all you motherfuckers out there. What the fuck you doing in my goddamn car? <laughs> motherfucker, milk and cookie in my motherfucking car. <laughs> Gotta leave motherfucking crumbs in my motherfucking car. You got all these goddamn crumbs in my car. 
the cream on the inside, cream on the out, cream on the outside. I know it. That's funny shit. Ice cream, ice cream, page up, man. Hey, that's 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 an old Snoop shit. That's that southern, that's that southern playlistic Cadillac funky music. Hey, we playing playing some motherfucking outcasts. We pull up in that shit, man. Hey, yup, yeah, we nothing but eight tracks in that motherfucker. Some old ass Stevie Wonder. Fuck that shit. <laughs> We be kicking, hey, they don't, that's why I said we need to make Tuber. Tuber's going to be a real app, and it's going to be for the real motherfucking drivers out there. Tuber is like Uber mixed with fucking Turo. We're going to have some badass motherfucking cars. They'll be like, dude, I have never seen somebody drive around in the 1983. Like, yeah, that's what we do, motherfucker. We maintain these bitches, and we roll them all day. Motherfucker pull up smelling like fucking goddamn valve cover gasket on fire like dude this motherfucker smell like straight oil i'm like because we bringing it back motherfucker this is how you used to smell back in the day like these cars now like you don't smell a tesla a tesla smell like motherfucking like lavender bmw smell like motherfucking like hawaiian breeze i want my shit to smell like fucking valve cover gasket i want this motherfucker to smell like exhaust like the motherfucking belt burning i don't want this motherfucker to smell good like damn this is a car man this motherfucker smell like it's gonna break down are we gonna make it this motherfucker smell like it's gonna break down. Yeah. Fucker, you you had a stoplight for too long, a little smoke start generating in the back. You'd be like all nervous and shit. Hey man, is your engine on fire? Nah, it's a little coolant getting to the motherfucking cylinder. That's all, man. I got a head gasket leak. <laughs> it's like shit. I want a real ride, motherfucker. I want to be nervous. I remember being a kid trying to make it to your aunt's house and the car be damn near overheating. You're like, shit, we gotta make it to my aunt's house. This motherfucker might overheat. Harry, I'm get there. Hey, go and ask your Uncle Rufus for the water hose. I got a cooler engine off. See, that's a real motherfucking car. When you call your Uncle Rufus for a water hose to cool that bitch off, y'all go out back and play. I'm going to talk to your Uncle Rufus out front. Bring the water hose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Love the A-Track. Kids ask, what a cassette is. I know they be like, what's a cassette? Like this. It's like that little piece of plastic. Oh, we use that to hold the window open. Like, no, motherfucker, this is music on this bitch. This is music. What are you doing? I'm Al Green in that motherfucker. Drifting on a memory. I'm going to be riding out of street shit. <laughs> hey, that shit. Oh, fucking Waz. You need some finders to help with Tuber? Let me know. I'm down. Tuber. Hey, we'll do Tuber. We'll have all custom shit. We'll have big ass Tundras and fucking Tacomas and goddamn Jeeps. Motherfucking F-350 fucking trx's and shit raptors and then we'll say okay that's that's the tuber off-road now we're gonna go tuber classic what's tuber classic we're gonna bring out the fucking regals and shit the motherfucking color supremes everything you got a 120 cassette yeah hey and then dash hey we pull up the pickup motherfuckers and we be ready to hey man uh you gotta you got spotify or something like that like nah motherfucker i got a cassette <laughs> You want to hear some music? You sitting there. All right, let's rewind that shit. You got to sit there and wait a minute. Like, you just rewinded that motherfucker just sitting there. And I loved it when the cassettes came out and they had to rewind that stopped at the beginning of the fucking song. That was technology back then. I loved it because you'd be like, man, I'm going to hit rewind. It will rewind and stop at the beginning of the song. When that shit came out, we was on that click, click, mm, click, click, uh, click, click. You at the front yet? I don't know. Click, click, uh, click, click. Then it came out to a digital shit. You just hit rewind. It'll stop. I'm like, hey, it's at the beginning of the song. I love this shit. Now you just got fucking, you just hit next. I'm like, y'all motherfuckers ain't having no fun. That's next. We love to play the game. Can you get that motherfucker that's at the beginning of the song? Hit rewind. Stop it. Dude. Nope. Almost there. It was a game, man. It was a game. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. Man, man. Uh, Uber Premier with the Beamer. You need a five series, man. They, they got it on their list. It says five series. I got a three series. It's like, oh, shit. What Gio say, I retire from the military next year and hoping ride share could be my full-time job on the outside. Thanks to you and your channel for the education. Hey, Gio, I'm going to tell you what, man. It, it's a grind. It's a grind. And it's it could be fun. It could be fun if you make it fun. It could be stressful as a motherfucker, but you can find out. Like, when the money comes, it gets more fun. Trust me. We be out there stressing like a motherfucker. And, you know, no name Jay, that's Juan. Juan will tell you. We be out there mad as a motherfucker. We be, I be hanging up the motherfucking app, turning shit off, coming home early. We get mad. King James will tell you, we go home. We, man, I'm going back out at two or three. It's a true grind. It's a business. And a lot of people think, well, ride chair is just a point of giving somebody a ride. No, that's giving people fucking rides. Ride chair, the business is about profits. So you can sit around and give people rides all day at dollar a mile, 50 cent a mile, shit like that. You could do that all day and not do well with it. 
Or you can say, I'm going to run it like a business. I'll do like, I think I did seven rides or something. Like, I did seven rides and made about $120 out of seven rides. Usually it'll take me at least to do $120 would take me about 12 rides, about $10 a ride. And that's just doing short trips and shit like that. Yeah, exactly. Be yelling at the phone and shit. Motherfucker be talking to myself in the car. People be like, this dude nuts. I'm like, hey, shut the fuck up. Why get you? <laughs> but yeah, but sometimes you get some good nights where you get on a real good run and that shit will make you happy. And you'll be happy with the decisions you made to get to this point, to be out at the time you out, the night you out driving. You'll be like, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I'm doing ride share. You got to make it through. You just got to make it through. We had a rough ass summer, a rough summer for a lot of people. And, and a lot of people had to go get W-2s because, like I said, it was pushing us to that, to that wire, to where bills had to get paid. Some people had to hang up ride share for a minute so they can go get a W-2 until they get back on their feet enough to say, all right, now I can get back involved in ride share. And, and it's scary. Ride share is scary because, like I said, you don't have no, no HR department to call when you need a, an advance on cash or some shit like that. You just got to make better decisions. And people think, you know, Lyft and Uber, the support is for us. It's not for us. Lyft and Uber support is for customers. That's really who it's for is for customers. Now, we call them and we talk to them, but those motherfuckers will sit there and string you along and bullshit you, just like my uh, Kitty Meow Boo. Kitty Meow Boo is actually a dude. He's a forerunner forever now. But I did a video about what, what Uber support tried to pull on him. What they'll do is they will string you along and string you along and string you along, hoping you go away. That is not good support because you don't do true customers like that. So I tell you right now, support is not designed for us. Support is designed to get rid of us so they can keep making money and they can, they'll can they just keep transferring you five or six fucking times over, the, over a day just so you just give up because they just want to make money. You are a tool to the company. And once you realize you're a tool, you realize why shit's happening to you and the way it happens to you. And you be like, this is why it's happening because they don't give a fuck about me. And once you realize they don't give a fuck about you, it's easier to make decisions. Because I decline people, cancel people. I don't ride. I turn my app up. I do shit. They don't give a fuck about me. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. I need to look out for me. You need to look out for you, your car, your fuel, your expenses, your profit, your mental health. You need to look out for you because they don't give a fuck about you. <clears throat> They'll sit there and tell you, hey, we're going to cancel Lux next month. For real? Yeah, we canceling Lux next month. Well, what about my car? What about it? Like, motherfucker, do you enjoy driving it? But it ain't going to be on Lux, goddammit. Driving the wealth was good, was good. And that's what it is. Like, hold up, let me move this out of the way. This thing keeps hitting my shit. But that's what it is, though. They're going to tell you in so many ways without saying how they feel about you as a driver. And a lot of motherfuckers out there don't understand that we're here to make money ourselves, but they're here to use us to make money. What they think is the app is the service. They call it the service. Lyft is a service. Uh, Uber is a service. DoorDash is a service. Uber Eats is a service. The service fee is what they deem themselves taking in order to keep the service running. So they need more money to keep the service running. They need, they got servers, they got engineers, they got employees, they got staff, they got executives to pay, they got insurances. So their service fees are very high because they consider driving is not the service. To them, driving is not the service. The service is them providing the ability of somebody to use a phone to get a ride home. That's their service. They are that. We are just drivers. They don't give a fuck about us. We are not the service. That's the way they view it. We are not the service. We know we're the service because we are doing the service. We're doing the shit. But once you understand your, your role in this whole scheme of shit, you don't give a fuck about that app no more. Because you don't play a role in what they deem as being a service. You don't play a role in that. The service doesn't truly start until after we accept the ride. The way they look at it is that the service starts when somebody opens the app. Now that's their level of service. When somebody opens the app, that shit ain't got nothing to do. Right now, the motherfuckers across the street from me can have the app open. That shit ain't got nothing to do with me. That's Lyft. Lyft server has to be active in order to take the ad. There are people have to be at work in case somebody's got a question. They got to move shit around. Engineers, their service is already going. So when they're charging motherfuckers for a ride, they're saying the reason why they want more money from these people are because the service is from the time they open the app until the time they close the app. Everything that happens in between, like what we do, we're only a part of the service, not the service itself. We're just a part of the service. That's why these motherfuckers charge so much. And I know that. And so I look at it as a business. I don't take this shit personal. It's a business. 
They say, well, the service is when somebody opens that. Jeff, you don't work until you accept the ride. You're a contractor. You don't work till you take the ride. So right now, it's a motherfucker at the airport right now. Got his phone open. I'm not working, but they're using the service right now. They're using the Lyft service. They got the app open. They're going through it. They're trying to find a ride. They're moving shit around. The engineers have made all that possible on that interface. When they're moving the screen around, selecting shit, enter payment information, they're using a the service in the eyes of Lyft. They're already using that service right now. I'm a part of the service when they say, okay, fish it out to somebody. They fish it out, and I say whether or not it's good enough for me. When I say it's good enough for me, Liv goes, okay, we're going to give you a part of the money we just got from doing the service for them. We're doing the service for them, and you're just helping us facilitate the service we did for them. Well, what's the service? Them finding a ride home is the service. Them finding a ride home. You're helping us get them home, but they had to find a ride home. They're using our service to find one. Once they find one, our job is done. Now you have to get them a fucking ride home if you accept the ride. If you don't, then they're still going to stay on our service trying to find a ride. The service is Lyft. That's why the service fees are through the fucking roof because the Lyft Corporation is a very expensive corporation and they're ripping off drivers who are actually doing the fucking work. We're doing the work. But they don't deem us as doing the service. The service is from when they open the fucking app. And once you start understanding that aspect of it all, that's why they won't do They're saying they were going to do away with surge price. Oh, we're going to do away with surge pricing. We're done with surge pricing. But then they're thinking, well, if we're done with surge pricing, the person can still use the service because they can still open the app. There don't have to be a surge on there. They open the app. The service is working because they can select. They can move shit around. There's no surge pricing. There's nothing. But the moment they say, I want to ride, you know, 20 miles from this concert to home for $19. Ain't no fucking driver taking that. So the services will never be completed because ain't no driver driving for bullshit if ain't no surge out there. So they can't do away with surge because drivers, we're a part of the service that solidify the fucking deal. They know it. And the moment they stop allowing us to get paid a certain amount, the deal won't be solidified. So they'll the customers will be using a service that they'll never pay for. So the app will be sitting there dormant. People can move this shit around. They can select rides, try to select rides, move. So the servers are working. There's people at work. The buildings are open. The employees are getting paid. The insurance are getting paid. But no drivers are, are taking none of those fucking rides. So the services will never be paid for. It's like free service. So what they do is they say, you know what? We need to make sure these surges don't stop because if the surges stop, the driving stops. The driving stops, we don't get paid for that service of the app actually working. We have to pay for this app to fucking work. That's why the service fees be like half the fucking price. We're going to give the driver half and we're taking half. Why is it like that? Because we're doing half the service. The driver is only part of the service. It used to be the driver was the service. We were out doing the fucking work and they viewed us as the, the main core of the business. And the app was just the app. That's all it was, was the app. But now they're like, the app is what the service is because the drivers ain't doing shit. They're not doing like us. We're sitting at home right now. We're on fucking, you know, podcast, hanging out and shit like that. But the app still works. Who's paying for the app? All the rides we've already done because they've overcharged the shit out of everybody to keep the service fucking going. <laughs> and it's like, the app is the service. Yeah, exactly, Silver Fox, man. And so when I see how much the apps are making, like I've said before, you see in all my videos, I really don't give a fuck how much they make. I hope they do well. I really do because if they do well, we should be able to do well too. But if they do well and we don't do well, I have a fucking problem. Because we're the ones who solidify the fucking service. We solidify it. Without us accepting a ride, they don't get any money. We generate the revenue when we say accept. Now that we accept, we complete the ride, we do the ride, now the money is transferring hands. But if somebody's using the service the whole time and ain't nobody ever accepting their ride, this person just sat on this app. The app that had servers, it had employees, it had insurances, it had all this shit going, and the person never got a ride because nobody ever accepted the ride. That person just used that service for free of charge. Because all they did was just use the app. Even YouTube. YouTube is a free service. It's free. How do people get paid on YouTube? Well, what they do is content creators like me and other content creators, we provide information, content. We keep people watching like YouTube and on YouTube getting information about how to fix your Jeep, how to fix your BMW, you know, how to even drive lip and shit. We, we there for that. Advertisers come on every once in a while and say, since these guys are providing a service, 
of YouTube and YouTube has to be paid for that service. Advertisers pay. So you guys can either pay for YouTube premium. If you don't want to see commercials, you can pay for YouTube premium. Say, hey, I never see a commercial, but you're paying for the service now. It's not a free service anymore. In order for it to be a free service, somebody has to pay for it. Advertisers pay for it. And usually on my channel, a lot of financial advertisers come because I look at some of my shit and I'll see financial people, loan people, all these people popping up on my shit. I don't really get wholesome shit. You're not going to find no church on my thing like, hey, make sure you come down to the Sunday service, with Reverend Bishop Don Juan and fucking pray. What is that? No, it ain't. You'll never see that on my channel because my channel is too rugged for that. So they try to find out what advertisers want to advertise with the shit I do to keep giving you guys a free service. Lift. They could have their service paid for by advertisers if somebody opened the app and there were ads running the whole fucking time while they were trying to use the app. Have an advertiser pay for it. That way, some of the service fees could be paid by the advertiser and we could get most of the fucking fee that the goddamn driver, the rider is requesting. But they won't do that. Even if they did get it, they could sit us down at the table and say, hey, drivers, how can we pay you guys more money while we still make money? Run that shit like YouTube. Have ads running across the screen all the time and have people paying for ads. That way, every time the customer is, is using the app or whatever, you know, a portion of this, this person using the app, whether they get a ride or not, is paid for by the advertisers. Because I might decline the ride 10 fucking times in a row because it's a bullshit ride. But each time the person is using the service of Lyft, advertisers are paying Lyft for that person just to open the app. So they'll be getting money out of the deal. But right now, I don't know if Lyft does that shit or whatever the fuck happens, but they're ripping the fuck out of the drivers. They're taking all the money from the riders, not paying us a fair share of the percentage because they want to claim service fees are too high because they've overspent. They're, they're way over budget for a lot of shit they doing. And they need to get their, their books underhand and say, we need to come up with a different way to generate revenue instead of just using drivers to generate revenue. Because if we are the only revenue generators by accepting that trip and that's all the way that they're making money, they're going to go on the fucking ground. That's why Uber does a lot better. Uber has food. Uber has advertising. Uber has a lot of shit they're paid for because they get advertising revenue for the food shit they do on different websites and stuff like that. But say, Lyft will belly up and we will buy it and change the name to Tuber. <laughs> Hell yeah, Bill. We'll call it Tuber, like I said. And we could just fucking let people use our cars. We at the house chilling. <laughs> like, motherfucker, what you doing? Oh, man, I'm going to go take this lady dog for a walk. I thought you was working. Yeah, she had to take my car down to Walmart, man. I'm on Tuber right now. I'm walking her dog. She got my shit down at Walmart. I get paid extra $5 for walking this dog around the corner. So I'm going to walk this dog for $5. <laughs> it's like, Tuber is cool. Because <laughs> apps got to figure that shit out. They need to figure out how to generate revenue. And if the only way that they can generate, like Uber and Lyft, if the only way they're generating revenue is through us as drivers, then we should get a higher percentage of the money. Because like I said, they're not generating no revenue for the most part, until somebody accepts a ride. That's where the money's coming from. If we just keep turning shit down because the rides are bullshit and the rides are bullshit and the rides are bullshit, at some point, they're going to have to raise the rates to get people more likely to accept those rides. Because if they're not getting no money, if all these high AR motherfuckers just stop accepting these rides, that means Uber and Lyft have to pay more to get that ride engaged. Because you're not engaging me for 50 cent a mile. You're not engaging me for a dollar a mile. You're not engaging me for a dollar fifty. Even from a concert, you might not be able to engage me for two dollars a mile. It might cost you four or five, six dollars a mile from a concert to engage me. So you have to make that ride engaging for the situation for that driver. And they don't have it figured out yet. The algorithm doesn't have it figured out, and they don't have it figured out, which is why a lot of people have low ARs. What up, Noir? My man Mohammed. And that's why a lot of people have low ARs because you can't engage a driver that knows how much he's worth and is not willing to take a dollar a mile, 50 cent a mile. We're not willing that shit. High AR motherfuckers, they don't, they don't really know how much they're worth because they don't understand how this works. These are trillion dollar corporations. Trillion dollar corporations paying these motherfuckers below minimum wage. That's what they're earning. The people be earning nine dollars an hour. They be taking three, four rides and shit like that, getting four dollars, you know, a ride, three dollars a ride, taking about out. They're making nine dollars an hour, thirteen dollars an hour, sixteen dollars an hour in ride share. These motherfuckers are making that in ride share. And I'm like, it's impossible. If you have a low AR, like 17 percent, like Mohammed says, 17 percent, that means you're making at least 
30 to $40 an hour, minimum 30 to $40 an hour. You're not making 13 because they, man, I remember when they was paying like $14 an hour, $15 an hour. And I'll be like, why am I not making no fucking money? Because I would take an $8 ride for, you know, like 14 miles, 15 miles. It would take me like 23 minutes. The next ride I would take would be like, you know, $11. And it would take me like, you know, almost 30 minutes. So I'm making $19 an hour, 19 bucks an hour, driving all these fucking miles all over the place. High AR. That's when I used to use the Jeep. <clears throat> I couldn't figure it out. <clears throat> what up, Superman? So I said, there has to be a way to make profits and to make money in ride share. If I'm my own boss, I'm not a fucking employee. The, the light has to come on. There's a lot of high AR drivers out there. The light still hasn't come on yet. These motherfuckers are at the house. It's like, but the lights is off. They just walking around in the dark right now. These motherfuckers bumping in the walls and shit, falling down staircases. It's like, motherfucker, turn the lights on. This is your house. Turn the lights on. See what the fuck is going on for real. But these motherfuckers running in the goddamn door jams, hitting their toe on the, the end of fucking coffee tables and shit. Turn the motherfucking lights on. This is your house. Rideshare is our house. Say, these apps, they just built an app. They live in the digital world. Ride share is our world. We really do this shit. And I tell motherfuckers, we really out in these streets. We do this shit. This is our world right here. <laughs> the Jeff, you broke the ride share cult. Hold on, you. I knew it. And and you have to, man. You got to break that shit. You got to break that that whole ride share cult feeling of, man, I, I just got to get out there and just drive nonstop and just take what they send to me and just take this. and No, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. If you are your own boss, you are in charge of your own profit margins. You you in charge of your own expenses, your own revenues, your own maintenance on your vehicles, your own work schedule. Then you got some decisions you need to fucking make. You can't rely on the app to make all your decisions. If the app is making decisions to make the app profitable and you had a high AR doing everything that the app says, you are an app sucker. You are an app slave. 500 this weekend with Uber and Elon. Man, there you go, brother. There you go, 500. You sound like me. I made about six this weekend, man. We're on the same page, brother. I made about six. We're on the same page. Shit, Juan Vargas made a grand in two days. <laughs> he made a G in two days. He made like twice as much as we made. Jeez. But hey, the money's out there, man. The money's out there. And I tell people, man, if we're in charge of how we do this business, then we are the true business. We are not the app. We are not the service. We are the business itself. We out in these streets. The app can't function without us. But we could function without the apps. We could take private rides. We could show up at an event and people want to get home bad enough, they'll take a cash ride. We could function without the apps. We could. A friend could call us. We could give out our card. Somebody had fucking, you know, if we got an Uber or Lyft light on in our car and somebody sitting at Walmart says, hey, man, you an Uber driver? Yeah, I'm having a hard time getting an Uber. I live at these apartments right down the street, man. Can you just take me to the house? I just, I'll slide you $10, $20, man. I just, I can't get a ride. So we could function without the apps. We could function because we talk to motherfuckers. We the business. We out in the streets. We really out in the street. We could cruise by college. Group of kids, hey, you know, you're an Uber driver. We see your light on. We can't find a ride. It's only three of us. If we give you like $10, $15, can you just take us over to Devil's Advocate? Cool. We could function without them. But those apps can't function without a fucking driver. How are they going to make money without a driver? How? Unless they get massive advertising to pay every time somebody open the app, like how, how YouTube is. You get people just advertisers to pay for every time somebody click on the app, you get ads running. So they're making millions and billions and billions of dollars in ad revenue from people looking. Oh, man, when I opened up my Lyft app, I saw a McDonald's ad. Let's go to McDonald's on the way. Oh, man, I opened my Lyft app. I saw a motherfucking Radisson Hotel ad. Maybe I'll get a ride over to the Radisson and, and find me a room at the Radisson. They don't get ads like that that's going to pay for that app. Ads don't pay for that. Drivers pay for that app. Our work, we really in this shit. We do this shit for real. So until they respect us for who we are, we know who we are. It's the high AR motherfuckers don't know who they are. They have no idea who they are. They are so proud. Oh, yeah, I drive for Uber. I drive for Lyft, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm 100% AR. I'm a diamond driver. I could call them direct. I'm a diamond motherfucker. I get a free fucking hot dog every Wednesday. I'm an Uber driver. Yeah, what's your what's your profit margins like? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. What's your what's your net income like? Who gives a shit? I'm diamond baby. Fuck you. 
Okay. Motherfucker, I'm, I'm like, you know, 20% AR. I'm making at least, you know, four or five dollars a mile on. Oh, fuck that. I stay busy. 50 cent a mile, dollar a mile. I stay busy. You're not busier than me. You're sitting over there eating a fucking crusty dusty. You're not busier than me. I'm busy. Yeah, and you got to work four or five times harder than I got to work to make the same amount of money. So if I'm at $4 a mile, you at $1 a mile. That means I can drive 20 miles and make $80. But for you to make $80, you got to drive 80 miles because you at a dollar a mile. I'm at $4 a mile. But I'm diamond, and you don't understand how it fucking feels to see that little trophy on your phone. When you open your phone, you got the gold trophy with the little black diamond, and it says diamond driver, 100% AR, five-star driver. You don't know how that shit feels. But I know how it feels to walk into my house and have to worry about a motherfucking bill sitting on my table. I could pick up a bill and be like, oh, I got that. I ain't worried about that bill. And you're like, oh, my God, this bill's $200. I got to go drive 200 miles. I need to drive 200 miles to make $200. I'm like, well, shit, at $4 a mile, I go drive like 50 miles. So I'm going to go sit by ASU for a couple of hours, see if I can drive 50 miles total by ASU. I might make $200 a night. And I do this shit all the time, 200 300 I do that shit all the time. I just go sit by ASU, drive about four or five hours. I ain't going nowhere. Just driving in fucking circles. People know how I drive because I do the shit on my map. Every time I show y'all my maps, I'll show y'all where I'm going. I'm just going in fucking circles. I'm in the same area. And I'm making that 200. But you got this high AR, motherfucker. Yeah, diamond cars don't last forever. No. It's a whole motherfucking salvage yard dedicated to Uber diamond drivers. That shit's right over the top of the lot. Uber, di Uber diamond driver lot. Like, oh, is that where the, the Uber drivers park and chill over there? No, that's where all they broken down motherfucking cars is. <laughs> Oh, I thought they parked over there. They had like a special parking area. No, that's for all they raggedy motherfucking cars. That's what that shit's for. No, oh, well, shit, I don't want to be over there. Fuck that. He's like, shit, keep my shit out of there. They, they, diamond drivers got a whole motherfucking bay at the shop. This is the Uber diamond driver bay. This motherfucker stays busy. <laughs> it's like, shit. <laughs> that motherfucker gonna revert back to coal. Like, shit, diamond. And, and they, they give all these motherfucking diamond drivers up. Hey, you get fucking... 50% off of goddamn tires. Yeah, you're going to do like a whole set of tires every fucking three months. Sitting at the motherfucking lights. <laughs> Got to keep the wheels moving. <laughs> Motherfucker braking gas at the same fucking time doing burnouts. And you got an all-wheel drive doing burnouts. All four of your motherfucking tires is burning out. <laughs> keep the wheels moving. <laughs> and that's why I was like, if we in the streets and we doing this shit and we running this business, we really out here making this money. All these service fees and these apps need to realize the drivers are the most important. But like I said, when, when this motherfucker get on the ride share guy pretty soon, guarantee drivers get shitted on. Drivers going to get gaslighted and shitted on. I ain't even got to watch the motherfucker. Y'all can come back and tell me, Jeff, you was right. This motherfucker said customer and rider and passenger and rider and passenger and customer. At the very end, he says, and we thank you, drivers. It's like, of course you thank us, motherfucker. We the suckers that's doing this shit. Of course you thank us. But don't thank me. Pay me. That's the difference. You can thank me all fucking day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the ride. Thank you. Thank you. Motherfucker, pay me. Fuck the thank you. Pay me. Because I don't just pull up to your motherfucking house and be like, hey, thank you for requesting me and drive the fuck off. Because you'll be like, why did he just come by and thank me? I needed a ride. Yeah, and I needed to get paid, motherfucker. Like, I just cruised up and said thank you. But I know it was cool for you to say thank you, and I appreciate you cruising up to say thank you, but I need a ride, motherfucker. So thank you don't work? No, thank you don't work. I need a fucking ride. Yeah, and I need to be paid. That's why I tell motherfuckers, don't, don't say thank you to me. Show your appreciation. Here's $3, $2 tip, $3. Because you know the apps is fucking us. They, know, they fucking us on the money, and a lot of these riders know they fucking us on the money. So you can tip us directly through Cash App, Venmo. You ain't got to tip us through the app, cash in hand. Thank you. That's how you thank a motherfucker. Thank you. Because you could have declined my shit or canceled my shit or never showed the fuck up. You could have left me standing here at this goddamn FedEx warehouse for the next fucking three hours. But you drove out here and you got me. Thank you. Here's $5, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Because if a motherfucker just be like, thank you, and just walk the fuck off, I might go, you know what? I'm going to start just driving up to these motherfuckers and just rolling my window down. Be like, I'm here to pick up Tez. Yeah. Thank you, dog. Appreciate you ordering the ride. Let the window back up and drive the fuck off. <laughs> You're like, 
That Uber driver is weird as a motherfucker. This motherfucker just came up, pulled up, asked me if I was Tez, gave me the peace sign and said, thank you for ordering the ride and drove the fuck off and then canceled me. I just wanted to thank you, dog. I just wanted to thank you. I ain't want shit. I just want to thank you. <laughs> Back in the game, baby. But that's what it is, though. You know, we got to understand it as, as drivers. Oh, yeah. Gas prices are getting up. I'm over five dollars, man. I'm over five dollars at fucking Circle K's and shit. But if we start coming around here, man. Oh, 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 hold on for a second. Jesse said, last night I used your strategy in downtown Phoenix. Killed it. Mac like Jeff last night. No, nah, I'm good on 30 miles to surprise. $17, two miles. Ching, ching. <laughs> That's the shit I'll be looking for. Because like I said, I tell motherfuckers, I am not trying to do no 30 fucking minutes, no 40 minutes. I'm not trying to do that. No. Give me two minutes. Because, hey, Jesse, the money is out there. And you know it. The money is out there. And a lot of motherfuckers don't believe it. They don't believe the money is out. No, man, I got to take this because if I don't take this, they're going to throttle me. Throttle me if you want to. I'm not the motherfucker that need to ride. I could just go turn on another app or I could do, do something else. Throttle me if you want to. But it's your motherfucking rider is going to be the one that's not going to get a ride if you don't pay us this fucking money because we're the ones that make this money. Hold on for a second. Shit. No, nah, I'll leave that down there. Yeah, because we're the ones that, that actually generate the revenue. And like I said, hopefully... You know, this Lyft CEO motherfucker, I hope he get online and he starts saying, you know, drivers need to be taken care of in a financial way. To be commensurate with the equipment they bought, the increase in prices, the increase in cost of living, the increase in food, drivers need to be paid at a rate or a percentage to be able to, to deal with that. Because a lot of motherfuckers can't just keep driving if we keep getting money taken away from us. I mean, we've got corporate America hitting us over the head for fucking rent, management companies. We got fees out the ass on food, gas, all this shit. We got a bunch of shit going on right now. And if he don't touch upon the main point of ride share drivers, expenses are what kills us. It ain't time. We got time, motherfucker. I got time today. I got time today. We got 12 hours of clock. I could do it. Man, you give me 12 hours? I could work three hours here, one hour here, two hours here. You give me 12 hours. That's not the problem. The expenses of life are what the problem is. So the more time I spend on these apps, and I tell people the diminishing marginal returns, diminishing marginal returns of the more you do something, you do it at an increasing, at a decreasing rate. It's like in the beginning, you're making money, you're making money, you're making money, you're making money, but then it starts plateauing. So you're still making money, but it starts plateauing. So you're increasing, but it's at a decreasing rate. This rate, you are making a lot of money. But as the more you start making and the, the more time you spend on the road, your earnings start leveling out. So now when you first start out, man, you're making a ton of money. But when the app sees that shit, they start holding back. They start throttling you down a little bit. They start seeing you getting too many fucking surges. They start holding back a little bit. They stop sending you good rides and shit. So a lot of people, man, they don't get it. You can't just sit there and be worried about how much time you spend on these apps. If you're spending 12 hours a day on these apps, 12 hours a day, me, I'm a $40, $50 an hour driver. So I better be making anywhere from, if I'm 12 hours, I better be making at least five, $600 a day, five, 600 a day. If I'm online for 12 hours, five, 600. Cause if I'm making less than that, but I can work three, four five hours making 250 to 300. Why am I online for 12 hours? I don't need to be online for 12 hours because it's a decrease in rate. I could just save that gas and save that time for the next day when it's incrementally going to be more valuable to me. Take my ass home, edit videos, hang out, do something, walk my dogs, because incremental values are what makes a lot to me. I don't like people saying, oh, well, you know, the, the more I work, man, if you out there working 60, 70 hours driving, 80 hours online, and the most you making is two Gs, I mean, at $20 an hour, $30 an hour, that's the best you're going to end up doing. But yet you look at all the gas you use every single day. You're not making that money. You're probably making around $19 an hour. So if you're making $19 an hour and you're working 60 to 70 hours a week and that's all you, man, no, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Because I can make 40, 50 an hour, take up about five hours for gas. I'm still making 35 to $45 an hour. So 35, $45 an hour versus $19 an hour because I worked all these fucking hours. I'm reducing that shit all the way by like $17, $18. Anywhere between $17 and like, I think, $27, I'm reducing myself per hour. 
I'm giving away $17 to $27 per hour just because. And that's stupid. It's, it's, it's diminishing marginal returns. That's right. That's it. You 20 hours a week. If you do 20 hours a week and you're running 40 to $50 an hour, you, you ain't spent a lot. You ain't spent a lot. So if you ain't spent a lot of money and you're making good money, I mean, what's the point in, in pushing it? Because you're going to end up having dimension and marginal returns. You're going to start working more, but earning less over that hour. And you're going to be spending more to earn that less. So you're making less, spending more to earn less. It's a backwards. It's a very inverse relation to how you should be generating profits. If you're generating profits a certain way and you inversely relate it, now instead of you spending $5 to make like 50, now you're spending $5 to make 25. So you're cutting yourself off. You're like, you're not 10 X in your money no more. You're, you're five X in your money. So you incrementally affecting yourself by saying, I'm going to stay out longer. I'm going to do more shit. I'm going to do more rides. I'm going to start taking, you know, anything that's out dollar a mile, dollar 50 a mile, 50 cent a mile, 70 a mile. It's all going to average out. No, it never averages out. Trust me. Yeah, man, a thousand and eighteen hours. That's it. Thousand and eighteen hours. And I tell people I would rather make my average go higher. So I look for trips just like I said, $17 for two miles. Those are the kind of trips I like because it pulls my average up. Some people average down. They'll do a 50 cent a mile ride and go, oh, well, you know, later I'm just going to have to do a $5 a mile ride. No, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Average is supposed to go up. If you're trying to increase your average, don't pull that shit down by doing some bullshit rides all day. Excuse me, because if you keep doing bullshit rides, what the app is going to do is say, this driver does bullshit rides and he's okay with it. Keep sending them. Keep sending them. Driver like me, they're going to say, well, this driver don't do no bullshit rides. He's not taking no rides. They're going to stop sending them to me. They're going to just like, okay, send him better rides. And a lot of people don't understand that that relation that we have with the algorithm. And it's not us trying to figure out the algorithm. But we understand at the point where there's no way low AR motherfuckers should be making $1,000 in two days and high AR motherfuckers, it takes them all week to make $1,000. There's a relation going on right there. If you got low AR and you can make $1,000 in two days working normal hours, but you got high AR and it takes you all week to make that shit, you ain't figured out the relationship between you and the algorithm at that point. You ain't figured it out. <laughs> Back in the game, baby. Okay, Mr. Stay Busy. That's real shit, real shit. And they just trying to stay busy, but they, they're not figuring out the relation that they have with profits, with the algorithm, with how their market works out, with how trips are working out, how miles work out, how fuels work out. And they're going to, a lot of, like I said, a lot of YouTubers and a lot of drivers alone, they hide all the expenses from you because they want you to believe the shit they're doing is working because they got an image to uphold. They've got an image to uphold. Me, I'll show motherfuckers, this is how much gas I got. This is how much it cost me to put in the gas tank. And people could talk shit all day. Oh, motherfucker. My Prius only cost me $19 to fill up. Cool. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. I can't be mad at you. But I'm just doing what I do with the equipment that I have. Everybody's equipment is not going to be the same. In my market, I could use a big black SUV during Super Bowl and make six, $7,000 one week. A lot of markets, you can't make six, $7,000 a week, even with a black SUV. You can't. Out here, you can. It's different. I used a little baby ass fucking car made 3,600 in a week. And that was only in five days. So everybody's market is different. But at least what I do is show what I'm doing as far as expenses go, as far as revenue go, as long as my hours go. I even show me sitting the fuck around kicking it I, I'm on the phone talking about how I'm wiping my car down, cleaning my car. If I'm sitting on the side of the road. I'm just scouting rides and shit, doing this and do it. I'm validating my area, checking it out, making sure there ain't no surge around me. Just knowing where the fuck I am. And a lot of channels don't do that because they want to make you think they left the house at 430 this morning and they've been driving all day, staying busy, staying productive, staying busy. Now it's 10 o'clock at night. They're pulling back into the driveway and they've got two hundred and eighty dollars. Great day. <laughs> it's like, OK, all right. Meanwhile, to make two hundred eighty dollars, another motherfucker drove like three hours. <laughs> it's like and got the shit over with. It's like. We ain't trying to do all that. Yes, yeah, Silver Fox is going to be like that. But I'm going to tell you what, Silver Fox, what you don't like, what's your market anyways? Because I guarantee I can fly to your market right now today and I can make 
$2,000 in three days in your market. I have the DoorDash glitch. I'm just kidding. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> Ain't that some funny shit? Motherfuckers be guaranteeing they can come to your market. They don't even know shit about your market. I guarantee I could come to your market right now, motherfucker. Wearing the same clothes I'm fucking wearing and make $2,000 in three days. I got the DoorDash glitch. <laughs> but they don't tell you that part. <laughs> mm. But I believe it, man. Not all markets can support it. Not all markets can support it. A lot of markets, you know, they just don't have the infrastructure as far as like the people. They don't have the airports. They don't have the bus stations. They don't have the colleges. They don't have, you know, the, the events and the conventions. They don't have that. Every market can not support all the numbers. But with the market you're in, if you say, hey, I can crank out about $25 an hour. That's the best I can do. Then you could budget for that. If you can do $25 an hour through cherry picking, then that means you cannot spend as much as we spend per hour. Because cherry picking, we might have to drive a little bit more than you probably because we're going to get a few more rides than you. We can get about five rides an hour that are good. You'd probably say, hey, I can get two rides an hour that's good. Okay. And especially if it's saturated. If it's saturated, for saturated markets, you've got to position yourself very close to traffic, very close to what you want to do. Like, if you want to get motherfuckers from Walmart, position yourself by Walmart. You want to get people from a convention, position yourself next to the convention. And find out what companies are in town having businesses. Go to different, say, hey, man, there's a meeting this weekend down here. It's going to be, you know, all the drivers from motherfucking, you know, Chewy.com, the motherfucking dog biscuit company and shit's coming to town. They're going to have a big-ass convention here, so I'm going to make sure I'm wherever the Chewy.com people are staying. Whatever hotel they're in, I want to be out of that hotel. Whatever, you know, hotel they got the events in, I'm going to be by that hotel. And you just got to kind of know shit, man. You got to just know shit. Because your driver can. It's all about working in a place that meets the demand. If there's all about working in a place that meets, there's no demand, there's no profit. Real shit. Real shit. And we said it all. If, if your market can't support it, ride share is probably not for you. You're going to have to W2 it for a while. Either run your own independent business. You could do private rides and independent business as far as like, you know, making, you know, wood plaques or making something like that. But ride share may not be profitable enough for you to be 100 percent ride share. And a lot of people are going to sit up there and go, well, you know, you just got to keep driving nonstop, drive nonstop and you will make profit. No, you'll make gross. You'll make gross. But that's not making profit. Driving nonstop. You're using a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of fuel, a lot of wear and tear. Like I said, the salvage yard got a whole motherfucking section. Over the top of the, it says diamond drivers for Uber section. All the motherfucking cars is over in the salvage yard right now. <laughs> they running those motherfuckers ragged. And, and what they, they just throw them away. They ain't no good. They can't even fucking sell you the goddamn, the motherfucking, the, uh, the tree scent, the motherfucking black ice tree scent. They throw that motherfucking the trash to all that shit's trash. It's all done. That motherfucker's run down. So I'd make less of the W-2. Some areas are like that. Small towns, you know, and like I said, even at saturated areas and stuff like that, if you're in a super saturated market for, you know, for W-2s, some W-2s, like I was talking to a guy last night, they own companies and they do interviews like they own companies in Vegas, but they do interviews by Zoom all the time. He said he can tell when he's interviewing somebody in the Zoom interview, he could tell whether or not this person is worth the money or not. And he says, I wouldn't hire this person at the lowest, you know, rate. Because I can tell they're going to be with the company for two or three months, and then they're off, and we just invested all this training, all this effort and energy into them. He said, but when you see somebody who you know is worth the money, you know they're going to be an asset to your company. He says, I always pay more. He says, I always pay more than what they're even worth, because that's how you keep good employees. You pay them more, they won't go anywhere. You pay them too less, they're going to find other shit to do. And that's how rideshare is. If you pay a driver more, they're going to fucking, you need a back in the game, bud, baby. Back in the game, baby. What's happening to the app? Is the app like hanging up or something? I don't know. Back in the game button. <laughs> oh, back in the game, baby. I need that shit. And that's the thing is like, if they paid a lot of drivers, you know, what they were worth, we wouldn't be bouncing apps. We would, we stick with one app and that's it. If they said, hey, man, we're going to pay a lot of drivers. And that's why I say it's always a, a war between Uber and Lyft some night. Because they're trying to find out what driver they want to keep on the app versus which ones they don't want. And, and a lot of nights when you get a lot of rides out there, 
You got people arguing and fighting with drivers. Drivers are calling it good. Drivers are getting bad marks, good marks. Drivers are having little small fender benders and shit. So they've got to keep certain drivers on their app or else they're not going to meet the demand that's out there. So they got to pay. And if, if they're paying these high AR motherfuckers, they're taking these little 50 cent a mile, dollar a mile rides, and they know that's all that driver's willing to take, they don't have to pay a lot for the demand. They don't have to pay a lot for the demand. To get a driver like me to stay on their app, I need a surge or I need a good ride. You, you're you not going to keep me on your app if you're not fucking paying. And just like the guy said when he's interviewing people, he knows who he should be investing in. He knows the good people who he wants to put money into versus the people who he hires and says, I don't want to pay this person a lot because I just know they're not going to be here that long. He's like, I could tell in the interview. I could just tell already. Rogue said, how do you think you were doing Tucson? Well, Tucson, especially with your little downtown area down there, plus you've got what? You've got AU down there. You got AU, you got the downtown area, plus you got a couple of strip clubs down there because I remember I got stuck down there one day doing a long-ass Tucson ride in my Jeep back when I drove the Jeep. It's a little strip club called Cherries or something. And I mean, I was doing nothing but rides there all day. And they live all back in little houses and shit because there was no other driver down there at that time of night. So I'm just doing all these motherfucking like strip club rides back and forth. I'm picking up like the, the clients that were in there. I'm picking up the fucking workers. I'm picking up everybody just back and forth, back and forth all damn day. So Tucson could be a little hot spot if you stay out as late as I stay and you still getting all the good rides out. And most of the drivers are done for the day. It could be a little hot spot, but you're going to have to, you know, be able to just keep it moving. You got to keep it moving. You can't be hung up in traffic. You can't be stuck at trains and shit like that. They had a train down there. I'm like, what the fuck? Tucson is wild, man. But I think Tucson is, is a decent market. It's not, you know, horrible, completely horrible. But it, it's worse in the summer than what it is here in the summer. I'll tell you, because we get the Tucson drivers up here all summer. Because during the year, you guys are doing okay because you got the colleges back open and stuff like that. Plus, you got the hospital down there. You got Banner down there. So you got some good shit going. But for the most part, the money up here is way too good to leave on the table to go work down there. It's like... That's a long ass drive down there, a long ass drive back for no gain. It'll be a zero sum game for me to go in Tucson because I'll make more money just driving my ass like in a circle around my own neighborhood than driving 120 miles south, 120 miles back, 240 miles of driving to do worse than what I would do in my own neighborhood. It's like, eh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't see myself doing it. People say, man, you should come on down here to Tucson and roll, man. Like, I don't know, man. It'd have to be. Tucson drivers can come up here and make way more money up here than they can make down there. So the, the commute is worth it because they can. And then they're always going to get an airport ride back. So they're going to get their gas money anyways. They're going to get gas money up. They're going to get gas money back. And they're always going to make a ton of money. But for me, it's like, you man, Steven in the building was good. Shane and Steven. Where y'all been, man? We've been here for like almost four hours. Where the fuck y'all been, man? We've been kicking it. Shit. We about to fucking, I think what, Tuesday or Wednesday, somebody said that uh, the Roster guy has Lyft, um, had the CEO on there. So I probably won't drive. I think we should all go over there and check that shit out. Be like, hey, hey, man, I don't know what's wrong with YouTube. YouTube don't never send out my alerts. And I think they do that shit on purpose. If somebody at YouTube mad at me for whatever fucking reason, maybe I'll talk shit about them one day and they like, man, this motherfucker talk, fucking turn off his alerts. Fuck him. Turn off his alerts. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna fucking not not alert nobody for a good month fuck him let's turn this shit off they do that shit to me sometimes probably sometimes they do me right and they'll be like okay they, they got me out there the other day i was like oh fuck jeff we ain't worried about his ragged ass fuck him says, i get your alerts i don't know how that shit works i get alerts all the time from different channels and shit like that so maybe some of them i don't but i know i get a lot of them but hell yeah Woo, man, almost four hours, man. Sheesh. We had a good chat, though, today, man. A good chat, a good chat. I appreciate you guys sitting on live with me. I'm going to hop off this thing in a minute. I got to grab me some dinner. It's what, 5.55, 6 o'clock right now. Still parents weekend at ASU. I'm going to try to make it out this house by about 7, 7.30, do some dinner runs, maybe a couple of airport runs. Try to make about 150 bucks. Y'all, man, we always have a good time. And we're going to start up Tuber one day. Tuber. So, I'm going to try to get out about 7.30, so it's only 5.55 now. I'm going to get out, grab me something to eat and everything. Man, let's do it. Is it $34 to go airport 55 miles away? Don't do it. It's a trap. Like that motherfucker on Star Wars. It's a trap. <laughs> motherfucker, the goddamn Empire Strikes Back. Lift is a trap. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Hell yeah. Back in the game, baby. Motherfucker, chicken shit. Man, 
Yo, so I'm going to hop off this thing. Like I said, I'm going to get ready to go do this parents night shit, man. Let's see if we can go out there and get this money, Steven. Hell yeah, brother. Let's go get it. And I'll tell everybody, everybody love to see that big ass flag in the back, man. People be emailing me like, man, your background look cool, man. Now, I appreciate that. Weber's party rentals. That's my man. Back to Bases Wood Shop. That's what he made. He made the big wooden flag back there. That flag goes everywhere I go. I got to get in my other thing so I can do the other one for this side. I got something I want to put on this side over here. So we'll see how that shit go. But once again, man, you motherfucker, yeah, parents need that orange BMW. That's right. If they willing to pay, I'm willing to play. Let's do it. Let's do it. But shit, <clears throat> I'm going to hit y'all motherfuckers up later on. We're going to get the extra comfort. I don't have extra comfort. I just got Lux. That's it. But we're going to do this shit again. I gotta, I'm got. i going to try to drop that video either tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, what, uh, what happened over this uh, yesterday. Because, man, it was psh, 250 tonight calling. Hey, Max, let's hope. Let's hope, brother. Because I could use it. I could use it, man. Jeez. This is the end of is the tail end of summer. We can just start stacking up before the, the fall gets here. Let's get it. Let's get it. Don't take rise of the outer rim. <laughs> hey man. Hey, y'all be easy out there, brother. We're gonna do this shit again. I'm gonna try to do another live in a couple of days, but I'm gonna drop this video tomorrow. Do another live in a couple of days after that. We're gonna do it after um the lift dude speaks. I guarantee that motherfucker says nothing good to drivers. I guarantee it. He's all about passengers. But I'm going to hit y'all later on. Hey, y'all be easy out there tonight. If y'all out there driving, making that Sunday money, let's get that Sunday money. Wrap up this weekend good. Woo! Rasha and Lisa, we're going hit, to hit you back later, lady. I still got to hit you. Did you get my um my uh Discord? My Discord is – let me type it right here for you real quick. Cashy Kid 73 That's my Discord right there, Lisa. That's my Discord. Oh, yeah, man. We got some see you in the house. We're going to get this. 280 plus miles. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Man, we about to go ahead and get this shit. I ain't making no 250, no 280. Fuck that shit. I'm going to make $250, and I'm driving seven miles to make it. I'm charging motherfuckers ransom, goddammit. If you want to get out this car, you better give me $50. <laughs> he won't let us out unless we give him 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fuck that shit. I'm getting that 250. All right, man. I'm gonna hit y'all up later on, man. Okay, Rasha, Lisa, I'm gonna hit you up on Discord. We're gonna do it. I'll I'll look up look it up while I'm in here about to eat some dinner. But hey, man, you guys are great. I'm gonna try to cut this off before four hours. Man, we always have a good time. Let's do this shit again later this week. I'll be back.